Your home for Trojans football. Now go see us, man, fight on! AM 790 KABC. Time to go down to the field, check in with Jordan Moore. Our sideline report presented by DirecTV, leader in sports on Saturday and every other day. Jordan, you can lose once probably if you want to stay in the national championship race. That's already been done. You can lose probably once, probably, if you lose to the right team to stay alive in the Pac-12 championship game. So this one is the first of probably a few put-up or shut-up games. Is that right? Well, I just think it's the pivot point of the whole season right here because you do have a winnable road game next week at Cal. So if all of a sudden you can find a way to get this one in the bank and then go beat Cal, well, then you go into the final quarter of the season without a single conference loss. And those games are brutal. Washington, but you get them in your building. At Oregon is obviously extremely difficult, and then a rivalry game. But everything will be to play for in the fourth quarter of this season if you can get the win here today. Jordan, when you're when you're looking at this game here, obviously the offense is you've been had a couple rough weeks under them, and, the, and Caleb struggled a little bit. What are you watching offensively? Do you think that they can tell something against this? Uh, get something going for this USC team against this Utah team? Yeah, well, I think first and foremost is the Trojans have played from behind the last two weeks, and really at no other point in, in the Riley era have they played from behind. I mean, they're such a fast starting team, and they've had some issues at times holding some of these leads, but they've always played from in front and we've seen them the pressure of trying to play uphill of chasing the last two weeks you do not want that today that's exactly what will play into Utah's hands they're happy to play field position force you into mistakes that costs you the game so if the Trojans can get out in front I think that that would relax them a little bit but in terms of the offense punt is not necessarily the worst play today and I think that's tough for the mentality of this team because they're so used to scoring so many points but making Utah drive 75 yards consistently today is the key. So if you have to punt, you can probably live with that and play some field position. You just can't make those mistakes that you made last week and put your defense on short fields or even worse, let the Utah defense score. Jordan, we'll be right back down to you for the flip of the coin. Ocean views, magical sunsets, a luxury resort like no other. Discover Terranea, located along the stunning Palos Verdes Peninsula in Southern California. Book your getaway to Terranea now at Terranea.com. That'll do it for this edition of Trojan Football. Countdown to kickoff. Stay tuned next. Exciting USC football. It's going to be a good one. SC and the defending Pac-12 champion Utah Utes next on the Trojan Football Media Network. Trojan fans, you may not think of yourself as an athlete, but everyday life is full of athletic feats. You bend, you reach, you lift, you twist until back, neck, or shoulder pain hits, which brings you to a stop. But whether you're an athlete or not, the Joint Chiropractic can help ease your pain and keep you on the active list. Visit thejoint.com today to get your first consultation, exam, and adjustment for just $29. The Joint Chiropractic, the official chiropractor of the USC Trojans. Trojan fans, it's time to get your roll on with Roll 'em Up Taquitos, the official taquito of USC Athletics. Using Mama Karen's special recipe, our taquitos are hand rolled daily and pan fried to order with your choice of beef, chicken, ground beef, and vegetarian options. We got Bomb AF Taquitos and a delicious selection of side dishes as well as our Bomb Churro Donuts. Visit RollEmUp.com to find the location nearest you. Fight on and roll 'em up. Your Trojans are back for another exciting season in Troy. And this year, when they win, you win. After every USC victory, visit your participating SoCal AMPM for a free rib sandwich with the purchase of any 20-ounce Coca-Cola product or 700-milliliter smart water, only with the AMPM app. Available on the AMPM app for 24 hours on first-come, first-served basis between August 26, 2023 and November 18, 2023. Only at participating Southern California AMPM stores while supplies last. AMPM, proud partner of the USC Trojans. Fight on. Make sense of your money and the world around you. Mo 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 Tech Our Money. Afternoons at 5 on KABC. Live from the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum for your enjoyment, University of Southern California Trojan football is on the air. Hi again, everyone. Pete Arbogast along with Sean Cody and Jordan Moore as the Trojans let out of the tunnel right now before this big game, this big Pac-12 game by former Trojan great Cameron Smith. SC takes the field, and when they come out, the crowd roars, and we'll be back after this 10-second pause for stations to identify themselves on the Trojan Football Media Network. 
Your, your, your USC Trojans fight on here. Southern California's undisputed, undisputed talk leader, KABC, Los Angeles, Orange County, a cumulus media station. Sean Cody, the Utah Utes have been a big thorn in the Trojans' backside for a while now, and that's because they've got a really good football team year after year, it seems. Trojans leading this series 13-9, but here in the Coliseum, a different world than playing at Rice Eccles Stadium in Salt Lake City. Trojans have had the better of it here, and they expect to do the same thing today. Yeah, we really felt it last year. I remember that place. That was my first time calling a game at Rice Eccles last year, and it, that place was rocking, Pete. This is definitely a different environment here when the Trojans are home against Coliseum. You don't really typically get the same Utah team, so we'll find out today. Today's coin toss brought to you by National Funding, proud partner of USC football. National Funding helping businesses grow and prosper. For the flip of the coin for today's game, let's go down to Jordan Moore. Yeah, I'm down here with the captains. You mentioned Cameron Smith. Led the team out, spent many a, many a time walking out to the middle of the field with him, a multi-time captain. We've got Justin Dietrich, Jonah Monheim, Mason Cobb, and Shane Lee, a multi-time captain, leading the Trojans out onto the field. The Utah captains to join them. Of course, uh, no Cam Rising for Utah today. That's the guy you'd expect to see at the middle of the field for the Utes, but he's, uh, he's standing there in a T-shirt watching from the sidelines as the captains go eye to eye here at midfield and we'll now shake hands Utah in all white uniforms today some boos from the Coliseum crowd as the rest of the Utes have joined the fray and taken the field here at the Coliseum it will be Utah that has the call and my guess is no matter what happens it's going to be Utah uh, USC football it feels like Utah wants to start on D and USC wants to start on O but we'll see what they have to say. Here's the voice of the White Hat. I don't know if you can hear it, but the Utah captain shows tails. USC has won the toss. And USC has elected to defer. Field Lincoln position. Riley doesn't want the football. Trojans will start on D. How about that? Field position. USC has won the toss. Has chosen to defer their choice to the second half. Utah will be receiving at this end of the field. It's time now for our starting lineups. Team on three. Quarterback, running back, DBs, linebackers. This is the starting lineup presented by iTrust Capital, the official crypto platform of the USC Trojans. Caleb Williams at quarterback, 23 touchdowns, four interceptions. The touchdowns the most in the country has thrown for 2,021 yards. That's third best in the conference, a midseason All-American. Marshawn Lloyd at running back. Leading the conference, second in the country with yards per carry at 7.53. Junior transfer from South Carolina. Lake McCree is the tight end. Across the front wall, Jonah Monheim. He'll have his hands full with Jonah Ellis, the All-American candidate defensive end for Utah. Emmanuel Pregnon, we believe, at least the listed starters are at left guard. The center, Justin Dietrich, Jarrett Kingston at right guard, and Michael Tarquin at right tackle. We'll see if that's the guys that show up on the field to start the game. Should be Brendan Rice. We'll see a lot of Zachariah Branch, Dorian Singer, Taj Washington, Michael Jackson, Mario Williams as the receivers for USC when they are on offense. The defensive side of the ball for the Trojans will have Bear Alexander, Stanley Tafoe up front, Solomon Bird, Jamil Muhammad, the defensive ends. He'll have Jalen Smith at the nickelback spot, Mason Cobb and Tackett Curtis, the starting linebackers, Christian Roland Wallace, and Damani Jackson at cornerback, Kalen Bullock, and probably Bryson Shaw in the uh, stead of the injured Max Williams on the defensive side of the ball. For Utah, on their offensive side, Bryson Barnes is the quarterback instead of Cam Rising, who's been injured ever since the Rose Bowl last year. Jaquindon Jackson, a very good running back, 333 yards, and his only touchdown this year last week at home against Cal. He's a sophomore from Dallas. Sione Vaki is going to get some time back there, not only as the Wildcat position, but also as a, a standard running back. Money Parks, Devon Vele, and probably Munir McLean, the former Trojan, the starting receivers. Across the front, the tight end will be Noah Benet, his third stringer. Charlie Vincent deep to receive the opening kickoff, which is just off the foot and all the way to a fair catch called for. Back at the goal line for Utah, so they'll start off at the 25. Spencer Fano, 
The left tackle, Keaton Bills, the captain, left guard. New starting center because their regular center, Jaron Kump, has been banged up. Coley Feiu will be the starting center. Mike Bocafisi and uh, Satoa Laumea from Eisenhower High in the Inland Empire, the right tackle. Copyrighted broadcast, the property of USC Sports Properties and Division of Playfly Sports. Any he rebroadcast or reproduction in Carter and Hole without the express written consent of USC Sports Properties is strictly prohibited. Today's game brought to you by Wells Fargo, a proud sponsor of the official retail bank of the USC Trojans. One back set, Jaquindon Jackson, first and ten, far hash mark from their own 25. Bryson Barnes, the quarterback, sends a man in motion, gives it to Jackson, coming around the near side. He gets outside of 30, 35, and out of bounds to the 38. The old Trojan bugaboo from the beginning of the season. Teams beating them around the edge on a running play. Yeah, got good pressure up the front from uh, Bear Alexander. Got some good pressure in the middle. Just no edge support there. Got to turn that one back into the big fellas inside. So 13 yards on the first play and a first down to the 38-yard line and a good start for what has been not a great Utah offense, not terrible, but scoring points has been a problem, only averaging 22 per game. But when you're giving up only 12 points a game, that's okay. Barnes in the shotgun this time. Jackson up the middle and gets some big yards again. Almost another first down to the 48 before being brought down by Tackett Curtis. Did they give him the 10? No, knee down after a nine-yard game. So second and one out at the 46 and a half. Yeah, not surprising anybody. Utah coming out and running the ball. Trojan's going to have to stand up, or Kyle Whittingham just going to force that run through him all night. Out of the game goes Jamil Muhammad. In comes Braylon Shelby. Also Romello Heights. So some new personnel early on for the Trojans here. Zion Branch did get the start at safety next to Kalen Bullock. And Barnes in the shotgun on second and one will take a chance. Throws left, wide open. Trojan 30, 25-20. 10, 5, Utah scores on their first series and scores easily. Sione Vaki, who also starts at safety for Utah, plays that running back spot. He was split out that time and beat his man easily for a long score, and the Utes have the early lead. Yeah, nice play drawn up by Utah there. They get Sione Vaki. Trojans are aware he's out there. They catch him in a bad matchup with Braylon Shelby, their outside rush guy. Sione Vaki, that's, he's going to win that one all day. Just one's a little wheel route up the side. Beats Braylon Shelby. Tough matchup for Braylon Shelby there. Extra point try. Jack Bowmeister. Stutter steps his way to the front. The snap came a little late. He kicks it, though, and he kicks it up and in. And so only a minute, 16 seconds into the game, and Utah scores to lead 7-0. A three-play, 75-yard drive and a 53-yard touchdown pass. By the way, in case you're wondering, Bryson Barnes, how many touchdowns has he thrown for this year? That would be number two. Yeah, they catch the Trojans in a bad defense there. Shabraylon Shelby, outside rush linebacker there, stuck on Sione Vaki, who's a much quicker player there. So Trojans, they get, you think Sione Vaki's been rushing the ball well. Trojans loaded up for the run there, get caught off guard, and they throw a nice wrinkle in their offense. Well, that quieted the crowd down. I am looking around the Coliseum Bowl here, and it looks like a crowd of about 50,000. There are still some coming in, particularly in the student section. Beautiful day here in L.A. The uh, field is almost covered in shadows, but not altogether. The part of the field that is in the sun is the part where Zachariah Branch is standing, and he's holding his left arm up over his eyes to shield as Carter kicks off. And it'll go into the end zone for a touchback. So both teams will start off at their own 25-yard line after the touchback kickoffs. Took Utah three plays. They went 13, 9, and 53. Yeah, pretty shocking, especially from an offense that has not been explosive, Pete. We saw last week they got a couple plays off. But really an offense that really just kind of want to grind it down the field there. Three plays, surprising the Trojans early. See this offense can, can respond. Trojans ready to go. Austin Jones gets the start ahead of Marshawn Lloyd as the running back to the left of Caleb Williams. Lake McCree, tight end, strong left. First down, Trojans, center of the field. Austin Jones away in motion briefly. Caleb doesn't like the play call, comes up and tells the offensive line he's changing that call. You've got Rice to the near side. Play clock down to five. Austin Jones gets the handoff. He's got big yards left side, drags some tacklers with him. 
across the 35 to the 36, an 11-yard pickup, and that's a USC first down. Let's quickly go down to Jordan Moore. Yeah, the sun is about to be behind the scoreboard, but for now it is painfully low and in the eyes of Caleb Williams. Back to action as Caleb will keep, rolls right, throws to Michael Jackson, gets a nice block from Zachariah Branch, dives across that block and out to the 40-yard line, a four-yard pickup on the play. Looked like uh, Caleb could have run that and got some yardage on it, more than four, but four is what they got, second and six at the 40. Third play of the first Trojan drive. Fake the handoff, throw to Zachariah Branch. Stutter steps at the 40, dragged out of bounds smartly at the 42-yard line by Elijah Davis. Down below us, a short gain of two yards. It'll be third and four for the Trojans. Yeah, Trojans. I think what they struggled a lot this year is that little mesh point with Caleb Williams. He's really been kind of indecisive at those at those mesh points this year uh, where he's deciding whether he's going to give it to the running back instead of just knowing right away he's been holding forever. I think that's kind of been where you've st seen the offense stumble a little bit. Marshawn Lloyd is in, but he's wide to the far side in front of his own Trojan bench. Joined on that side by Taj Washington, Michael Jackson, near side twin receivers Rice and Branch. Empty backfield on third and four. For Caleb, dancing around, waiting, still waiting. Steps up, he'll run it, 40, 45. He's at the 50, he's at the 45. Gets a little shoulder block from Rice and goes out of bounds. And a good, nice early run by the Trojan quarterback. Caleb Williams sets him up with a first down at the 45. On a peak, he's there. Good job by the offensive line as well, holding up their block, get, get Ellis blocked inside, and holding up their block, staying on the guys, giving Caleb all kinds of time, a nice rushing lane up the middle there. Yeah, sooner or later, that bell goes off in his head, and he takes off. He knows he's got to go. Last week, he didn't have that bell go off. He didn't have any time to have a bell go off. First down at the 45, on the youth side of the field. Marshawn Lloyd, the one back to the right side of Caleb Williams. Holds the ball out for Lloyd, hands it to Lloyd, gets a block, gets inside the 35-30. A race to the end zone that Marshawn Lloyd will win. Touchdown, USC. Huge hole off the left side of the Trojans, took advantage of it, and Marshawn Lloyd scores. 45 yards. And a response from the offensive line. We talked about them all week, Pete. It's been a struggle for them. They get Mason Murphy and Jerry Kingston out there pulling around on that side, and Marshawn Lloyd does the rest. Just follows his blockers right there. No one really even gets close to him until the end there. Great job by the offensive line. Great response. They've been under ridicule all week. I'm sure they heard that. There they get the job done. Dennis Lynch looking for his 124th consecutive point after touchdown kick success. The kick is up. The kick is good. Timeout on the field. Did you have a shootout on your bingo card? Probably not. 11.49 to go in the first quarter. USC 7, Utah 7 on the Trojan Football Media Network. I'm getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20. So am I, because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine. It can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. It's everything you love about KABC on your phone. Hello? Uh, your smartphone. The new and improved KABC app. Streaming live Niners and Trojans games on the go. How do you do? Listen to your favorite KABC shows live or on demand. Let that sink in. Get breaking news notifications. Browse our top stories. Heck, you can even be a part of our street team by sharing images, video, and more. And with CarPlay support, you can stream on the road anytime, anywhere. The new and improved KABC app. Get it today. Tackling the day's headlines. John Phillips. Weekdays noon to 3 on AM 790 KABC. <laughs> Well, the Utes go three plays, 75 yards in a minute, 16 on their first possession. The Trojans come back with a five-play, 75-yard drive that took just under two minutes. Both teams score from long range. It's 7-7, quite the run, and good blocking up front 
on the pull for USC on that run by Lloyd. Yeah, and a changeup at the offensive line, Pete. Uh, they got Mason Murphy moving to right guard and Jarrett Kingston, his natural position where he came from, from Washington State. He was playing right tackle. Now he kicks out to right tackle. Both those guys on that play pulled around the classic guard tackle counter or uh, run from, from Lincoln Riley. They come around, knock out their guys, and Marshawn Lloyd has a giant hole. If what you're doing isn't working, then changing things makes sense, and that's good. They're making some changes. Good. Yeah, we've seen some struggles at that right tackle position. I think he's Michael Tarquin has struggled a little bit. Maurice Mercy has come in for him. But now you have Jaron Kingston, whose natural position when he came here, Pete, with, at Washington State was at right tackle. So now he's getting a chance to maybe get home in his position. Nice pull there. Offense get off to a good start. Vincent and Matthews are deep to receive the kick. Coors Light helping to begin today's game. Coors Light made to chill. Last kickoff right to the goal line. And Utah decided to take that for a fair catch. This one will not be the case as it's picked up by Matthews at the 11. He gets hit and bounces his way out across the 25 to the 29-yard line by Chris Thompson. Top 25 college football playoff report brought to you by Modelo, the fighting spirit of the USC Trojans. 11th-ranked Oregon beat Washington State 38-24. Third-ranked Ohio State. I know you got up early to watch this. Beat number six Penn State 20-12, to and I'm very impressed with Ohio State's defense. They look really good. Seventh-ranked Oklahoma had to hold off Central Florida, 31-29. Oklahoma was a 17-point pick in that. Tennessee was way out in front of Alabama, but the Crimson Tide at home, ranked eighth. Edge the 15th-ranked Volunteers, 34-20. Utah ball, first down at the 29. Better field position than last time by four yards. Didn't seem to matter last time, and it won't matter this first play. Jaquindon Jackson undercut by Zion Branch, but not until he gets out to the 37-yard line. He'll get eight. That's a second and two. So whatever is going on up front for Utah's offensive line, it's working so far. And the Trojans have made a change at defense. They're running a 4-3, classic 4-3 little base defense with Eric Gentry, Tackett Curtis, and Mason Cobb at linebacker. So a little switch up instead of that nickel defense with Jalen Smith. Anthony Lucas is in. So they're trying to put everybody in there and wait until somebody plays well and then leave them in. I think that's what's happening at the moment. Gentry comes up to the line of scrimmage, joined there. And now a handoff of the backfield and a good play by Romello Height, joined by Anthony Lucas, who gets shoved after the play by Jaquindon Jackson, who lost a couple of yards on the play. And, and uh, Lucas says, how are you going to let the guy push me like that? Great play there by the, both the ends right there, Romello Height, Anthony Lucas. We've been waiting for them to kind of kind of been the backup guys all year here, getting a chance to shine early in this game, see if they get, get home on this big third and down. Eon Bars and Dijon Benton are in. So the Trojans are pulling all the guys off the bench. If you're suited up, you're playing today, I guess. This is a third and five now. They had a second and two and a half. Different play. Oh, the center just moved the ball. That's a penalty. That's Coley Feiu filling in for the injured Jaron Kump. Feiu, the sophomore from Seattle, started last week against Cal, and he's in there again, and he kind of jerked the ball a little bit, and they'll lose five yards because of it. Yeah, Illegal to... snap infraction. Offense, number 51. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. Kind of the Trojan fans there with one right there. Pete, not a huge crowd yet, but uh, getting it done in the loud factor. Looks like Keaton Bills, the left guard, moved inside to take over the center spot on that snap. So they've got a little work going on in their offensive line as well. Gentry and Branch in the lineup for the Trojans. Gentry right up over center. Trojans showing blitz with Bryson Shaw. Here they come. Quarterback rolls right, throws underneath, dropped. Simply dropped. Fourth down and they'll have to punt. And great pressure right there. Alex Grinch Brink dials up a blitz with Eric Gentry there up the middle just comes free, beats the back, knocks Bryson. Excuse me, <laughs> knocks Bryson Barnes off his spot right there, forces him on the run. Not a quarterback known for throwing on the run there, but there his wide receiver that drops the ball. No pickup from Manier McLean. Manier McLean, the old uh, Trojan, uh, kick is away by Bowmeister. Dropped at the 15, but it was a fair catch called for, and then it bounced right back up into the hands of Zachariah Branch. And so uh, the play was blown dead back at the 16-yard line. We'll take a timeout. Ten minutes, two seconds left in the first quarter. Utah scores on their first possession, but not on the second one. And the Trojans have their second try coming up after this break of the Trojan Football Media Network. It's time to recharge, reconnect, and rediscover your perfect combination at Pachanga Resort Casino. And with your resort favorites back in action, 
there's all of the excitement and comfort you love with the peace of mind you can depend on. So whenever you're ready for a little rest, a little relaxation, and a lot of fun, we'll be here. Play your perfect combination at Pechanga Resort Casino today. We are Life Law, where we make injury law simple. We have two simple goals for all of our clients, full medical recovery and ultimately full monetary compensation. We understand that it can be overwhelming to face the uncertainty in the wake of an accident. We will be there with you at each step in the legal and health care process. You will pay nothing unless we win your case. Dial 1-800-LYFE-LAW or check us out at lyfe.com. Life Law, official sponsors of USC Athletics. It takes hard work to be the best in the game. Planning, commitment, resilience, sweat. That's why Old Dominion Freight Line, the number one national LTL carrier for quality, works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in theirs. Old Dominion Freight Line, official freight carrier of USC Athletics, helping the world keep promises. It's like a sneak peek into the Trojans locker room. It's, it's Trojans Live, Monday nights at 7 on KABC. 7-7 draw, about five minutes into the game. Trojans and Utah Utes. Let's go down and spend some time on the field with Jordan Moore. Well, obviously the big story for Utah all season has been the fact that Cam Rising has not played. Uh, that's been a surprise to some people. It, it seemed like many times he was coming back, but never really seemed to have gotten the green light after injuring his knee in the Rose Bowl. And you remember that game back in Salt Lake City in particular last year. Not only is he a great thrower, and Dalton Kincaid ate up the Trojans in that game, he was a tremendous runner, particularly in short yardage, and was a major factor in that game. Just watching Bryson Barnes, that's something really he does not bring to the table. As it stands, the Trojans just need to deal with a traditional run game. That's why they're going to the Wildcat and the backup quarterback at times, because Barnes is not a running threat the way Kim uh, was. Hand off, Lloyd, right side. Last time went 45 for a touchdown. This time goes about five before being pushed back. Second and five for USC. Ninth ranked Texas had a little bit of trouble at Houston, winning 31 to 24. Missouri ranked 20th, beat South Carolina 34 to 12. Second and five, maybe even a little shorter than that. As Caleb takes the snap, throws a little bubble screen out. It looked like they got a face mask there on Brendan Rice. I don't see a flag down. Rice ends up getting the first down out across the 25 to about the 29-yard line. Yeah, I'd like to see more Brendan Rice. He, he can compete out there. Big physical body right there, just two on one. Todd Washington trying to hold up one guy. Brendan Rice, strong run. Keeper. Now an underneath toss to Blake McCree, and he won't get away, and no gain on the play. Kind of like a long handoff, really, yeah, from like Caleb Williams to Lake McCree, but that play was not well developed. Caleb to just use his legs right there. I know yeah. he wants to get the ball to Lake McCree, let him do something right there. 13's in space. He's dangerous at that position. He, he should take off with the ball right there, trying to make something happen. Second and 10. Lloyd still is the one back. Washington. And Singer to the right now. Taj Washington comes over to the near side. And McCrea was on the left. Goes over to the right. And switching sides also. Marshawn Lloyd. Also down this near side. Brendan Rice. Everybody just changed pattern right there. And that line up there in the first place. Hand off. Lloyd right side. He got away. And out to 35. Pushed forward to the 40. And 43 yard line. Nice job by Monheim. Saw his man standing straight up. Just gave him a two hand shove for an extra three yards. First down, USC. Yeah, right now this offensive line is winning the physicality battle. Pete. It's been a while since we said that, but they're coming off strong. Trojans back to the line of scrimmage quickly. Another handoff to Lloyd. Another few yards up the middle. Looked like he might have bobbled that ball, but got it right back to the 47-yard line, a gain of four. Second and six. When someone's been talking about you for a couple weeks, you can hear that. I'm sure Coach Henson has relayed that to his guys. Hey, guys, we need to step up our level of play. You've seen the offensive line that's coming off the ball right now. The second down call, a play action fake. Todd Caleb will wind up and throw long for Taj Washington. Caught a diving catch. I think he's short of the goal line, right on the one foot line. He makes the catch, and down there, a little bit overthrown, barely, and a great catch by Taj Washington. 
and a Trojan first and goal inside the one. How do you do? 47 yards. On the fingertips, Pete. An amazing catch. When Caleb let go of that ball, I said, no way Taj is getting there. But Taj watched tip, kept going, turned on the gas right there, and with his fingertips brought it in. First and goal inside the one, the La Victoria red zone, and it's Caleb to keep, and he'll get hit. In trouble, rolling right at the five, down inside the three to the two. Lost a yard on the play as it turns out. Second and goal from that spot. Looked like he wanted to throw that in the back of the end zone. Remember, this is a very good Utah defense, especially good against the run. And so far tonight, George has been running the ball okay. Yeah, I was still I was still caught up in the last play. I was still celebrating, Peter. Sorry, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't think I saw that one. He just rolled to the right and ran out of room. There's nobody open. That's all. So second down, a little further back now, around the two-yard line. Austin Jones. Behind an offset to the left, behind Caleb. Receivers either way on second and goal. Flip around, Zachariah Branch can walk into the end zone. Touchdown, USC. Looked like he was going to hand it off to Austin Jones, just kind of tossed it behind him, and there was Zachariah Branch to grab it, and there's nobody paying any attention to him, which is a bad idea. Great play call, but that's all designed because that all works because the running game has been so successful. Utah had to load it up in there, got the run. They were trying to stuff that room, all loaded up, didn't see Zachariah coming around the end, and number one just walks it in. Credit him with a two-yard run and a little bit of deception by Caleb there. That was cute. And Zachariah with his first rushing touchdown of his young career. The extra point. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Six minutes, 17 seconds remaining first quarter. Time out of the field with the Trojans, leading Utah 14-7 to on the USC Football Radio Network. Hi, I'm a helpful Southern California Honda person, and this is what happened when I called Paula with a random act of helpfulness. I really need help on my yard. Okay. I have weeds that grow six feet high, oh. and I had sciatica really, really bad. Oh, no. I have no one to help me, and I don't have much. Okay. I don't have any money to hire anybody, and nobody wants to help. Oh. I'm on a fixed income, so after I pay my rent and everything, sometimes I run out of money before the end of the month, oh. so I can't go paying anybody. Well, that's why we're going to bring over some landscapers to give your yard a makeover. Oh, that would be so beautiful. <laughs> And we're going to pay you for sharing your story on the radio. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I could use that. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we helped someone get their yard back. And we can help you, too, with Honda Service Pass. Free factory scheduled maintenance for two years or 24,000 miles, whichever comes first. It comes included with all 2024 Hondas, like the CRV. Visit SoCalHondaDealers.com and see your helpful SoCal Honda dealer for details. Yard work, groceries, kids' parties. <laughs> Do your weekends feel like everything but yours? All I wanted was to watch the SC game. Reclaim your weekends with the new and improved KABC app. Stream live Trojans games on the go. So whether you're stuck at your kid's soccer game. Turn around! The field's that way! Or driving around town running errands. Touchdown, USA! <laughs> never miss a play. The new and improved KABC app. Get it today. Check out our other winning team. Armstrong and Getty, morning 6 to 9 on AM 790 KABC. Utah's given up 17 points this year in the first six games in the first quarter. Today they've given up 14 points, and there's still six minutes left in this first quarter. Let's go down again to Jordan Moore on the Trojan sideline. Well, sign stealing has been in the news this week in college football. It has nothing to do with these two teams. Michigan really the team that uh, everybody is talking about. But I am not surprised that it has raised the paranoia of college football head coaches, I'm sure, across the country today. And I've noticed that USC has somebody whose job it is to walk out as Lincoln Riley is calling the play and unfurl a, a big white banner right in front of him so that the other sideline cannot read his lips or see what he's doing or anything. So it seems like USC has made a uh, preemptive adjustment to any potential chicanery that they might be worried about the rest of the season. Air Force has taken the lead in the Commander in Chiefs trophy, beating Navy today 17 to 6. The Air Force is uh, ranked 22nd in the country. First time in a long time Air Force has been ranked in the top 25. They still have to play Army, and then, of course, the Army-Navy game at the end, and the one that wins the majority of those games will be the Commander-in-Chief trophy winner. Kickoff is away. 
This one will go deeper than the last. It'll be taken at the goal line by Mikey Matthews, and Matthews will get to the 20. Stays on his feet. Trojans miss a tackle. It'll go the other way. He's got the kicker to beat, and uh, he slows him up enough for Jamil Muhammad to get out there and grab him, but not before Mikey Matthews gets all the way to the Trojan 47-yard line. Kickoff return coverage has not been great for USC this year, and there are a lot of people, and I can understand why, who complain that the Trojans don't have a special teams coach, and so this kind of thing happens sometimes. Yeah, I don't know how it has to do all with the coaching there, Pete. No. You need guys that want to run down and tackle right there. You just have a guy, a lot of guys using their shoulder, waiting for one guy to make a play there, and, and he get it, didn't get him down, and that's why you see the big return. Barnes sends Jaquindon Jackson to the far right side, leaving an empty backfield. Winds and throws left side. Nice tackle by Tackett Curtis right at the point of the catch and on the sideline as he drives the receiver out of bounds, Money Parks. Bryson Shaw was there. And Parks with his 13th catch of the year. His first name is Monteron, but they call him Money. I guess that's because his first name is Monteron. Second down. Could be an old family name. I don't know. Make fun of the guy. Could be Grandpa's name somewhere down the line. Second and five at the Trojan 42, already with a short field. Matthews in motion. Misdirection handoff to Jaquindon Jackson. And a nice tackle coming in from the nickelback spot, Jalen Smith. And... It'll be a gain of only a yard on the play. Third and four. Pretty big play right here for Utah. Yeah, huge play by Jalen Smith right there. He's outweighed by uh, Jaquindon Jackson to buy about 40, 50 pounds there. Take the guy low right there. Nice form tackle. That's how you tackle a big guy right there. Jaquindon Jackson's going to be troublesome in a couple of years. At 6'2 and 228 now as a sophomore. We'll give him a couple of years to get bigger and stronger. He's already fast and deceptive in the way he moves. Tight end, Suga, Suga Ratura sets up on the right side. Matthews in motion, but the give to Jackson again. Hit at the line, backed up. He gets tackled forward to the 40, and that's all. Gang tackle by the horde of Cardinal Trojans at the 40-yard line, fourth and three, and it's a significant three from the 40-yard line. Tyrone Teleni, first contact, according to our spot-on spotter, Bertawada, who then waves me off and says, aw, shucks. Fourth and three. Going here? Looks like they're going for it. They're bringing Vaki on that play. I've seen a much more aggressive defensive front, offensive line on both sides, attacking the line of scrimmage here. Trojans have been so Trojans make some changes, bringing in Romello Height. Bear Alexander is out. New running back, but he'll vacate. That's Sione Vaki. Look out for him. Barnes throws. Vaki catches at the 40. First down and down to the 32-yard line. You knew that if he's on the field, they're going to give him the ball. Yeah, just poor awareness there by Eric Gentry. You know Vaki. Vaki didn't even know what he looked like he was doing on the play. Hey, Bryson had to tell him where to go. Just runs a little out to the flat. It looked like Eric Gentry didn't, wasn't sure that he had him or not. Found out too late and just an easy pitch and catch there. First and 10 at the Trojan 32-yard line. Vaki, a sophomore from Northern California, leads the team in tackles, and if he runs a few more yards, he's going to lead the team in rushing as well. When's the last time that happened in a college football? Playing Johnny there. Been a long time. Under center goes Barnes, fakes the handoff, gets a block, throws long. It'll be overthrown into the end zone. Damani Jackson and Zion Branch back defending Devon Vele, the kid from Rancho Bernardo in the San Diego area. Incomplete pass brings up a second and 10 at the 32. Yeah, Vele, McLean, kind of their deep threats there. If you're the Trojans, you want U U uh, Utah doing that. That's what. The, that's not their strength is hitting these deep passes on the outside. You, they're, they're more of a ground and pound and stay in the middle of the field. Little crossing routes there. Utah takes a shot. That was Cole Becker as a field goal kicker. Five for seven, 51 yards. Taquan Feegans is in for USC at the nickelback spot. I haven't called his name much this year. Handoff. Getting away at the 25-20. This is Jackson. Brought down finally by some Trojans with the help of Kalen Bullock, who made the first hit, but not before Jackson. All the way down to the 12-yard line. Referees talking to each other about something or other, but I guess the play's going to stand. It'll be first down. Sideline warning. Somebody uh, too far out on the sideline. Lincoln Ryland's giving the refs an earful about something down there. He's not excited about something. Well, and the ref, who's on the sideline, ran down the field chasing that play and ran into a USC coach, and that is always a sideline warning, if not a penalty. So first and 10 at the 12-yard line as Utah continues to move up the field trying to get this tying touchdown. Wide to the right, Vele. Jalon Glover is the one back for the first time. 
a little bit smaller. Barnes is wide, so you've got Vaki as the Wildcat. Yeah, he's going to carry the ball. Left side gets to the 10, flag down, and Vaki carries it all the way down to the 5, but a penalty marker on the play. And it's going to be a procedure call against uh, Utah, so negate the play and back him up five yards. Illegal formation, offense, five players in the backfield, five-yard penalty, replay, first down. Minnesota won at 23rd-ranked Iowa, 12-10. to 10. That's a thriller. 24th ranked Tulane over North Texas, 35-28. Those are the final scores. We'll have some uh, games underway, and we'll give you those scores perhaps in the second quarter. Here, we're only uh, 2 minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first quarter, and the Trojans leading 14-7. Utah scored on their first drive. The Trojans have scored on each of theirs. Handoff, misdirection, Glover. Skates his way in and gets landed on by Cobb and Curtis at the 10. So picks up the original five and three after that. And then it'll be a second down. Second down from the 10-yard line. They need to get to the two. Yeah, Utah's just going to keep challenging you with those run plays, making sure your gap's down. We saw on the play previous where they had the big chunk run. You lose a gap there. Tackett Curtis kind of got swallowed up on that one. You lose that gap, then this run game is going to be effective. Curtis, the freshman from Louisiana, Louisiana High School Player of the Year. Landon King in at tight end. They're missing their top two tight ends. Trips right. King comes in motion. Barnes will keep and run. What's that about not running? Called his own number up the middle and scores from 10 yards out. Bryson Barnes with his third rushing touchdown of the season. That's two more than his passing touchdown total. And the game is one kick away from being tied up. Yeah, we didn't think this one was going to be an offensive game here, Pete. It looks like we got a shootout so far, 14-14. They're a little uh, design QB draw. They spread everybody out, go five wide, and Bryson Barnes just carries it right up the middle. Cole Becker to attempt the extra point. He's made all of his so far this year. The kick is away, and he made it with a minute 54 remaining in the first quarter. We've had 28 points scored already. This thing goes on like this. The final's going to be uh, overtime. It's going to be in the 60s. I don't think we expected that necessarily. Utah, Barnes has thrown one pass that's been completed, right? Okay, okay, okay. The long one for the touchdown? Just one, yeah, one to Vaki or a couple to Vaki. Oh, yeah, he had the one to Vaki. Well, here they are. I've just updated the stats, which is a problem, of course. And they finally catch up. Three for five for 67 yards. Vaki's caught two for 62. And Jackson, seven rushes for 51 yards for the Utes. What are the Trojans doing? Williams is a perfect five for five for 63. Taj caught the long one for 51 yards to set up the short touchdown run by Zachariah Branch. Marshawn Lloyd, four carries, 71 yards. Trojans already over 100 yards rushing against a team that only gives 68 yards per game. Yeah, I like the game plan from the Trojans so far. They've been able to pound the ball. You didn't think uh, you need to take a little weight off Caleb Williams' shoulders there, and they have the guys to do it. Just got to find the right uh, group of offensive linemen to get in there together. Looks like they got a good cohesion right now, blocking really hard, knocking Utah off the ball. See if we can catch you up on a couple of other scores here. Well, I would if I could get my phone to work, but you know how that goes. Technology today, Pete. Oh, gosh, you know. Uh, North Carolina leading Virginia 17-14 in the third. Auburn and Ole Miss tied at 14 at the half. Duke 17, Florida State 7 in the second. Michigan at Michigan State 21-0 the Wolverines early second quarter. LSU blowing out Army 28-0 in the second quarter. Everything else either a final or hadn't started yet. Those that have not started are the ones as far as the Pac-12 Pac are concerned are UCLA and Stanford and Arizona State Washington and they will both get underway at 7.30 our time, so about two hours from now. Utah, the back-to-back Pac-12 champions, and they've been in the Pac-12 championship game in four of the last five years, but if they don't win today, they've got a problem because they'll have two conference losses already, and I don't know that you're going to be able to get into the conference championship game with two losses. Now, in the days when we had a north and south division, maybe you could squeak in because one of the divisions wasn't as strong. Yep. But I don't think you're going to get in with two. Zero and one is going to be the Yeah, pretty surprising year, I think, for, for Utah in general. You think they lose Cam Rising and don't have Brent Cathy. You thought on the year they might really struggle. But uh, being able to fight in this one, stay in tight ball games, play strong defense, and then looking at five and one here, and then coming to the Coliseum trying to beat the Trojans. Rushing yards, 96 for SC. Utah has 
given up an average of 109 rushing yards per game in the last seven years. Jeez. 109 <laughs> in seven years. Kickoff. Everybody stand up. Get ready. Zach Raya Branch from the one-yard line. He's at the 10. He's out to the 20. Gets hit there and gets to the 25. You just never know. you got to pay attention. So the Trojans start off right where he would have been if he would have taken a fair catch, but it was exciting to think for a moment. It's kind of like it's kind of like playing the lottery, Sean. You think for a minute, maybe you got a shot, and then you get tackled. He hit it. He hit it full speed. I know that. Twenty-five yard line. Lloyd comes out. He's had a nice night. We've only had less than a quarter of the time played. If you advance that stat for him, he's going to have a really nice night. He'd have 280 yards. Not a record for USC, but. It'd be one of the best games in history. First and 10, SC at the 25, moving right to left to the Cardinal and Gold. Hand off to Lloyd. He'll run backwards after getting hit at the line. Lake McCree trying to block over there, but not doing much of it. And a three-yard pickup to the 28. Lander Barton out of Salt Lake City's Brighton High. They were state champs. Two-time All-Stater makes the tackle. His mom, a University of Utah Hall of Famer in volleyball. Caleb wants to throw, looks long, throws short. Marshawn Lloyd at the 30, battles his way out to the 33, short of a first down by a couple of yards. He's pretty strong, 5'9". Put on a little weight now. Started the season. It's rare. Usually you lose weight as the season goes along. He's actually gained a few pounds, about 217 right now. Started the year 210. Yeah, running physical tonight, too. I like Caleb right there. Just getting the ball out quick. Take what they give you right there. A little zone defense from Utah. Find a guy in open space. Get some yards. Set up a third and short here. Third and two. Luther Ellis looking over to the sideline for a call. The defensive right end. We haven't called his name much so far. Empty backfield now. Williams. Deuce Robinson and Austin Jones this way. Taj Washington and Michael Jackson the other. Third and two. Long count. Whistles. And I think the Trojans First called time out. Yeah. Time out. USC. USC. Again, hate to use them with 30 seconds left in a quarter, but pretty important third down play coming up here. So you want to make sure you get the right stuff in there. Yeah, it looked like they were trying to spread out Utah, maybe thinking about doing Caleb on a little draw themselves. Only four down line and everybody else spread out. Like my Caleb's chances in there making that first down. Trojan, Trojan fans, time to get your roll on with Roll 'em Up Taquitos, the official taquito of USC Athletics. That sounds good right about now. Visit RollEmUp.com to find the location nearest you. Fight on and roll 'em up. Sideline report brought to you by DirecTV, leader in sports on Saturday and every other day. That means we're going down to Jordan Moore. Yeah, we talked about the competition and ultimately the shuffle at offensive line. Wide receiver a position has not performed at a particularly high level the last couple of weeks, and we're seeing a little change here or some opportunity. But Kai Lemon, Deuce Robinson, both coming out and uh, involved in this series. Not as touch the, touch the football yet, but uh, clearly some competition at the wide receiver spot this week as well. Here's the big third and two from the 33. Far hash. Three down linemen, actually two down linemen, and four on the line of scrimmage defensively, including O'Toole and Ellis. It'll be Caleb to call his own number, and he won't make it. He ran right into the arms of Jonah Ellis and gets a, a yard, and that's all to the 34, and now it's fourth and one. Well, you can't mess around here in a 14-all game. you got to kick it out. Yeah, it looked like they, were, they had that play scripted from the beginning in uh, the – they're rushing Jonah Ellis. He was all over, just retraced his steps, and Caleb didn't see him, unfortunately, and just tackled him. First. Eddie Chapliski to punt, averaging 45 yards per kick, and only two punt return yards against him all season. We won't find out about this punt, that was the end of the first until quarter. we come back. The first quarter is over. A wild one it was. USC 14, Utah 14. Back with the second quarter after these messages on the Trojan Football Media Network. Once you get the meat and cheese for your sub freshly sliced right in front of you at Jersey Mike's, I'll tell you, there's no going back to anything else. That'd be like going back to dial-up internet. Ugh. Am I connecting to space to order Jersey Mike's? Any day now. Okay, it's about to connect. What? Who picked up the phone? Nope. There's no going back once you see it freshly sliced at Jersey Mike's. A sub above. 
You don't have to train and compete at an elite level to enjoy the benefits of Honey Stinger products. Honey Stinger produces fuel for athletes of all kinds using delicious honey and organic ingredients. Not only is honey rich in antioxidants, but it's also easily digested and absorbed quickly into the system to help you prepare, perform, and recover. Turn to Honey Stinger to achieve your performance goals and feel better along the way. Honey Stinger, official nutrition partner of USC Athletics. In today's college athletics landscape, a strong name, image, and likeness program is an essential pillar to on-field success. House of Victory is an alumni-led, nonprofit collective dedicated to providing a competitive edge in the NIL space for USC student-athletes. Contributions allow our coaches and programs to recruit and retain elite athletes while allowing the student-athletes to shine beyond the game. House of Victory is calling on all Trojan fans for your support. To join our alumni community and benefit student-athletes, visit houseofvictory.com or text HOV to 53555. While USC is making game-changing moves on the field, Athletic Brewing Company is changing up what's in the cooler while you enjoy the game. Athletic Brewing crafts great-tasting and award-winning non-alcoholic beers that are fit for all times. When it comes to flavor, there's no competition. Try it for yourself. First-time customers can use code USC10 to get 10% off their first six-pack at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, fit for all times. Exclusions and conditions apply. Your USC Trojans fight on here. You know where that is? AM 790 KABC. Welcome back to Trojan Football, second quarter presented by Southern California's own Stone Brewing, proud partner of USC Athletics and craft beer pioneer since 1996. Game stats powered by the LA Department of Water and Power, the 14 all tie after one quarter. First down's just about even, 6 5 SC. Running yards, 100 to 66 for the Trojans. And uh, passing yards, 68-67, just about even there. So the total offense, 168-133, and the total plays, 16-14 in favor of the Trojans. Back down to the sideline, Jordan's got something for us. Yeah, I like the pun here. I think two weeks from now when we're back in this building against Washington, you might think about going for it, fourth and one, even at your own 34. But against Utah, we talked about the importance of making them go a long field. With that said, a 14-point first quarter given up to this Utah offense is certainly not to the standard of uh, of what they're looking for today. So if you're going to trust your defense, they got to reward you. It's a big series coming up for the USC defense. By the way, Taj's long catch, that 51-yard uh, layout, fingertip grab, pretty nice catch. Gives him uh, enough yardage to move past Deontay Burnett into 18th on the all-time Trojan career list. And keep in mind, he didn't start here at SC. He started at Memphis. Yeah, big response here, drive for this defense. They give it up that first touchdown, and then that last one's on kind of a short field after the big return. So here they have a chance. It's going to be tough to set career records anymore with the transfer portal being what it is. You almost have to be around and be a starter for four years to set career records. First of all, hardly anybody has any good sticks around for all four years. You're gone after three. You're in the pros. Uh, but on the other hand, sometimes you don't get here in time. Sometimes you get here in the middle of your career. Snap back as we start the second quarter to Chapliski. The kick is going to be fair caught at the 19-yard line. And it is by Mikey Matthews, a 46-yard kick. That's basically exactly the script for Eddie Chapliski. Yeah, we've seen the Trojan defense go from uh, nickel to uh, base a couple times tonight, bringing in Eric Gentry, picking out Jalen Smith. Let's see what it's been based on personnel. Let's see what personnel they run out. Looks like they're going to go in that nickel uh, defense with Jalen Smith, see if they can have a better uh, start here, not let that run game get going. It's funny, they let they caught the ball at the 19, and after Matthews grabbed it, he stepped forward and put the ball down on the 20, and they gave him that extra yard. One man backfield up under center is Barnes. Barnes turns and hands off to Jaquindon Jackson, gets hit at the line, gets a couple of extra yards, and then pushed back. Whistles are blowing. you got to let go of him. They finally do after a two-yard, maybe even a three-yard gain to the 23. Curtis and Shaw, the first in there, uh, several Trojans to help make the tackle. Second and eight. Yeah, better first down play right there. Last drive he saw in the first down, they were getting eight or nine. Their Trojans stand up on first down, set you up better as a defense. You kind of expect pass here, kind of get ready for what you're going to see. Barnes back into the shotgun with Jackson to his left. Trojans with three down linemen and five on the line of scrimmage defensively. Snap back. Hand off Jackson again right into the middle. He'll still manage to get to the 25. Trojans got down, got low. 
and made the tackle in a third and five coming up. Well, you wanted a good defensive stand and you wanted it to happen quickly. This is the chance right here, third and five. Yeah, got to get a pass rush home here. Utah's not going to, they'll probably throw something quick here. They don't want Bryce Shaw or Bryce and Bryce to hold off forever here. The front, front hasn't been generating too much pressure as of late. Got to find a way to get back to the quarterback here. He likes to call his own number in these situations. He did on a, a play at the 10-yard line and ran it in for a touchdown. This time he wants to throw and does over the middle complete at a first down. A shoulder tackle by Cobb out at the 39-yard line of Delvon Vele, who has caught a couple after... Uh, Coming into this game with 12 catches into the season. Yeah, I got to think. They got to know they're they're thinking quick game. They can't. They don't really have a, a explosive pass offense. They want to get it going quick with Barnes. Get it out of his hands there. There, Romello High had a good rush. Just not enough time to get there with the quick pass. Yeah, very quick. Vele, 6'5", 210. An ex-walk-on, just a junior. Communications major. Spent a couple of years in Samoa on a Mormon mission. Barnes will throw on first down. Lots of time. Then the pocket breaks down and Heights got him. Romello Height came in from behind. Looked like Barnes was going to escape the pressure, but did not. And a big sack all the way to the 27-yard line. And it'll set Utah way off schedule. Yeah, big mistake there by Barnes. Just holding the ball way too long. Not accounting for Bar for excuse me, for Rello Height on the backside, who just keeps rushing, keeps rushing hard, never gives up on his rush. Not a pretty rush, but just fighting and getting after it. And Bryson Barnes holds on the ball way too long. Fourth sack of the season for Romello Height, who really hasn't played all that much. He's getting a lot of bang for his buck in terms of number of plays and lots of results. Second and long. Hand off to Jackson. Hit in the backfield and dropped by Dejon Benton. Another loss on the play. Back to the 24-yard line. Benton with a fifth tackle for loss. Trojans are pretty good at that. 59 tackles for loss right now. That's first in the conference and third in the nation. That's pretty good. Yeah, Utah misses their assignment there. Leaves Dejon Benton free. He comes home, collects, does a little gator tackle, twisting that leg, getting him down. The crowd starting to feed off this defense here in a little frenzy. Flip the field time, perhaps, here, and that means field position change, and that's a big deal. And a 14-all tie, early second quarter. You knew it was going to be close. You knew it was going to be fun. So far, it's been that. Hand off on third and forever. It's Jackson again. Gets wrestled down by Bear Alexander and Zion Branch. And it'll be fourth down, and Bo Meester will come in and kick. He also averaging about 45 yards a kick. Transfer from Michigan State. Yeah, big response. We talked about it, Pete. Big response there. Defense needed to stand up for their offense. They give up one first down, but they're fine. Two big TFLs, a sack, and a big TFL by Dejan Benton to knock Utah back win the field position there. I'm so glad Zion Branch is getting a chance to show his wares in a, in a game situation. He is really good and deserves to play a lot. Kick by Bo Meester. Waiting for it is Zachariah Branch. Calls for the fair catch and brings it in at the 25-yard line. So the field not flipped on a nice 44-yard kick by Bo Meester two-time special teams player of the week in the Pac-12. And the Trojans will start off from their own 25-yard line. When we return, 10:57 remaining in the first half. It's still SC 14 and Utah 14 on the Trojan Football Media Network. On the hunt for a newer used vehicle or want to lower your current payment, a bank-beating auto loan from USC Credit Union is the winning play. No more fumbling through paperwork. Get on the road to savings with fast and easy online pre-approval. And for our eco-conscious Trojans, score big on a 0.25% rate discount on your electric vehicle. Touchdown for the environment and your wallet. See uscreditunion.org slash fight on for more details. Federally insured by the NCUA. USC Trojan fans, Smart Stop Self Storage is ready for game day. Smart Stop Self Storage is committed to making the self storage experience easy and hassle free for all Trojan fans. Whether you're storing your Trojans tailgate gear, need temporary storage while moving to a new home, or need a storage solution for your business, we're here for you with convenient locations throughout Southern California. Smart Stop Self Storage, the smarter way to store. Visit smartstop.com to reserve your space today. Fight on. Fight on. It's everything you love about KABC on your phone. Hello. Uh, your smartphone. The new and improved KABC app. Streaming live Niners and Trojans games on the go. How do you do? 
Listen to your favorite KABC shows live or on demand. Let that sink in. Get breaking news notifications. Browse our top stories. Heck, you can even be a part of our street team by sharing images, video, and more. And with CarPlay support, you can stream on the road anytime, anywhere. The new and improved KABC app. Get it today. Sacking the day's headlines. The KABC News Blitz. Afternoons at 6 on KABC. The joint chiropractic can help ease your pain and keep you moving. To learn more and claim the new $29 new patient special, visit thejoint.com today. One interesting stat to keep an eye on, the Trojans are number one in the Pac-12 in first downs. Trojans are getting 25 first downs per game. Utah is number one in the Pac-12, giving up only 17 first downs per game. Well, SC has six right now. We're pretty early in the second quarter. I think you can extrapolate from that. This is their first possession of the second uh, quarter uh, after punting on the first play of the quarter that the Trojans would be around 23, 24, 25 first down. That'd be a lot more than Utah's used to giving up. You know what I'm thinking? That this might be the best team that Utah's played this year. Oh, definitely the best offense. I think you made that point earlier. Although Oregon State played them really well and beat them 21-7 in Corvallis. We know how tough that can be. Caleb will throw on first down. He throws out of the backfield, almost over the head, but a nice catch by Marshawn Lloyd, who drops the ball. Still alive, and Utah's got it, and they have picked it up and are starting to run with it, and whistles blow. And now what are they going to call? Somebody was down. Who's got the ball? Going on the field is a fumble and recovery by the defense. First down, Utah. Utah. Okay. Luther Ellis picked it up. Marshawn Lloyd went up the ladder to make the catch that was over his head a little bit. Brought it down, started to run with it, and as he was tucking it away, dropped it. Yeah, well, I had my eyes down the field. He made a, nice you know, catch. Got, a, got a good catch on it. I was, I was looking down the field, and just when he was tucking it away, Whoop. just lost the ball. Yeah, just a, especially from a running back, you don't expect that, who's, you know, so familiar with holding the ball here. They're going to see if it's a catch or not. Oh, like, was, it, yeah, was he bobbling it the whole time? It's like he's pull, when he's pulling it down, he never really had it do. in his hands, but he's kind of throwing it to himself to tuck it away. Boy, we'd see. get away with one here, wouldn't we? It would be a <laughs> never. Uh, uh, it's close. I don't know. He never really had control of it. Let's send it down to Jordan and see what he's got. If he's got a better angle. Yeah, I do not think that is a catch. And I'll tell you, the biggest thing is that he absolutely did not think he caught it because he easily could have picked up the fumble. So it's a huge mental mistake. I mean, you have to play to the whistle no matter what and just pick it up for safekeeping. But he clearly thought he dropped that football because he just slowly bent down to pick it up, frustrated that he had dropped the ball. So uh, I think they will rule this incomplete. Before they make that announcement, let's pause 10 seconds for stations to identify themselves on the USC Trojan Football Media Network. Your, your, your USC Trojans fight on here. Southern California's undisputed talk leader, KABC, Los, Los Angeles, Angeles, Orange County, a cumulus media station. How, how you say dodging bullet? Woo. Yeah, yeah. That would have, that's uh, that's a huge. That would have been a huge one right there. Giving the ball. Sideline the report presented by Direct TV, leader in sports on Saturday and every other day. So instead of a, a turnover, which would be SC's sixth in a row in a couple of weeks, it's an incomplete pass. I have never wanted to see an incomplete pass more. I was already looking. I didn't. I was excited. Marshawn Lloyd had some space. I thought he was going to do some damage there. Second and ten at the twenty-five. Jones is the feature back. Caleb takes the long snap, throws left, complete to Rice. First down to the 35 to the 36, driven out of bounds there by Travis Broughton, a senior from Tulsa Union High School, and a first and 10 for USC. Love to see more of that uh, offense. Just a little timing route. Let Brandon, run, Brandon Rice run his route. Let Caleb get the ball out on time. Caleb hands off to Austin Jones. Left side, no room there. Runs right into the wall. Uh, front man, the first guy to hit him, Junior Tafuna. Jonah Ellis there as well. We'll call his name a lot today. No gain, second and ten. Trojans right up on the ball again. Looking at the sideline quickly. Caleb looks left, throws at the feet, I think purposefully, of Michael Jackson. The incomplete pass as he had Tao Johnson, the nickelback, and also a safety, Nate Ritchie, uh, lurking around there. Maybe a good... A well-thrown ball might have been 
Yeah, Van Fillinger was right in his face. Really no angle to make that throw, so just throws a fastball into the ground. Third and 10 at the 36. Utah's defense starting to stiffen up. One lineman down on his hand right in the middle of the deep offensive line. That's Tafuna, the defensive tackle. Everybody else is wide for Utah. Five seconds on the play clock. Caleb finally takes the snap, drifts back a little further, waiting, throws over the middle, in and out of the hands of Deuce Robinson, incomplete at the 50, and the Trojans will be forced to punt. Well, all things considered, let's be honest, it could have been a fumble and Utah's ball like the 20-yard line, and instead they punt it from the 35. I I'll go with that. Yeah, they pick up one first down there. I would move a little ball against this, a little bit against this defense. There, I think Caleb was thinking Deuce would sit down in that zone right there in that little spot. Instead, Zeus, Deuce keeps moving over closer to the middle of the field, and they're just not on the same page. Lincoln Riley throws his head back in angst, if nothing else. The kick is away by Chapliski. It's caught at the 13, and the longest punt return of the year will get back out to the 21. Eight-yard return. Eight return, so Chapliski's now given up 10 yards in punt returns all year. We've got a break in the action. Now 9.59 remaining in the second quarter. Same as it was at the end of the first. 14-14 SC in Utah on the Trojan Football Media Network. Tommy Trojan is at the 10. The 5. Touchdown, USC! Make big plays on the field and in life. With iTrust Capital, you can buy and sell crypto 24-7 with the tax benefits of a retirement account. That's right. Invest in crypto with the tax advantages of an IRA. iTrust Capital is easy to use and has no sign-up fees. Don't be a Monday morning quarterback. Make big plays now. Visit itrustcapital.com to start investing today. iTrust Capital, the official cryptocurrency platform of the USC Trojans. Taxes and conditions may apply. Fees apply. Cryptocurrencies are a speculative investment. Saturdays are made for football. And when the game is on, we're finally off. Off duty, offline, out of office. A Cracked Coors Light is our do not disturb message to the world. On game day, we don't think about the 9 to 5, but worry about the 4th and 1. So this Saturday, grab a Coors Light, press play on some pigskin, and pause on everything else. Coors Light, mountain cold refreshments, made to chill. 2021 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, celebrate responsibly. Honey Stinger helps you prepare, perform, and recover throughout your athletic journey. Made with delicious honey and organic ingredients, Honey Stinger provides the fuel you'll need to push harder and go farther. Turn to Honey Stinger to achieve your performance goals and feel better along the way. Discover what all the buzz is about on HoneyStinger.com. Use code FIGHTON30 for 30% off organic waffles, chews, gels, and bars to help you sweeten the burn. Honey Stinger, official nutrition partner of USC Athletics. Sacking the competition. Dan Bongino. Weekdays 9 to noon on AM790 KABC. The afternoon sun leaping off to the west and the left. Still shining on the hills of Hollywood. The Hollywood sign, the Griffith Observatory, and the San Gabriel Mountains. Beautiful tonight. The only part of the Coliseum, really, that's got any sunshine is the torch. It's kind of well lit up over there. Sea breeze still blowing in. It's starting to get a little chillier. It was very uh, summery today in the 80s. It cooled off, though, now, and it should drop into the mid-60s by the time this game ends a little while from now. Old Dominion Freight Line helping to bring you tonight's game, the official freight carrier of USC Athletics, helping the world keep promises. 14 all tie, SC and Utah. The Utes scored easily on their first possession. So did the Trojans. And a nice long pass from Caleb Williams to Taj Washington set him up on a short touchdown pitch back to Zachariah Branch to tie the game or to make the Trojans lead 14-7 and then Utah scored to tie it up. Siona Vaki will get the handoff on the right side and get stretched out to the right after a short game from the 20 to the 23 and a half. Shane Lee with the tackle. That's his 100th career tackle since coming over from Alabama to USC. Yeah, and the Trojans beefing up in the run game, bringing Shane Lee, bringing Eric Gentry here. They're going to go back to nickel on second down because Utah takes out a tight end there. And that 12 personnel with that one back and two tight ends look like the Trojans want to be in that base defense tonight as they prepare for that uh, Utah run game. The men up front are Bars and Benton, who had a nice tackle for loss earlier. Anthony Lucas, one defensive end. Jamil Mohammed on the other. Rushes on. They almost got to Barnes, but he got rid of the ball to Vaki. 
Bakke with a flag down behind the play to the 50, the Trojan 40, and down inside the 40. But I think this one might have something to do with an illegal block against Utah at the 30-yard line. Certainly the way they threw that flag, right? And the Utes are walking backwards. I think a wide receiver may be blocking too early or did an offensive lineman maybe get down the field and try to... Personal foul. Illegal blindside block. Mm. Defense, number one. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. How can the defense have an illegal block? I don't know what an illegal blindside block On defense. defense. I don't understand that. So it's you're guy. not trying to block. You're trying to get off of blocks if you're a defender. I don't know. Maybe he meant hit by Damani Jackson. I don't well, move the ball all the way inside the 20-yard line? Where are they going to set it up? Oh, the 25. Wow. So a nice pass, short to Sione Vaki. Did a great job running with the ball and extra yardage on the penalty against the Trojans. Huh. Trojans have been penalized now for the first time in the game. This 15-yarder, though, sets them up pretty good. Handoff Glover, no, it'll be Barnes to keep. No, it'll be Jaquindon Jackson. Fooled me entirely. Got five yards anyway. Regardless of that fact, it'll be second down and five from the USC 20-yard line going in, trying to take the lead. The Utah Utes, never an easy team to beat. Barnes reading off a placard attached to his left wrist. Calls the play, the huddle breaks, and it's first, their second down and five for Utah at the Trojan 20. Mikey Matthews wide to the right side. Barnes fakes the handoff, throws, incomplete, looking for Vele, being guarded by his number sake back there and Christian Roland Wallace, both of them wearing number 17. Vele at 6'5", 210. Roland Wallace not that tall for sure. Vele just tried to go up the ladder and grab it. Just a great job by CRW competing right there with the taller receiver. No, they're just trying to high point the ball, and he just got physical with him on that play. Ref let him play a little bit, and a, and a good win by uh, CRW, number 17. Third down and five from the 20 on the Trojan side, going towards the closed end of the Coliseum, all dressed in white. Sione Vaki, and Vaki will not get the first down off the right side, brought down by Solomon Bird, but brought down short by a yard and a half at the 16 and a half. And they're bringing Jaquindon Jackson back in, so there's no field goal about it here. They're going for it. They, they're treating this like a game to stay alive in the championship race, and they better, they should. And it's big personnel. They brought in another offensive lineman here, so the Trojans bring in some bigger guys as they go overloaded, look like overload to the right. All set up over on that side. Lots of tight ends. Now they shift to a more familiar formation. Barnes brings Jaquindon Jackson in motion. He'll keep the ball and head up the middle and go short. He tried to run it himself up the middle, and the Trojans met him hat on hat. No gain on the play, and the Trojans take over. First and 10 for their own 16 and a half. How do you do? Great play there off the edge. Romello Height coming down, closing the door, getting ready for Barnes to run the ball. Shoves him back, and big stop on fourth down. Trojans don't bite on the fake to the outside to Jaquinn and Jackson, and stuff it up the middle there. Great win by the Trojans. Big defensive stop. That defensive stop was presented by Smart Stop. Self-storage, a smarter way to store. Time out on the field, 7.35 to go. First half, Trojans get the ball back deep in their own end when we come back. 14 all tie on the Trojan Football Media Network. We're not just the Trojans. We're your Trojans. Coach Lincoln Riley here to let you know how to customize your Wells Fargo debit card or open an account today and show your Trojan pride with every purchase. Get started at wellsfargo.com backslash Trojans. Wells Fargo is proud to be the official retail bank of USC Athletics. Copyright 2023, Wells Fargo Bank, N.A. member FDIC. Are you feeling the heat? No. This makeshift air conditioner I made with my fridge is working great. Oh. LADWP has rebates up to $225 on new air conditioners to help you beat the heat and save money. Ooh, that sounds cool. Plus, you can sign up for Level Pay to get predictable monthly bills for easy budgeting. Very cool. Stay cool. Visit LADWP.com slash cool dash LA. Now, can you help me fix my fridge? 
Looking for the play of the day? That's easy. Fight on to victory with USC and fly on faster with ONT, the fastest and easiest airport experience in SoCal. Not to mention, Ontario International Airport has over 65 nonstop flights to more than 20 major destinations with less traffic coming in and out. In other words, getting here is a breeze and so is following our Trojans anywhere the season takes them. Because let's be honest, faster is always better when it comes to your airport. Start planning your next journey today at SoCalSoEasy.com. Covering all things SC. Trojans Live, Monday nights at 7 on KABC. This must not be the favorite place for Utah coach Kyle Whittingham to coach in. I remember in 2017, the Trojans scored late in the game to take a lead, and then Utah came down and scored to get back to within a point and went for a two-point conversion to win the game, and they didn't get it. And today, they're on the 17. Need a couple of yards for a first down to keep a drive alive and disdaining the field goal in a tie game. Go for it. Don't get it. And the Trojans take over on downs. He's, I mean, I know, I love the way he coaches. I love the way they, their team plays and the defensive-minded ball and all that. But, uh, boy, it's got to be frustrating. Yeah, I would have thought that Kyle would have kicked that one, took the three yep. there, and, and, you know, trust his defense. There they go for it. Barry Alexander, Romello Height, two big plays by the big fellas. Austin Jones comes in motion this way, then stops on the right side of Caleb Williams. First down at their own 17-yard line. The play action fake to Jones. Throw underneath Lake McCree. Got it at the 15. Dances out to the 20. Gets gang tackled back at that spot. Gain of three on the play. Miles battle with the initial hit. Battle, the cornerback. Transfer from Ole Miss where he played 46 games in a couple of years for the Rebels. Second down for the Trojans. They give him to the 21-yard line, so actually a pickup of... About four, second and six. Caleb fakes to Jones again, throws a little longer. McCree is open at the 40, catches, steps outside at the 50, and gets a little extra yardage after that to the Utah 47-yard line. Battle again, but this time not a short gain, a long one. Lake McCree with the catch, and the Trojans are in business. Great job just hitting that tight end right up the seam right there on the sideline, waiting for his guy to come click, hits him with the Lake McCree, tries to go over the top of battle, thinks he's going to go for his legs, and he <laughs> battle catches him up top. Jones stays in as the feature back. The fake to Jones. Throw left side. Goes to Brendan Rice. Thrown for a loss. The other side of the 50-yard line. Lakin Riley runs up on the official saying that's an illegal tackle of some sort. And the official just nods his head no. The loss on the play of five yards to the 48. Lincoln's going back after him again. Second down and 14. McCree sets up slot left. Rice stays on the far side. To the near side, Dorian Singer. And Zachariah Branch. So you got to pay attention to the slot man, of course. Now Lake McCree comes over to the near side. Far hash. Second and 14. Second portion of the second quarter. And a tie 14 all game. USC and Utah at the Coliseum. Caleb drops back. The pass flags are down everywhere. And the Trojans will get knocked for five. Looks like. Prior to the snap. Ball start. Number 76, offense. Five yard penalty. Remain second down. Anderson Murphy, the guilty party, second and 19. Yeah, just can't do that right there. Big penalty, obviously, you're behind the sticks already. Now you're uh, looking at second and uh, forever here as uh, Trojans set up for second down. And the Trojans' third down pickup rate, not nearly as good as it was last year. 10 percentage points worse, 44% this year, seventh in the conference. They're so having some trouble staying on the field lately. Caleb rolls this way, throws a long pattern over the head of Zachariah Branch at the Utah. 40-yard line, incomplete, third and 19. Yeah, it looked like Zachariah had a little bit of separation. I mean, we've, we've seen Caleb Williams make those kind of throws. That's not one that quarterbacks usually have in their bag, but Kelly Williams does have it, just didn't hit him right there. Yeah, a little bit too long, and he was kind of open there. A couple of yards of separation yeah, behind so the used defender. To thinking Caleb's going to make those, but those are so hard. Pete, you watch around the country, see a quarterback roll out like that and make those throws. It's, it's, you don't see that very often. Makai Lemon, the freshman from Los Alamitos, slotted on the right side. Utah shows they're coming extra players. Caleb sees that, rolls left, throws to nobody in particular. Flag is down. Ball is intercepted back at the 25-yard line, and the return will come back out to about the 40 for Zemiah Vaughn. And let's see what the penalty marker is. Did Caleb all know that there was a penalty against Utah and just threw it anyway? Yeah, he knew he had a free play. Outside. Number 81 defense, five yard penalty, replay, third down. Right. Still only third and 14, not yeah. like you get a first down out of that. You're watching us on the Audi radio booth cam. 
Brought to you by your local Southern California Audi dealer. Smile for the camera. I've been told I look extra nice tonight, Pete. Got a good beard, man. Got the good beard going. Third and a long 13. Okay. Need to get to the Utah 38. And you're back on the other side of the field. Caleb looking to the sideline. They lined up quickly, but they look over to the sideline. It takes a while to get the play called in. Five on the play clock. Snap back. Sidearm throw to Taj Washington. Has a block. Gets to the 45. And pushed back there. It'll be fourth down. Well, talking field position. This is a perfect place for Chapliski to try to drop him inside the 10 here and really back Utah up. A Utah offense that is not a great offense. Although they've got a couple of touchdowns tonight. Yeah, it looks like Lincoln Riley's going to put try to pin him deep here. Trust sure. his defense. I like that too. Trying to work the screen game here quite a bit early to the wide receivers and just haven't been able to, Utah's been able to sniff that play out a couple times already. Never seen a traditional screen with Lincoln Riley where you back up, back up, back up and throw behind the line. It's all side screens. Chapliski just kind of, kind of gently put this one down. It bounces at the one and goes sideways into the end zone. Almost. Almost stuck that, but it'll come back out to the 20. So not exactly what they wanted. Not terrible because you back Utah up to the 20-yard line, but uh, what could have been. Leader in sports on Saturday and every other day, you know who that is? That's Direct TV, and they bring you all of our sideline reports with this guy, Jordan Moore. Yeah, biggest difference I'm seeing from the USC offense in this game is the ball is getting out of the hands of Caleb Williams much quicker. Sean was talking about the screen game. But really, everything's been in rhythm, save for a couple plays. They got that running game going in the first quarter. That's kind of gone quiet here in the second quarter, as has the Trojans on the scoreboard. Yeah, nobody's scoring at all right now. Motion away for Vele. Barnes waiting. Throws as the rush comes. He finds Vele, and Vele gets out across the 35 to the 37 or 8 before being brought down by Bullock and Jalen Smith. A first down easily there. Trojans starting to get some pressure in there, but it's just a tick late. Just a little bit late. Tackett Curtis, pretty good shot on Bryson Barnes after he released that ball. It was maybe lucky he didn't get called there. Yeah, a good shot by Tackett Curtis. He'll feel that one, but definitely not there on time. you got to get there a little bit earlier. DP's got to do a little bit better job in coverage there. Well, that is the trick. Vele and Parks wide to the right side. Handoff to Quindon Jackson, hit by Christian Roland Wallace after a short gain of two. Roland Wallace on his knees clapping at his own good play. Two-yard gain, second and eight from the 39-yard line. We'll keep an eye on the clock now. Just 3.30 remaining in the half in a 14-all tie. USC will have the ball to start the second half, so if they get a stop here, might get that great double possession. Barnes has split right to the right. That means Vaki is in there as a running back in the Wildcat formation. Somebody tackle this guy. Here he comes. Left side. Gets a block. 40, 45, 50. SC 45. SC 40 punishes Jalen Smith with a forearm. Glares at him as he goes out of bounds. And an easy first down on the Wildcat for Sione Vaki. Knew he was going to get it. Knew he was going to carry it. Still can't figure it out. Yeah, well, it, it, it comes to a numbers issue, too, Pete. you got to be aware of the numbers. You gain one by not having a quarterback in there and just running the ball. But the Trojans got to know that that's the play they're going to run. Nothing, No secret about it. Got to bow up your neck. Know the run's coming, and they come downhill quick. First and 10 at the SC 41. Same formation. This time, however, Jaquindon Jackson is the Wildcat, and he'll hand off to Baki, and Baki to the 40, 35, to the 32-yard line. Can't stop him. Can't stop him. Sione Baki who was a star last week against Cal, to be sure, when he gained 158 yards and scored two touchdowns, was virtually unstoppable in, in 15 carries. He had seven first downs last week. Yeah, it's been really uh, their offense this year. They found that last week, and they kind of go into the well. Thought it might be a little gimmick here, but Vaki can really carry the ball. He's here. Trojans having the trouble here. They're going to leave him in here, see how much they can get out of him. Gain of nine on that one, second and one. Why not keep going to the well? Vaki in the Wildcat again. Will he keep it or hand it off? Motion against Utah, the backup tight end. On the snap. Full start. Offense, number 47. Five Mickey yard penalty. Sugaturaga. Still second uh, down. Punohu High School in Hawaii. 
Yeah, it looked like they had Jaquindon at quarterback, and then they switched to Vaki, and then they tried to go motion, and a lot of moving parts there for Vaki, who's primar primarily a defender, so he's got to learn a lot of plays there on offense during the middle of the season. That yardage he gained last week was the most ever by a defensive back in Utah history. I guess that's a, a weird statistic, but uh, there it is anyway. Third down instead of, or second down, instead of second and one, second and six. A little better. You're an SC aficionado. Fumble on the ball. Back loose in the backfield. And the Trojans tried to pick it up rather than fall on it. And because of that, the Utes land on it. Now pushing and shoving in the pile. Flag flies. SC had a chance to fall on it. Tried to pick it up, scoop and score, but instead came up empty. Utah recovered the ball. And a flag down on the play. Oh, this could be a real backbreaker if they get a first down after a, mm. a silly penalty after the ball was on the ground. Looks like Trojans could have jumped on it. They try to scoop it like you said. Here's the white hat. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 52 of the offense. 15-yard penalty, third down. All right, so that works out pretty good if you're the Trojans. The loss on the play and the fumble brought them back behind the sticks. And then the personal foul will bring them back even further, and it's a dead ball foul, which advances the down box to three. So instead of second and one, you've got third and a mile. That's a huge change. Oh, definitely. Huge. It looked like Jamil Muhammad had a chance there. Just kind of took a bad bounce. It wasn't really a scoop and score. Just didn't really take a great bounce for him. But the Trojans definitely a beneficiary of a, of a you know bad penalty by Utah here. It sets up for a, a third and a gazillion miles. Sean, they were a play away a yard away yeah. from being in field goal position. Yeah, really a swing there for the Trojans on their benefit. Now, minute 34 to go in the half. Trojans have two times out remaining. And Utah with a third down and 23. Barnes will keep and try the left side. Trojans need to call timeout right now. Mohammed is there to make the tackle. Fourth down. Why is the clock running? 122, 121. Why aren't the Trojans stopping the clock? There, they finally did. Wasted about seven seconds of valuable time. 118 remaining in the half. The Trojans will get the ball back after the punt. Uh, maybe use that seven seconds later on. Don't know for sure. You just don't know. The game clock to 130. And now they're going to put the game clock back seconds. to 130. So <laughs> they actually game time after that play. Yeah, I think Lincoln was signaling, and maybe they didn't get it to over to somebody. Because perhaps I, perhaps I was hypercritical. Yeah. It's possible. Uh, not me. Coming up at halftime to Southern California, Audi Dealers Halftime Show. And we'll have scores of other games. We'll check the stats, the highlights. John Jackson around. Have we seen him? Is JJ here? Not in the building. He's in the building. We understand he missed the pregame, but we'll be, he'll be here for the halftime and tell us about what adjustments he thinks need to be made for both these teams to try to win this game and stay alive in the conference and uh, national races. Both teams with one loss coming in. Utah's got the one loss in conference play against Oregon State, which also has one loss in conference. If you think ahead, and here we are in late October, but if you think ahead for tiebreakers and all that, it is not your overall schedule against. So Notre Dame, Notre Dame game's not going to come into play. No. It's only... The tiebreaker is only has to do with your common opponents in league and then all your league games and how you did. And if there's multiple tie listen, do yourself a favor. Don't drive yourself crazy. Hold on a couple. Go, go to Pac12.org and look look for the uh, the tiebreaker scenarios for Pac-12 football for two teams and three teams. Of course, or, just if give, or just give Jordan Moore a call. That's what I do. He knows what he's saying. If it's only two teams, it's simple. If they play each other, it's the guy that won. Simple. If it's three teams, then then Jordan Moore knows what's going on, right, George? Uh, we'll find out. There is a chance for a very complicated tiebreaker at the end, but that's going to take a lot of winning from the Trojans. And they won in the first quarter because they ran the football. They had mm -hmm. 10 carries for 100 yards in the first quarter. This second quarter where they've gone scoreless, one carry for zero yards. Now with 130 left and probably way backed up here and only one time out, you're looking to pass here at the end of this quarter if you're looking to do anything aggressive at all. But knowing you're getting the ball to start the second half, I got to imagine that the coaches and everyone will see that discrepancy at halftime. And the key to the second half offensively for the Trojans is getting back to that run game, which was so effective at the start of this one. Yeah, it sure was. Marshawn Lloyd. 
coming up on 100 yards by himself. Yeah, great point by Jordan there. They're, that running game was going and clogged up a little bit, but uh, you can't go away from it totally. Looked like Utah was on their heels a little bit with that run game. Punt for Bowmeister. JT Greep, G R E E P, is their snapper. He's from Glendora High School here in the greater Los Angeles area. Snap is back. He rotates right, does Bowmeister. Gets the kick away. Fielded by Zachariah Branch, angling this way. He thought about going the other way, and he runs into a bunch of Utes at the nine yard line, maybe the 10. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, I suppose. He was trying to make something happen. It was sort of the same something that he was looking for last week at Notre Dame, and he got a pretty big return out of it. A couple more guys. I mean, I, I, I can see him take on a bunch of guys, but a couple more blocks would help. If he, could, if he only has to shake about three or four, it may be helpful. Right there, he had about six or seven in his left. Well, you're back at your own 10. You've only got one timeout left with a minute 18, and you get the ball to start the second half. Let's see how it goes here. You got to be careful. You can't give Utah the ball back with a turnover. You got to be really careful here. McCree, tight end, strong right. Austin Jones in the backfield. Caleb backs up the pass, throws over the middle, complete to Dorian Singer. Singer wanders his way out across the 20 to the 21, picks up 11. First down, USC. Clock with 108, 107 remaining. Snap back to Caleb. Being rushed from the side, steps up at the pocket, throws it away. Over the Trojan sideline, into the equipment bin, and that stops the clock. Second down. Offensive line has done a good job this half, really protecting Caleb last week. They were getting to him a bunch here. Caleb's had some time back there, and the quick the throws have been a lot quicker this week, as we mentioned, but uh, offensive line picking up their block so far. 57 seconds remaining in the half. Jones to the right. Receivers everywhere. Caleb slaps his hands together, and one of the Utah Utes linemen up front, Tanavasa, almost jumped off a kid from Mission Viejo like a high school game. Too smart for that in college. Caleb drops the pass. Pressure holds up. Throws underneath Mario Williams. Steps into the 30 28 yard line. Barton the tackle. Might call timeout here as the clock runs with 44, 43 seconds left. Yeah, Mario's going to take that ball out of bounds, Pete. Yep, I think he went the wrong way. Third and three. Well, you better get some big yardage here pretty soon or the clock's going to run out on you. Caleb throws underneath Michael Jackson to the 31. Clock stops. That'll be a first down. Moves the ball to the 31-yard line. With only 29 seconds left. And you need about 40 yards still as the Caleb will spike it to stop the clock to save that timeout. Second and 10. I, I know that Lynch kicked a 54-yarder, but uh, he needed every inch of it. It was a low line drive kick when he did it. Not to say he couldn't do it again, but you'd like to get a better chance than that. And so you'd want to get this ball down to about the, what, the 30-yard line or so to give him a chance. That'd be a 47-yarder. That's still some 40 yards away. Caleb on second and 10, 28 seconds left in the half. Pumps once, throws long, down the sideline. It is dropped in and out of the hands of Taj Washington. Would have been a heck of a catch at the 21-yard line, but he went up high and came down without the football. I think the defender might have got there just a little bit early, kind of threw Taj Washington off as he kind of got touched. And Oh, yeah, I don't think they're going to call that. He stuck his hand in between. Taj's two hands hit him in the chest a little bit. Yeah, got there a little. It looked like in the play he got there a little early. I mean, it would have been 15 yeah. yards. I don't know how much but Caleb wanted it, but uh, I, I, that probably should have been pass interference. Yeah. And if I'm a Utah fan, I'm looking at that going, I'm lucky that I didn't get that call. Third and 10. Try that again. Just throw it long. Hope you catch it. Call the timeout. Austin Jones in motion away. Caleb to throw. <laughs> waiting, waiting. Sack. Couldn't wait. O'Toole got him. 23rd sack of the season for the Utes. Utah probably called timeout here, right? With one second. Nope. They're just going to let the clock run, and that's it. So we've come to the end of the first half as the teams jog off the field. All knotted up. We've got another half of football to go to unknot it. The score at the Coliseum with no scoring in the second quarter. USC 14. 
Utah 14. Back to begin our Southern California Audi Dealers halftime show after these messages on the Trojan Football Media Network. Support for USC football comes from Children's Hospital Los Angeles. U.S. News and World Report is once again named Children's Hospital Los Angeles, the number one hospital for kids in California. Ranked in the top ten nationally, CHLA has been on the honor roll of best children's hospitals since the prestigious list was created. They've been providing the best care for kids in California for more than 120 years. Whether it's for routine care or life-saving needs, families turn to CHLA when the outcome matters. Clinical excellence, breakthrough research, and world-class expertise for kids. Find a doctor at chla.org. Hello and welcome to The Ralph's Show. At Ralph's, everyone wins when it comes to saving big. Because when you order online through the Ralph's app, you get the same great prices, deals, and rewards on pickup or delivery that you do in-store with no hidden fees or markups. Best of all, you'll know when items in your cart have a coupon, so you never miss a deal. So whether you're a delivery lover, picker-upper, or you shop in-store, you'll always save big at Ralph's. Ralph's, fresh for everyone. Don't punt your morning drive. Catch Armstrong and Getty. Morning, 6 to 9 on KABC. How do you do? This is how we do it. This is the Audi Halftime Report. This is how we do it. Brought to you by Audi. The Southern California Audi dealers are proud sponsors of the USC Trojans. Big call up the middle. See you later. Touchdown, USC. The Halftime Report is also brought to you by Pechanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC football, and by Athletic Brewing. (laughs) Athletic Brewing crafts great-tasting and award-winning non-alcoholic beers that are fit for all times. Now, we take it back up to the booth to the best broadcast team in college football. For the best football team in college football, Pete Arbogast and Sean Cody. What an interesting and quality football game that we have here at the Coliseum between USC and Utah. I think we expected nothing less between the two teams that battled for the conference championship a year ago. The Utes scored on their first possession easily. The Trojans came back in a 45-yard run by Marshawn Lloyd to tie it. Then a long pass from Caleb Williams, a diving catch by Taj Washington, set up a Zion or Zachariah Branch with a two-yard touchdown run to give the Trojans the lead, but Utah able to battle back and tie it at the end of the first quarter, 14-14. Then in the second quarter, a quarter in which the Trojans have scored 100 points this year in their first seven games, no scoring at all. Now SC will get the ball out of bounds, uh, uh, out of the locker room, I should say, on the opening kickoff of the third quarter to start the second half in a tie ball game, 14-14. It's time now to take a listen to the biggest moment of those first two quarters. Now it's time to take a listen to the best play of the first half. You're good. You're awful good. Just about the best I ever saw. Powered by Ontario International Airport, a proud partner of the USC Trojans. Fight on and fly Fly on on. with ONT. Barnes brings Jaquindon Jackson in motion. He'll keep the ball and head up the middle and go short. He tried to run it himself up the middle, and the Trojans met him hat on hat. No gain on the play, and the Trojans take over. First and 10 for their own 16 and a half. How do you do? USC's defense in the second quarter in particular. Game stats powered by the L.A. Department of Water and Power. First downs are even at 10. Utah's run the ball 23 times for 105 yards. Trojans have had better success running the ball. Most of that in the first quarter. 12 carries for 97 yards, an average of 8 per, while Utah's running game averaging about 4.5 yards per rush Receiving yards, almost even, 139, 134 USC. Total offense, 236, 239, virtually even. Plays are virtually even, 33, 32. And, hey, the game is even. It's 14 to 14. That's what you get. So let's talk about halftime adjustments, which are presented by joint chiro- the joint chiropractic, the official chiropractor of the USC Trojans. For that, longtime Trojan broadcaster and good friend John Jackson, the All-American, joining me here in the booth. And a beautiful night for college football. We're having a good time, and what an interesting ball game we got here. How's this going to change from 14 to an untied football game that SC wins? Well, for the Trojans, Pete, they have to continue to run the football. This is a game, it's a <clears throat> and you know what Utah is going to do in the second half. They are going to run the ball continuously against the Trojans, thinking they're going into the half with a lot of confidence now. They think that they can out-physical USC up front, 
and one of my keys to the game was the defensive line, like usual, they need to step up for me right now. The defensive line has got to make some plays and stop the run in the second half. We have to load the block box, stop the run, and force Utah to be one-dimensional and throw the football. Do the we Trojans have the patience in a tie game as time wears on in the second half? Do they have the patience to stick with the run, knowing that they've got the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback who throws better than he runs? I don't think so, Pete, to answer your question. I think that the players, I think, will lose patience, to be honest with you. I think the patience, the players will feel the, the, the tension as it builds if they don't have success running the football. It will be the players. It won't be Lincoln Riley. It will be the players. But Lincoln has to have confidence in all the work they did getting ready for the season. I'm talking about the preseason, spring ball, and have patience running the football and let this offensive line take over the game. The offensive line cost us the game last week, Pete. But not this time. Not, not so this far. Week. Not so far tonight. Not so far. Be, last question for you. In your estimation from what you've seen, the eye test that you give, it's a 14-all tie. Is SC the better team here so far tonight? SC is the better team, yes. They're 14 points. Marshawn Lloyd, who leads the country in average yards per carry, needs to get the ball more. And the USC offensive line, which has established themselves in the first half, needs to come over and take over the game old school style, Pete. We might have to go back to the I formation in the second half. <laughs> See you on the post game show. All right, boy, you got it. Thank uh, you. That's the Southern California Audi Dealers halftime show from here. Back with more after these messages on the Trojan Football Media Network. Let's have a lot of people pedal those bikes. Interval. Burn. Burn. Come on, burn. At Audi, we think performance is more exhilarating on a real road. Enter the Audi Q5. While Quattro all-wheel drive gives you confidence when you need it, it's the 261 horsepower of the Q5 engine that really raises the pulse rate, as in 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds. And you'll never pull a calf muscle. The next level Audi Q5. Always obey local speed and traffic laws. USC Trojan fans, Smart Stop Self Storage is ready for game day. Smart Stop Self Storage is committed to making the self storage experience easy and hassle free for all Trojan fans. Whether you're storing your Trojans tailgate gear, need temporary storage while moving to a new home, or need a storage solution for your business, we're here for you with convenient locations throughout Southern California. Smart Stop Self Storage, the smarter way to store. Visit smartstop.com to reserve your space today. Fight on. Fight on. Hi, it's Tungus. It's hard to express Tungus' self when come to AM PM's breakfast. So Tungus wrote a poem. <clears throat> Tungus no prepared to feel this way when eat AM PM breakfast today. Savory chorizo fried egg and cheese on fluffy flaky croissant, please. It's so good, craving it's galore. Tungus prepared to have one more. Oh wait, Tungus forgot to mention coffee. Need to start over. When the breakfast is freshly prepared in store, that's cravenience. AM PM, too much good stuff. It takes hard work to be the best in the game. Planning, commitment, resilience, sweat. That's why Old Dominion Freight Line, the number one national LTL carrier for quality, works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in theirs. Old Dominion Freight Line, official freight carrier of USC Athletics, helping the world keep promises. The Women of Troy Report is brought to you by Sprouts Farmer's Market. Open seven days a week. Visit your neighborhood Sprouts for good-for-you groceries and great prices on the freshest produce. I'm Keely Orr, and this is the Women of Troy Report. Today, we're speaking with Zoe Burns, a senior on USC soccer team. Zoe, your team is ranked 13th in the nation and has a 9-2 record overall. What's been the key to your guys' success so far this season? I think for our team, it's been our attitudes and our persistence on getting better. I think individually and as a collective and just being really nitpicky and making sure that the system is working as well as it possibly can going in as we progress into the season. And I think we've done a marvelous job at that, at um, continually getting better and um, working better together. At what point did you realize that this team could could be as good as it's been so far? Is, is, has it been a 
a continual process. For me, honestly, after a week into preseason, even in, in summer when, uh, you know, we would just do like little kick arounds or like captain run things. I was really excited to see all of the talent and kind of the way that they are, like even as human beings, I was really excited to see that. So for me, I knew probably a week into preseason just because of that. We weren't able to work together quite well enough, but I I saw the potential for sure. In five of USC's last six games, you kept your opponents scoreless. What do you think has contributed to your team's shutouts? Our defense is just incredible. I mean, we have a mix of experience and new blood in the back, um, but I think Kayla Duran has been huge with that. Um, she's a transfer that we had from Brown. She really directs everyone in a way that you really can't replace. We have a lot of new faces in the back. All of them are really unique. And I think when one person doesn't have something, the other person does. And I think that's really hard to play against. And, you know, they're all pretty quick. I'm not going to lie. They all got speed. And no matter what you do, you beat one of them, the other one's right there to, to, to get them for you. So I have a lot of confidence in them. I'm really excited as they continue to learn and work off of Kayla Duran. If there's something you wanted USC fans to know about women's soccer, what would you tell them? I would tell them that we take our craft extremely seriously. You don't understand how many hours goes into this. And this is our lives, quite literally. But if you came and saw it, you would see the dedication and the commitment and the love for the game on the field. Um, and I think people underestimate how much time and effort goes into those things. You just heard from Zoe Burns of USC soccer team. Stay tuned for more action here on the USC Trojans Media Network. It's time to recharge, reconnect, and rediscover your perfect combination at Pachanga Resort Casino. And with your resort favorites back in action, there's all of the excitement and comfort you love with the peace of mind you can depend on. So whenever you're ready for a little rest, a little relaxation, and a lot of fun, we'll be here. Play your perfect combination at Pachanga Resort Casino today. Your first sip of Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic beer is a game changer. It tastes so good, you can't believe it's non-alcoholic. With a variety of craft beer styles from IPAs to sours, you can sip and celebrate alongside the USC Trojans' game-changing plays. Find a store near you or order online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use code USC10 to get 10% off their first six-pack at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, fit for all times. Exclusions and conditions apply. And now Travis Kelsey, an overly direct sports person for DirecTV. Two things. Now DirecTV has NFL Red Zone from NFL Network, so you can catch every touchdown from every game on Sunday afternoons. And now DirecTV has NFL Red Zone from NFL Network, so you can catch every touchdown from every game on Sunday afternoons. I know, those were the same thing. I'm just really excited. Now DirecTV has NFL Red Zone from NFL Network included in Sports Pack. Separate Sports Pack subscription required, included with certain premier package. Sports Pack includes 40-plus channels like NBA TV, NHL Network, MLB Network, and more. Tommy Trojan is at the 10, the 5, touchdown, USC! Make big plays on the field and in life. With iTrust Capital, you can buy and sell crypto 24-7 with the tax benefits of a retirement account. That's right, invest in crypto with the tax advantages of an IRA. iTrust Capital is easy to use and has no sign-up fees. Don't be a Monday morning quarterback. Make big plays now. Visit itrustcapital.com to start investing today. iTrust Capital, the official cryptocurrency platform of the USC Trojans. Taxes and conditions may apply. Fees apply. Cryptocurrencies are a speculative investment. Your home for Trojans football. Yeah, we'll see you as we AM 790 KABC. What's good, everybody, and welcome back to the Southern California Audi Dealers Halftime Show. Jason Schwartz with you back in our KABC studios in Culver City. Another classic between USC and Utah shaping up out at the Coliseum. The score at halftime, 14-14, a, really a must-win game. For both teams, Caleb Williams bouncing back. He was 14 out of 20 for 139 yards. No touchdowns, but no picks in that first half. Marshawn Lloyd with five rushes for 74 yards and a touchdown. Zachariah Branch also with a rushing touchdown. And USC ran the ball well in the first quarter. 100 rushing yards in the first quarter, but negative three on the ground in the second. We'll see if they can get the running game going in the second half, team stats pretty even across the board when you take a look. And again, the score tied at 14. We're going to go out to Jordan Moore in a moment 
as he waits for head coach Lincoln Riley on the sideline. Also want to remind you to stay with us after the game. Sua Cravens joins me here in studio for Trojan, Trojans wrap-up. We'll be taking your calls. Quick look at some scores before we go out to Jordan. As uh, right now in the Pac-12 today, Oregon beat Washington State 38-24. Two night games tonight, number five, Washington hosting Arizona State, and number 25, UCLA visits Stanford. In the top 25, some good ones right now. Virginia up on number 10, North Carolina, 31-27, winding down in the fourth quarter. Ole Miss has the lead at Auburn, 21-14 at the start of the fourth. Number two, Michigan all over Michigan State, 35-0. Good one in Tallahassee, number 16, Duke leading number four, Florida State, 20-17, second half. Just getting underway in that one. Uh, number three, Ohio State today beat number seven, Penn State, 20 to 12. Number six, Oklahoma surviving at home against UCF, 31 29. Number 11, Alabama beat number 17, Tennessee, 34 to 20. All right, let's go back out to the Coliseum now. Jordan Moore standing on the sideline waiting for head coach Lincoln Riley. And uh, Jordan, looking at the stats and talking about it, I heard you guys mention it too, but uh, I know uh, running the ball in that first quarter, they were very successful on the ground. 100 rush yards, negative three on the ground in the second. You think it's going to be a, a point of emphasis to get the ground game going in the second half? I have to imagine they'll see the stat sheet, and it's 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 right there on the paper. I mean, Marshawn Lloyd is at just under 15 yards per carry and uh, only got... There was only one rush in the by a, by a running back in the in the second quarter. Uh, I don't even remember it. So maybe it was Austin Jones. Maybe it was Marshawn Lloyd. I don't know. Maybe it was Caleb Williams. Maybe there wasn't a rush by the by a running back in the second quarter. But they they did go away from it, and that, that has to be the emphasis you would think as they get the ball here to start the third. A much improved game for the offensive line so far, right? Yeah, certainly at the start of the game, uh, you know they were. They were dominating in, in, in that first quarter. I mean, it, it was uh, looking pretty easy up front. Uh, you know, they're they're helping the offensive line too. Clearly, in the past game, the ball's coming out a lot quicker out of Caleb Williams' hands. So you're not necessarily seeing the the downfield shots, with the exception of uh, a couple to Taj Washington. Um, but you're also not just seeing Caleb Williams run around and hold the ball for for 10, 15 seconds either. So. Uh, they're, they're, they're trying to work a little bit more of a rhythm passing game, and, and certainly the offensive line looks a lot better. What's the takeaway, you think, from what we've seen from the defense so far? I mean, uh, big stop on fourth down, one sack, no takeaways yet, but some big plays, but then also some chunk plays coming from Utah. Yeah, you just cannot allow the chunk plays in the run game in particular. I mean, if they, if they make a couple plays in the passing game, you might have to live with that because that's what you want. You want Bryson Barnes back there slinging it, trying to trying to beat you. Uh, but but the Wildcat you know, allowing some big plays there, uh, you just know that that's what's coming. I mean, they're, they're going to get a steady diet of it here in the second half. Utah's a one-dimensional team, not, not because other teams make them one-dimensional. That's just kind of who they are uh, this season at, at this stage. So they'll be very happy to be a 14-14 honestly I'm a little bit surprised that they didn't just kick the field goal and, and, and take the points because you'd have a real great feeling in that Utah locker room if you were at 17-14 right now I think the Trojans have to feel a little relieved at the way that second quarter went that they didn't lose it uh, because I think Utah certainly controlled it and now the Trojans get the ball to start the third quarter which was something we don't say very often uh, so an opportunity to uh, see some momentum then well, it's, uh, it's Utah and, and USC, another classic shaping up. I mean, we've, we've seen a lot of great games between these two teams over the years recently. Yeah, they can't shake each other. That's the one thing we know for sure. You, you think it's going to be a, a, a blowout. You're always going to be wrong. And I've got the head coach here. Two different quarters offensively. What do you want to see in the second half from your offense? Yeah, i got to be more consistent. Went backwards a little bit there. Had some opportunities that we just didn't quite capitalize on. He's got to do it against a good defense. Defensively, looks like you settled in. What do you want to see from them in the second half? Settled in, made a lot of big plays. Had a chance there to pick up the fumble. But, uh, yeah, got settled in nicely. Played a really good second quarter. All right, thanks so much, Coach. We are tied at 14. We will take a break, and then USC will get the ball to start the third quarter on the USC Trojans Media Network. Saturdays are made for football. And when the game is on, we're finally off. <laughs> off duty, offline, out of office. A cracked Coors Light is our do not disturb message to the world. On game day, we don't think about the 9 to 5, but worry about the 4th and 1. So this Saturday, grab a Coors Light, press play on some pigskin, and pause on everything else. Coors Light, mountain cold refreshments, made to chill. 2021 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, celebrate responsibly. 
Support for USC football comes from Children's Hospital Los Angeles. U.S. News and World Report is once again named Children's Hospital Los Angeles the number one hospital for kids in California. Ranked in the top ten nationally, CHLA has been on the honor roll of best children's hospitals since the prestigious list was created. They've been providing the best care for kids in California for more than 120 years. Whether it's for routine care or life-saving needs, families turn to CHLA when the outcome matters. Clinical excellence, breakthrough research, and world-class expertise for kids. Find a doctor at CHLA.org. Trojan fans, it's time to get your roll on with Roll 'em Up Taquitos, the official taquito of USC Athletics. Using Mama Karen's special recipe, our taquitos are hand rolled daily and pan fried to order with your choice of beef, chicken, ground beef, and vegetarian options. We got Bomb AF Taquitos and a delicious selection of side dishes as well as our Bomb Churro Donuts. Visit RollEmUp.com to find the location nearest you. Fight on and roll 'em up. Looking for the play of the day? That's easy. Fight on to victory with USC and fly on faster with ONT, the fastest and easiest airport experience in SoCal. Not to mention, Ontario International Airport has over 65 nonstop flights to more than 20 major destinations with less traffic coming in and out. In other words, getting here is a breeze and so is following our Trojans anywhere the season takes them. Because let's be honest, faster is always better when it comes to your airport. Start planning your next journey today at SoCalSoEasy.com. Bongino at 9, Shapiro at 3, Phillips in between. Enough said. KABC. Both teams back on the field getting ready for the start of the second half. That concludes our halftime show. We'll be right back with the second half of USC football. It's real simple. you got two more quarters and that's it. Let's go. we got to go to work. You've been listening to the Audi Halftime Show, brought to you by Audi. The Southern California Audi dealers are proud sponsors of the USC Trojans. By Pechanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC football. And by Athletic Brewing. <laughs> Athletic Brewing crafts great tasting and award-winning non-alcoholic beers that are fit for all times. Now, with your second half kickoff, here's the best broadcast team in college football, Pete Arbogast and Sean Cody. Zachariah Branch looked like he had a possibility of a decent return, but he ran right into his own teammate, Lake McCree, at the 20-yard line, and so only gets from the goal line to about the 18. I mean, who knows what would have happened afterwards. At any rate, that's where USC will start the second half, first and 10 from the 18-yard line. Late substitution on the field is that man, Branch. He slots on the right side, joined by Dorian Singer. One back is Marshawn Lloyd. Will the Trojans run the ball more here in the second half as they did in the first quarter so successfully when they scored 14 points? In the second quarter, neither team scored any. Play clock down to five. Snap back. Hand off to Lloyd. Lloyd starts left, comes back to the center and right, looking for a block from Pregnon. Not much there anyway. 22-yard line. Still ends up getting a gain of four. Second down and six. Remember, Utah's run defense, 67 yards per game. So yeah, they don't give those, up anything. Those aren't uh, pretty plays there, Pete, but they mean something. When Utah has to defend that run, that's what's opened up this pass game here. So they got to keep, keep challenging them in the run game. Trips right. Zachariah Branch is the feature back. Throw right. It's Singer who bobbles the ball and then falls down on it after being tackled after a short gain of one by Zamaya Vaughn. The junior from Beaumont, Texas, where he was a quarterback in high school. Third and five. Big play. Boy, you don't want to come out of the locker room having the ball in a tie game and not do anything with it. Yeah, Utah's been all over those quick little outside screens there. Have, have not been surprised at all. They've come up and tackled well in those plays. Sean Lloyd back in. At the running back spot to the right of Caleb. Hash mark, strong side right. Singer to the right. Branch this way along with Rice. Caleb pumps once, then gets hit and sacked. Brought down by Van Fillinger, his third sack of the season, and the Trojans go three and out. How do you do? And have to punt on their first possession. Yeah, and that's not on the offensive lineman, Pete. I know we talked a lot about giving up sacks last week. They had a bad game. They were letting guys come free. There, Caleb just holds the ball too long. You, you get three, four seconds back there. The quarterback's got to get rid of the ball, or somebody's got to break open and get free. Third quarter of Trojan football presented by Honey Stinger. Prepare, perform, and recover with Honey Stinger. And today's game brought to you by Wells Fargo, a proud sponsor and official retail bank of USC Athletics. 
Chapliski, who had one return for about eight yards. This time, kicks into a fair catch call, but a short kick to the 42-yard line, and Utah has the ball with pretty good field position to start their first drive of the second half in a tie ball game two minutes into the third quarter. Things starting to get a little bit worrisome, I'd say. Yeah, got to come out fast and strong. Obviously, the offense was already performed right there. Just came out kind of a uh, nonchalant here. Defense has to respond now. They can't come out of this locker room and just let Utah. They, they, they've drawn up some things as well to make some adjustments, see what they can get some things going on offense. Bertawada is our spotter. Gialara is our producer-director. And Rick Cutler, producer-engineer here, as always. The family intact. Underhand handoff. Coming this way on a jet sweep, and Tackett Curtis will finally grab a hold of Money Parks, but not before he gets out to the 48. Easy pickup of seven for sure, second down and three. Almost had him in the backfield, almost had a hand on him. I don't know if they would have tackled him, but had a hand on him, Bear Alexander did for a moment. Second and three. Whatever Utah's got in the playbook, they're using it today. If they lose, they're kind of cooked for the rest of the season as far as championship consideration is concerned. Trojans can suffer a loss, but really don't want to, knowing what's coming. Motion away. Hand off to Quindon Jackson into Trojan territory. Stood up by Cobb, but he tackled him up high, and so he gets pushed back to the 46. That's enough easily for a Utah first down on their first possession of the second half. They're going to stay in that two tight end, so Trojans are going to stay in their 4-3 defense with Shane Lee and Eric Gentry out there at linebacker with Cobb. First and 10 at the 46 in a tie ball game. Utah passed up a chance for a field goal earlier, went for it on fourth down, didn't get it. Missed on another fourth down. That would have put them in field goal range. So they've had a couple of chances to be ahead in this game, but aren't. Motion away for Parks. Faking the handoff and throwing to Parks out of the backfield of the 40. 35, 30, up the sideline and out of bounds as Eric Gentry will gently nudge him out of bounds down below us at the Utah sideline at the 24-yard line. They are using everything in their arsenal right now. Yeah, why not? If you're Utah, just try all these things. To bring the motion guy across there. Cobb almost gets to the backfield, but nobody on that motion guy there. And... Pick up an easy first down there, marching down the field early for you. You know, Barnes, not a great quarterback, right? But he threw for 70% last week against Cal. And what's he thrown today? This man 70%, 7 out of 10, 156 yards. And those are the kind of throws that everyone can make. Vaki back in there at the Wildcat, coming around the right, checks it back into the inside. Boy, is he tough to bring down because the Trojans didn't play that poorly defensively. They knew he was going to run. They found the hole, but Vaki at six foot two oh eight. A little short and stocky as far as his legs are concerned. A low-waisted gentleman, and he pushes the pile all the way to the 18-yard line. Really, he just runs harder than you want to tackle, Pete. He's the kind <laughs> of guy, and that's why I think, you know, uh, Kyle Winningham has found him, him, him guy he likes back there because he just runs hard. Vaki lines up to the left side of Jaquindon Jackson. you got to figure this is a handoff then. To Sione Vaki. No, Jackson will keep it. Jackson gets first down and more inside the 10 down to the 9-yard line. And they are that close to taking the lead at the Coliseum in another great game between USC and Utah. Yeah, why wouldn't it why run that uh, zone read with Bryson, with, with Bryson Barnes when you can run it with Jaquindon Jackson and Vaki back there, two running backs, so you got to guard two, both of them coming out of the field. Much better option than having Barnes back there, so a nice game plan here for Utah. Does Barnes come back in? He does. On first and goal at the nine. Trips left. Looks like Jaquindon Jackson is confused about where he's supposed to be, so he goes wide to the far side. Motion, tight end inside. Barnes keeps, gets to the five, to the three. Bryson Shaw wouldn't let him go any further than that, but that's plenty. From the nine to the three, if they do that again, Utah will have the lead. Second and goal from the three-yard line. Yeah, really just challenging USC's physicality here. They're not full. Hey, we're just going to run the ball until you guys stop it, and we're going to line up back here, whether it's Jaquinta Jackson, whether it's Vaki, whether it's Barnes. We're just going to line up here and run a run. We don't, need to run. we don't need to throw a pass right here if you guys can't stop the run. Vaki, 98 yards receiving and 43 yards rushing so far in the game. Jackson, however, in the backfield, double tight end on the left side on second and goal from the three, motion away, handoff to Jackson, stutter steps at the line, Bear Alexander's got him, and now they won't let him push him forward, and Alexander then slings him to the ground. 
and will get the penalty half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down for unnecessary roughness. Yeah. When the whistle blows, stop playing. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Easy call to make, really. Yeah. Yeah, really easy call. I mean, just uh, whistle stop. Everyone stop playing, and uh, for some reason, defenders usually want to sling him in that situation. And Bear Alexander just everyone's done, and he just uh, give him that little extra. So instead of third and goal at the three, it's first and goal at the one and a half. Why? Why bother doing that? You know what's going to happen if you do it. In the I formation, the Jackson dotting. First and goal, handoff, Jackson, hit, squirms forward, gets back to the line of scrimmage, gang tackled back from there. They'll actually give him a half a yard to the one, Keon Barr's first contact. Second and goal at the one-yard line. All you can hope for here is a movement penalty or a fumble. Yeah, Keon Barr right there had an opportunity for a big TFL, just didn't uh, think the running back maybe had the ball and uh, let him kind of slip by him there. you got to get some penetration on these kind of plays, Pete. If you don't get any penetration, you're just going to get walked back into the end zone here. Got to find a way to slip a block and, and get in the backfield before they uh, have chance to get this run game going. Why don't you run Vaki in this situation? They have been stopping him all night. One back is Jalon Glover. Whistle. There you go. Flag on the play. Flag on the play. Just what the doctor ordered. Fire to the snap. Ball start. Number 52 offense. Dr. Arbogast. Five yard penalty. Remains second down. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. When you've got good beer and good vibes like just now, it's all Buena Stone, Buena Mesa, Salt, Lime, and Lager. Baja inspired and imported from San Diego. Located near you at fine.stonebrewing.com. Cheers. So, second and goal from the six. Could have had a third and goal at the three. Barnes with Glover to his right. Vele. A big target slotted on the right side. Double tight end strong this way. Barnes looking this way. Holding the ball, being chased by Alexander. Rolling right, throws, touchdown. Bailey, no, it's the tight end. Landon King, transfer from Auburn. Utah has the lead halfway through the third quarter of a must-win game for USC at have to feel here at the Coliseum. Yeah, that's disappointing on defense right there, Pete. They had opportunity right there, and that's not something that you should allow Bryson Barnes to complete. What kind of those kind of pass where he's just kind of buying time and extending play? You've got to be able to lock up these receivers in the tight end core for Utah. Not 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 a tremendous amount of athletic players right there, but their Trojans get lost and lose a player right there, and that's why you see the touchdown. Extra point, a big one. Up and good. Time out of the field. Exactly halfway through the third quarter. 7:30 remaining in it. Utah takes the lead. It's the Utes 21, the Trojans 14 on the USC Trojan Football Media Network. SC fans, this football season, be sure to come out to Trojan Fan Fest, presented by Life Law Injury Lawyers. Located directly east of the Coliseum, right outside the Olympic Gateway, Trojan Fan Fest opens four hours before every home game kickoff, and it's free to fans of all ages. Inside the Trojan Fan Fest is the Modelo Ultimate Tailgate, serving up high school cervezas with plenty of food truck options. There are also private tailgating options and fun for the whole family. It's all inside Trojan Fan Fest, presented by Life Law Injury Lawyers, proud supporter and official sponsor of the U.S. Trojans. Introducing Stone Fight on Pale Ale. With a balanced blend of hops and a deep golden color as vibrant as the Southern California sunshine. Stone Fight on Pale Ale is brewed to be the perfect companion for the beach, the tailgate, or cheering on the Trojans. Stone Fight on Pale Ale is best enjoyed by holding a can in one hand and raising a V for victory with the other. Find Stone Fight on Pale Ale near you at find.stonebrewing.com. That's find.stonebrewing.com. Stone Brewing is a proud partner of USC Athletics. Yard work, groceries, kids' parties. Do your weekends feel like everything but yours? All I wanted was to watch the SC game. Reclaim your weekends with the new and improved KADC app. Stream live Trojans games on the go. So whether you're stuck at your kid's soccer game. Turn around! The field's that way! Or driving around town running errands. Touchdown, USA! Never miss a play. The new and improved KADC app. Get it today. Make sense of your money and the world around you. Mo 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 Tech Mo on money. Afternoons at 5 on KABC.
Trojans go three and out with their first possession of the second half. Utah does not. Nine plays, 59 yards, five and a half minutes. Barnes, his second touchdown pass of the night, his third touchdown pass of the season. Landon King, his third catch all year and his first touchdown catch. And the Utes have the 21-14 lead halfway through the third quarter. Let's pause 10 seconds for stations to identify themselves all along the Trojan Football Media Network. Your, your, your USC Trojans fight on here. Southern California's undisputed, undisputed talk leader, KABC, Los, Los Angeles, Angeles, Orange County, a cumulus media station. Well, the Trojan offense figured to have trouble tonight against this Utah defense. It's one of the better defenses in the country. They only give up 17 first downs, only 12 points a game all year, and so far they've given up only 14 in this one. So kind of according to Hoyle as far as Utah's concerned, but that doesn't mean anything now. If the Trojans want to win this thing, and you know they do, they're going to have to play some really good football in the last quarter and a half. The kickoff, waiting for it, Branch. Branch at the 5, angles this way, cuts up the middle, gets away at the 30, and out to the 33-yard line. They were so sure of Branch's ability to run the ball back that they had three guys still waiting back for him. It wasn't just the kicker. There were three guys waiting well back of where they would normally be. Yeah, they have a game plan for him. They're not going to let him break a big one. They got some guys, some safety valves on the backside right there. They're running some guys to run down if they can get him on that initial contact, but they're ready for him to well, they were, get to the second level. They were feeling the heat. And if you are, LADWP has rebates of up to $225 on new air conditioners to help you beat the heat and save money. There's another time out of the field, 7.23 to go third quarter. Score remains 21-14 Utah. Trojans have the ball when we come back on the Trojan Football Media Network. I know a lot of you really want the State Farm personal price plan, but what's with the oversharing? Like this voicemail from Leah. Jake from State Farm, listen, so sometimes I like to nibble on licorice and pretend I'm a teeny mouse chewing through wires. You don't need to get that personal. The State Farm personal price plan helps you create an affordable price just for you. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com for a quote today. Prices vary by state. Options selected by customer availability and eligibility may vary. Tommy Trojan is at the 10, the 5, touchdown, USC. Make big plays on the field and in life. With iTrust Capital, you can buy and sell crypto 24-7 with the tax benefits of a retirement account. That's right. Invest in crypto with the tax advantages of an IRA. iTrust Capital is easy to use and has no sign-up fees. Don't be a Monday morning quarterback. Make big plays now. Visit itrustcapital.com to start investing today. iTrust Capital the official cryptocurrency platform of the USC Trojans. Taxes and conditions may apply. Fees apply. Cryptocurrencies are a speculative investment. USC Trojan fans, Smart Stop Self Storage is ready for game day. Smart Stop Self Storage is committed to making the self storage experience easy and hassle free for all Trojan fans. Whether you're storing your Trojans tailgate gear, need temporary storage while moving to a new home, or need a storage solution for your business, we're here for you with convenient locations throughout Southern California. Smart Stop Self Storage, the smarter way to store. Visit smartstop.com to reserve your space today. Fight on. Fight on. It's like getting a degree in Trojan Athletics without the tuition. It, 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 it's Trojans Live, Monday nights at 7 on KABC. 21-14, Utah halfway through the third quarter. Trojans get the ball with their second possession of the second half. They did nothing the first time around. Let's go down and spend some time with Jordan Moore on the Trojan sideline. Yeah, three straight weeks where the Trojans have had to play from behind. We'll see if, uh, you know, they can just settle back in, only down by a touchdown, and, and still have the patience to work that run game, work what you want to work instead of feeling that desperation from being behind. The thing that surprised me, they just have not been able to get Zachariah Branch touches at all offensively after he looked like the most explosive weapon last week. Lloyd, the one back. Caleb looks to the sideline to get the call. They change the play, so he notifies the offensive line that calls out their blocking assignments against the four Utah defensive linemen. Strong left. The fake to Lloyd. Looking right is Caleb. Now he's flushed from the pocket. Gets away from a would-be sack. To the sideline, he is stretched and then just throws it away. They're doing a nice job defensively down the field are the Utah Utes. And Trojans have not looked sharp passing game. run. They haven't looked sharp on offense for a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's been a struggle on offense, Pete. We've we, we mentioned these uh, struggles. It's it's just something we expected this with the way this season started with this offense. You expected a high-flying offense. They were just going to run up and down the field, and it kind of 
midway after that Colorado game, it just hasn't looked the same. They just haven't found their their feng shui back there on offense. It's gonna it's gonna struggle. They're kind of trying to find what they want to do in here. Just come out in the in second half, and so far they've been flat. Caleb had a man open on the short, about eight yards upfield, but decided to throw that one long and threw it under the sideline anyway. So second and ten. Here comes the rush. Caleb calls his own number 30 35 40 back up the middle of the field 45 and out to about the 47 yard line well if that's your best weapon then you ought to use it O'Toole with the tackle defensive end but he was chasing from behind and that's what you like to see if you're the Trojans yeah Caleb it was decisive too he knew I'm right uh -huh. I'm not nothing's there I'm gonna go this time instead of trying to wait for somebody to break him and say all right I'm gonna take this one on my shoulders and get down the field. take control of the ball game you're the best player on the field Lloyd to the right side in the backfield singer and Washington to the right down below us Rice and Williams first and 10 SC at their own 47 trailing by seven mid third quarter Caleb runs an option pitches back to Marshawn Lloyd gets to midfield tackle forward fumble the ball Utah ball Utah's got it at their own 44 yard line another short field for the Utes after a turnover for SC Cole Bishop who did not play the first half because he had a targeting call against Cal last week, is in there and makes a difference right away. Yeah, just gets a hand on the ball there. Looked like Van Fillinger maybe uh -huh. got a hand on the ball, stuck in there, knocked it out. Marshawn Lloyd not doing a good job covering. We've seen him on the one. He caught a break because he didn't catch the ball there. Not going to catch a break there as he punches the ball out. We've got another timeout on the field, and we will take it with them with Six minutes, 18 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The Trojans are in trouble. Trailing 21-14. Utah's got the ball in good field position when we come back in the Trojan Football Media Network. In today's college athletics landscape, a strong name, image, and likeness program is an essential pillar to on-field success. House of Victory is an alumni-led nonprofit collective dedicated to providing a competitive edge in the NIL space for USC student-athletes. Contributions allow our coaches and programs to recruit and retain elite athletes while allowing the student-athletes to shine beyond the game. House of Victory is calling on all Trojan fans for your support. To join our alumni community and benefit student athletes visit houseofvictory.com or text hov to 53555 hey are you feeling the heat no this makeshift air conditioner i made with my fridge is working great Oh. LADWP has rebates up to $225 on new air conditioners to help you beat the heat and save money. Ooh, that sounds cool. Plus, you can sign up for Level Pay to get predictable monthly bills for easy budgeting. Very cool. Stay cool. Visit LADWP.com slash cool dash LA. Now, can you help me fix my fridge? It's everything you love about KABC on your phone. Hello? Uh, your smartphone. The new and improved KABC app. Streaming live Niners and Trojans games on the go. How do you do? Listen to your favorite KABC shows live or on demand. Let that sink in. Get breaking news notifications. Browse our top stories. Heck, you can even be a part of our street team by sharing images, video, and more. And with CarPlay support, you can stream on the road anytime, anywhere. The new and improved KABC app. Get it today. Like winning drives? Catch Ben Shapiro on your drive home. Afternoons at 3 on AM 790 KABC. Ocean views, magical sunsets, a luxury resort like no other. Discover Terranea, one of our great Trojan football sponsors, located along the stunning Palos Verdes Peninsula in Southern California. Book your getaway to Terranea now at terranea.com. Trojans have done nothing on offense in the second half. Three and out and a turnover on a fumble. And now Utah with a lead and the ball and 6-18 remaining in the third quarter. Time to worry. Yeah, a little bit uh, nervous time here for Trojan fans. Uh, defense comes back on the field after a short stint. They didn't get much rest. You know, they turned the ball over there, so they got to stand up here. They kind of know what uh, Utah wants, how they want to attack them. They've been uh, attacking them on the ground here. It looks like they're going to go five wide right here. you got to watch out for that quarterback draw. Trojans have not come close to scoring since the first quarter. Field position has been bad, and they haven't been able to take advantage of what they had. Barnes throws, complete again. He is very accurate on the short stuff. Delvon Vele into Trojan territory at the 49. A quick six-yard turnaround, just a button hook, and it's second down and four. Didn't come close to stopping him, really, last possession. Nine plays 59. Had him, would have had him third and goal at the three, but a penalty got him a first down at the one, and they were able to put it in a couple plays later. 
Not to say they wouldn't have scored on the third and goal to three, but would have liked that opportunity. Second down here, second and four, handoff, and it's Vaki, and finally they figure out that he's going to run the ball, and Tackett Curtis was in there just about as quick along with Solomon Bird as Vaki was to hang the ball, and it's a loss on the play. Back to the other side on the 48, third and fairly long now, and a big play for the Trojan defense to be sure. Utah's offense, 38% third downs on the season. The Trojans exactly that on defense as well. What's the third down conversion rate here? USC, good, two of seven. Utah, one of six, but also one of two on fourth downs. Third and seven from their own 48. Barnes, back to pass. Steps up, will run, 50, 45, slides forward, gave himself up at the 40, that's plenty enough. The 41-yard line, first and 10. Barnes will run, he'll put it under wing whenever he feels like he can, and that's a situation like that. Yeah, trying to do a little bit of stunting up front, leaves a hole for Barnes, and he's not. he, he really doesn't really want to make those challenging throws. He's looking over the middle. If nothing's over there, he's going to pull it down and try to pick it up, and right there, Trojans give him a lane to, to make that happen. Barnes now with 13 yards rushing. Caleb Williams rushing, 21 yards. First and 10 at the 41, already leading by a touchdown. Hand off to Jaquindon Jackson. Big hole right side, down the middle, 20. Stumbles forward to the 15-yard line. And the Trojans look like they can't stop anything right now. The, tack at, the tackle finally by Mason Cobb, but they're just getting chewed up right now. Yeah, and it's in the run game, Pete. The, the, the Utah came out this half and said, hey, we're just going to get the run game going. Looked like Dejon Benton got cut off on the backside of that play in the A-gap A -gap and left a massive hole right there. For Jaquindon Jackson, who takes advantage of that. Already clearly in field goal range at the 15 for Cole Becker. The Trojans need to hope here for a turnover and to stop Utah from scoring. Sione Vaki in the backfield. Look out. They're going to throw to him. They do at the 12. Cuts it back in at the 10. He's going to go. Touchdown, Utah. They lead by two scores. And I don't mean field goals. I mean touchdowns. And the Trojans season is on the brink right now. They've got to wake up right now. Yeah, they have Tackett Curtis go out there and cover Vaki, and Utah thinks that's a mismatch, so they're going to attack that. And Vaki just does a little in route, has a little option to come inside. Tackett Curtis just needs to get him down and flies by him on the tackle there, and Vaki cuts it back out to the outside. Trojans here need to come out with some offense here. This game could be uh, put away early. 28-14 if this extra point is good. The kick is away, and after the fumble, the Trojans turn it over, and Utah turns the relatively short field into another seven points in a very quiet USC crowd with 3.28 remaining in the third quarter. Find their Trojans behind 28 to 14 to the defending two-time Pac-12 champion Utah Utes who are still every bit as good as I remember them being, even with a backup quarterback or a third-string quarterback. Doesn't seem to matter. Let's go down to Jordan Moore. Boy, we've talked so much, or nationally they've talked so much about Travis Hunter at Colorado playing both ways. Yeah. Boy, Vaki is some kind of athlete. I mean, you just it's one thing to, to say, you know, put a, put, put a guy back there, but, but he's making plays. I mean, he just stopped on a dime. When you said attack Curtis, he didn't miss a tackle. He, he, he wasn't even near it. He flew right by, and, and Baki, who had over 150 yards rushing last week in his first real uh, opportunity as a, as a primary offensive weapon, he, he's got to be, what, over 100 yards receiving in this one. And, again, he is Utah's leading tackler. This isn't just some guy that was sitting around. Uh, he is their leader on defense and now they're leader on offense and he's single-handedly winning this game buck 13 on four catches with two touchdowns and you can add another 40 on the ground and he has been the show here tonight as he was in berkeley a week ago yeah listen to andy Lud ludwig their uh, offensive coordinator this week on the radio and he talked about how uh, kyle whittingham was actually the deciding factor in that they say hey we needed to get to get a little spark on offense they hadn't been had real real trouble with uh, getting the offense to move and and he said let's get Vaki back there and uh, see what he can do and they, they gave him a little package 
uh, before Cal, before the Cal game, or you know, he had some some opportunities against Oregon State to get back there, and then he showed some signs of life. So it said, hey, let's roll this thing out after the loss and in, in the bye week, got him some more time during the bye week with the offense, got a chance to work with him, and really exploded last week against Cal. Cal had no answer; they'd never seen it before, and uh, looked like USC had, had an opportunity maybe to to watch it on film and get ready for it. But uh, like Jordan said, uh, quite an athlete back there. He's even though the Trojans are ready for it, looked like they uh, don't have an answer yet. Utah's got some uh, assistants. You mentioned their offensive coordinator is in the booth in Ludwig that have local ties. Fred Whittingham was a Rams player back in 90. The running back coach, Quentin Ganther, was an assistant with Pete Carroll up in Seattle. Sharif Shaw, their special teams coach, been with them for a long time, 12 years. Went to Dorsey High. Their director of player personnel is Jeff Rudy, who was an assistant coach at Ontario and Chafee College. I knew his brother... Jimmy, a standout quarterback at our high school back in the 80s. Rare when you don't have some connection to Southern California in football. All right, Trojans down two touchdowns, need a spark. Kickoff is away, Zachariah Branch fields at the three, outside the hash, and gets back out to about the 20, 21 yard line, and there were four Utes waiting for him, another five yards downfield if he happened to break through that. They'll mark him down at the 20. It appears to me at this point, Sean, with 322 remaining in the quarter, third quarter, and the Trojans trailing 28-14. My football mind says you can't let them score anymore, and you probably have to score every time you got the ball almost to, to, to win this thing. Yeah, got to go on, get it going on offense. Haven't really figured it out in, in the second half on offense, but yeah, like I said. Well, that's not know, the first defense. time. We've talked about it. They didn't look good last week on offense. <laughs> they didn't look good against Arizona. They didn't look good in the second half against Colorado. They figured, other teams have figured this thing out. Caleb to pass, quick throw, right side, averaging about nine yards per completion. This is caught. Taj Washington, this won't go nine, but it'll be a good seven. Barton, who's had a nice game. With the tackle from the strong outside linebacker position, has seven tackles now. Second and three. It's a start. I'm saying, you, just, you watch Utah, and it is tackle. It, is, uh, it seems like USC catches the ball, but they're on the tackles. Their defensive numbers are not an accident. Never are. Caleb, flushed from the pocket, rolls right, throws on the run, and looks at Brendan Rice at about the 50, but overthrows and throws him out of bounds. Flag down behind the play. I think the Trojans were guilty of a hold. Two flags. It looks like there's going to be probably one in the secondary and one in the, on the offensive line, maybe. What you're saying is we have a chance? Yeah, maybe offsetting here. Mm -hmm. uh, look, I'd take that. That'd be fine. Jordan's sideline report presented by DirecTV. Fouls by both teams on the play. Holding offense number 79. Holding defense, number 17. Those penalties offset. Replay second down. We'll take that. Sideline uh, report brought to you by DirecTV, leader in sports Correction on Saturday. Correction of the penalties on number 15 of the defense. And every other day. So, a uh, do-over. Second and three, it remains. I yeah, can't press, not press on offense. We've seen Caleb where he gets in these press situations, and it's been a struggle here. He can't press. You got time, just got to execute on offense. He's been particularly accurate on his long and mid range passing game. Takes the snap, fake, hold everything, whistles, flags. That's going to be against the Trojans. Second and three and a half becomes second and eight and a half. Prior to the snap, ball start. Number 70 offense. Five yard penalty. Replay second down. Crowd's starting to get a little antsy now. You can hear the, the groans and the booing almost. I'm going to start to, I'm going to channel my inner Ted Leitner from San Diego. Come on, boys. Let's go. Get it going. Wake up. The crowd's quiet. The team is quiet. There's not much time left in the quarter. They're down by two touchdowns to Utah. You've still got Washington here and Oregon there and UCLA here to come. Never mind Cal next week. Play clock is at two for the game clock is at two minutes and 50 seconds in the quarter. And the referee's talking about something, but now they've got it all straightened out, and here we go. Second and eight. Caleb hands on hips, breathing hard. Throwing hand pinky taped to his throwing hand ring finger. Snap back. Throws left. And that's a short pass complete, but only for a yard to Michael Jackson. And the crowd groans further, third and seven. 
Well, you can't throw one yard passes sideways. That's Lane Kiffin's old trick, isn't it? Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a struggle here in Pete on offense. They have not found a way, as a lot, many teams this year have not found a way to move the ball effectively against Utah. We saw the two touchdowns, but after that, it's been Utah that's figured out what they're trying to do offensively. Third and seven. Down by two touchdowns already. The situation is dire, to be sure. Rice, McCree, five seconds on the play clock, and Jackson to the far side, and now the Trojans have to call a timeout. First charge timeout, USC. Listen to the crowd. And there is a reasonably good number of Utah fans who are whooping it up over to our right. Head scratching. It really is. Yeah, you would. Uh, we went into this game to see how this Trojan team would respond after their first loss at South Bend, and uh, so far they came out with uh, a little bit of life. But this second half, it has uh, been all Utah, and uh, the response has not been, I'm sure, what Lincoln Riley has been looking for. At what point do you and I and Trojan fans say, "Oh, this is what we have. We're eight games in, and this is who we are." Yeah, they're starting to tell. They're starting to write the script here, Pete. This is. Uh, we're getting deep in this thing here. It's not. Uh, it's not a one-off here that this offense has struggled uh, to oh. move the ball at a chance. We've seen a, a, quite a bit of. A occasions now we, we can't base off what happened last year offensively to what this year's offensive team and Lincoln Riley is quite fired up on the sideline but uh, yeah you can't compare last year with this year this year had to make their make their own water uh, this year but just uh, still uh, puttering around I think on offense really giving it to the uh, white hat Mike McCabe was Riley during that timeout third and seven as they come back to play empty backfield trips right Two this way, Washington and Austin Jones. Motion for Lake McCree for blocking purposes. Caleb needs eight, has time, throws. It's a sliding catch at the 31, and the old gray mare lives on. First and 10 USC. Ooh. Karene Reed there in coverage, but a nice catch by Brendan Rice. Yeah, Caleb uh, scanning the field there, able to find Brendan Rice there sliding with a nice catch by number two. Let's hope that was the low point of the season for us right there. Let's hope. Two men in the backfield, McCree and Austin Jones on first and ten. The fake to Jones. Caleb drops the pass. Throws long over the middle. That's complete. Caught by Taj Washington inside the 30 and down to about the 28-yard line on the Utah side of the field. So Taj with an earlier long catch, a great catch it was. This one a big one, and it gives the Trojans a new lease on life at the Utah 28. Yeah, nice strike there by Caleb. Stepped up into his throw, delivered a pass right on time. Not a lot of, not a lot of fuss with that play. Just a nice route by Taj Washington and a nice throw by Caleb Williams. Rice and Washington to the near side. Jackson to the right. Play action fake. Throw for Jackson in the end zone. It is overthrown. Out on what used to be the Coliseum track that had several Olympics run on it. Broughton was defending on the play, just overthrown, simply overthrown outside the side of the end zone. Flag is down. An eligible receiver downfield, number 52 offense, five-yard penalty, replay first down. Well, it's only a fiver. That doesn't help much. Jarrett Kingston had to know that was a pass play, so what's he doing wandering that far down the field? Yeah, just too many of those kind of plays on offense to be... Yeah, you just keep putting yourself in those positions where you're you're fighting it the whole time, Pete. You get behind the chains and you just keep. Oh, we got a battle again. Here we are, second and uh, whatever, or third and whatever. It's just too many times this year. It's just been it's an uphill battle for this offense. Five penalties, 32 yards for the Trojans, well under their season average of 72 yards. But a bad time for it. Of course, there's never really a good time. First and 15. Oh, get that team! Throw knocked down at the line of scrimmage, tipped away. Looked like the big. Guy in the middle, Tavita Fotu from Harriman High School in Harriman, Utah. His brother, Lakey, you might recall, former Utah All-American, now playing in the NFL. Tip that one down, second and 15. If there's one thing you can count on with the Utah Utes, it's going to be some big war daddies in the middle, and uh, Tavita Fotu is uh, one of those war daddies, just big, giant 300-pounders in the middle, still clogging it up. And he can get up high enough to knock that pass down. Hustling off the field is 77. They've got a man on the field. If the Trojans would have snapped it, the ref would have had it, but they wouldn't let him because they let Utah get that substitution finished up. Throw short, right side. Singer waddles forward inside the 30, back to the original line of scrimmage, plus one. Third and nine, and I don't think there's a field goal in the off 
offing for the Trojans at the 28-yard line. Down by two touchdowns in the final 30 seconds of the third quarter. SC's going to have to go for it on fourth down if they don't get it here. Third and nine. Need to get to the 23. Refs holding up the play because Utah's making substitutions, trying to run the clock down wisely. Crowd doesn't like it, but they don't understand the rule. If the defense subs, then you got to let them do it if the offense subs at the same time. Caleb takes the snap, throws for the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown, flag down. Kyron Hudson has the score. I think Utah was offside. There's another flag in the end zone. Did Kyron Hudson push off to get position? Yeah, it looks, looks like. like this is going to come back, not be a touchdown, and be an offsetting call again. Well, we yeah. had one down the other end. Yeah, we had one offsetting for our, in advantage of us there. Missed a touchdown. Looked like Kyron Hudson might have. Mm -hmm. There are fouls by both teams on the play. Offside. Defense. Number 10. Pass interference. Offense. Number 81. Those players offset. We play third down. Third and nine. I haven't seen the, I did see the offside. There it is on our replay here in the booth. I haven't seen the push off that got to the pass catch right at the end. Oh, and, oh yeah. Sure. He straight armed him, pushed him into the back of the end zone. Well, you really can't do that as a receiver. It's a good call. Seven seconds left in the quarter of more import. The third and nine play for the Trojans still from the, Utah 27. Again, got to get to the 23. Play clock winding down. Jones in the backfield. Snap back to Caleb. Waiting. Has some time. Throws. That's tipped and over the head of Deuce Robinson. He got pushed from behind, but it wouldn't make any difference because the pass was tipped. And now a fourth and nine call with one second left in the third quarter. A huge play coming up for USC on fourth down. They're only four out of eight third downs this year they're gonna bring in the kicker fourth and nine just a little too long to go for so they'll bring in Dennis Lynch to try to get three I guess three's better than nothing if you can get it this will be a 34 yard line a 44 yard field goal for Lynch who's five out of six far hash snap back kick is away long enough high enough and perfect so the quarter comes to an end the Trojans get their first points since the first quarter, that won't be enough to win the game, but they get them a little bit closer. And after three quarters here at the Coliseum, the score, Utah 28, USC 17. This is the Trojan Football Media Network. Let's have a lot of people pedal those bikes. Intervals. Burn, burn, come on, burn. Woo! At Audi, we think performance is more exhilarating on a real road. Enter the Audi Q5. While Quattro all-wheel drive gives you confidence when you need it, it's the 261 horsepower of the Q5 engine that really raises the pulse rate, as in 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds. And you'll never pull a calf muscle. The next level Audi Q5. Always obey local speed and traffic laws. Fubo is the official streaming platform of USC Athletics. With Fubo, you can watch every Pac-12 game, plus more college and pro sports shows, movies, and news on over 350 live TV channels. Stream it live on your TV, phone, and other devices. No cable required. The best part? You can try Fubo free. There's no contract or commitment. To start watching, just go to FuboTV.com. That's F-U-B-O-T-V.com. The mountains you climb may be stairs. The records you set may be personal. The fans you inspire may be family. But you don't need to be an athlete to get the same nutrition, energy, and hydration products Trojan athletes get. For that, you just need Honey Stinger. Nutrition specifically formulated to help you prepare, perform, and recover at your best. Honey Stinger, official nutrition partner of USC Athletics. Introducing Stone Fight on Pale Ale with a balanced blend of hops and a deep golden color as vibrant as the Southern California sunshine. Stone Fight on Pale Ale is brewed to be the perfect companion for the beach, the tailgate, or cheering on the Trojans. Stone Fight on Pale Ale is best enjoyed by holding a can in one hand and raising a V for victory with the other. 
Find Stone Fight on Pale Ale near you at find.stonebrewing.com. That's find.stonebrewing.com. Stone Brewing is a proud partner of USC Athletics. Your, your, your USC Trojans fight on here. You know where that is? AM 790 KABC. <laughs> After three, it's 28-17 in favor of Utah. The stats, game stats powered by the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, pretty even. Plays are 46-43 Utes. Yards are 356-316 Utes. There's not a lot of difference. Utah, however, outscored the Trojans 14-3 in the third quarter with the game tied 14-all at halftime. Trojans are probably going to get the ball back three, four times in the fourth quarter, and they're going to have to score on at least two of them and hold Utah score less. And none of those things have been happening. Yeah, that's the important part is to hold them score less, Pete. I think that's the that's the challenge here. This defense in the second half has really been uh, befuddled by this uh, Utah offense that really hasn't uh, – I mean, this is the, one of their most productive games. Last week, they got it going against Cal a little bit, but uh, here they found some footing here uh, with the with the Wildcat. Uh, Bryson, Bryson, excuse me, Bryson Barnes has uh, really come to life here. He's feeling comfortable making passes, getting in the run game, and and, and we talked about Vaki. So an offense that uh, you've given a little bit, to, and they and they've taken a mile here. So uh, they're feeling confident group right now. Trojans got to find a way to uh, get them off the field. The Utes. If they win tonight, will become bowl eligible for the eighth straight year. And they lead this game 28-17, so there's a good feeling in uh, Salt Lake City right now. Fourth quarter Trojan football brought to you by Athletic Brewing. Athletic Brewing crafts great tasting and award-winning non-alcoholic beers that are fit for all times. This is the first game this year that Utah has played on grass. Been on artificial surfaces all year. Kickoff. And down to the one-yard line. The Utes will bring it out. Mikey Matthews to the 20. Trojans waiting for him rather than attacking, but Thompson will hit him at the 21-yard line and push him back there. So the Trojans pick up four yards of field position that they wouldn't have otherwise had. Now, Utah has yet to turn the ball over. The Trojans haven't forced one in a month of Saturdays, it seems like. The torch is on, the band is playing, the horse came out. You'd think all of that would it's time to go. Get it, it going. Sounds, it sounds like it's time to go, Pete. This defense has to has to find one here. They need to answer the bell here. The, the, the fans are on the cusp. They see, all right, we got a field goal here. They can find a big play here, a turnover here. This fan, this this place will get rocking again. You can get a stop and get a score, then you're right back in the ball game. Right now it doesn't feel that way. Barnes hands off to Jaquindon Jackson and a nice shoestring tackle by Solomon Bird who has been kind of quiet the last few weeks. He had a great start to this season. Other teams start to game plan for him. That's his third tackle. He's starting to get back on the plus column as far as statistics are concerned. A gain on the play? No, actually no gain on the play, so second and ten. Yeah, big play there. If 51 doesn't tackle on that play, he might have gained five or six on that one. Crowd starts screaming across the way. The student section right even with Utah's offensive formation. On a second and ten, it'll be the Wildcat. Judder stepping back and forth. Sione Vaki, and he'll be throwing for a loss. Rajon Davis, a forgotten man, gets in there quickly. Loss of a yard, third and 11. Yeah, they have not shown any kind of passes out of that formation yet, so this uh, defense should be primed and ready when they know it's back there. It's a... Uh... Until they show something, it's like you got to stop it now. Obviously, you got to keep your safety back there, but everybody else should be primed and keyed to stop that run. Third and 11, and the Coliseum crowd, most of whom have stuck around, about 55,000 strong. On this beautiful Saturday evening, hoping for a big defensive stop here. Vele goes in motion away. Barnes wants to throw, being rushed, fires. That's intercepted by Bullock at the 20. He's at the 10. He's in the end zone. It's a touchdown, USC. Kalen Bullock, the All-American, and the Trojans are right back in the game. How do you do? You called it, Pete. 
Said we need a big turnover right there. And number seven, Kalen Bullock, after the nice pressure from Solomon Bird, steps up in the passing lane and takes that one for six. Now this place is rocking again. You're back in the game. And the Trojans feeling good after big number seven. Trojans are going to go for two here. Bullock with the 25-yard, I believe, interception return. There was nobody in front of him once he picked it off. Good pressure applied by the Trojans. He was looking for Vele, the motion man. And Bullock had an easy stroll to the end zone after he picked that one off. So Trojans are going for two now to try to get back within three. Bullock with Austin Jones, uh, uh, Caleb Williams with Austin Jones to his left side. In trouble, rolling, throws it, desperation heave in the back of the end zone, incomplete out of bounds. So the Trojans fail on the two-point conversion. They're within five points. They got the score. Now Utah goes back on the offensive attack. Conquest sounds, and the Trojans will have to buckle it up again on defense. But now, only down by five with 13-28 remaining in the ball game. We'll take a timeout. Utah, 28, USC 23 on the Trojan Football Media Network. Hi, I'm a helpful Southern California Honda person. And this is what happened when I called Casey with a random act of helpfulness. I'm a disabled young person who right now is using a manual wheelchair, Okay. but because my disability is progressing, it's very difficult for me to use that manual wheelchair to get around. I see. Because my insurance doesn't cover a power wheelchair for mm. me, it's been very difficult to experience my life. Well, that's why we're going to get you a power wheelchair so you can go wherever you need. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Of course. Wow. And we're going to pay you for sharing your story on the radio. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Thank you. <laughs> Today, we help Casey go wherever he needs. And we can help you, too, with Honda Service Pass. Free factory scheduled maintenance for two years or 24,000 miles, whichever comes first. It comes included with all 2023 Hondas, like the Accord. Visit SoCalHondaDealers.com and see your helpful SoCal Honda dealer for details. It's football season, which means it's tailgating season. And the place to be before every USC home game is the Modelo Ultimate Tailgate. Located in the USC Trojan Fan Fest on the grass infield directly east of the Coliseum, the Modelo Ultimate Tailgate opens four hours before kickoff. It's free to fans of all ages, and it's perfect for all your pregame rituals, like checking out the earlier games, jamming to the DJ, grabbing a bite, and, of course, kicking back with some ice-cold cervezas. Modelo, the fighting spirit of the USC Trojans. Fight on. on. Sacking the day's headlines. The KABC News Blitz. Afternoons at 6 on KABC. That defensive stop presented by Smart Stop Self Storage, the smarter way to store. Kalen Bullock with a 30 yard interception return to get the Trojans back in the game. 28 23. Utah leads with 13 and a half to go in the game. And let's go spend some time with Jordan Moore. Well, the field goal decision was kind of surprising, but it almost worked out perfectly for them. You have to think that they were thinking, all right, if you get three, then when you get your touchdown, that's eight, and you're only down by three. And that's exactly the situation that presented itself, but they didn't get it. So now they're down by five. And if you're Utah after Barnes makes just a critical, critical error in that situation, you have to wonder how much trust they'll have in him in the final 13-28. If you're USC's defense, you really have to sell out on the run in this situation. I don't I don't expect Barnes to, to, to do a lot of drop back passing the rest of the way. They're gonna try to force USC to score in a long field, no more mistakes. Got to cover this kick, Pete, right here. We saw this situation last week where Notre Dame, mm -hmm. after look at USC got in the game, USC didn't cover a kick, and Notre Dame took it back to the house. Lynch kicks it off. It'll be Mikey Matthews at the one-yard line again. Hit hard at the 12, and down he goes. Thompson, Chris Thompson, channeling his inner David Lewis with his third tackle of the game. This one at the 12-yard line, a huge hit, and he sets Utah up with a first down way back in their own end at the 12. Well, number 30 was aware this week. He said, hey, we know what happened last week versus Notre Dame. They took a big one out. I'm not going to let that happen. Chris Thompson comes downhill, doesn't miss a step, and lays the wood on that tackle. First down, Utah at the 12-yard line on their own end of the field. Now leading by only five. It used to be 14 not that long ago. Double tight end set on the right side. Sione Vaki's in the backfield. Back to pass, Barnes looking for Vaki, throws it up the sideline, caught at the 40, out to the 48-yard line. You knew they were going to throw to him. Anytime he's in the game, he's going to get the ball. 
Yeah. Shelby defending him again like he was earlier in the game. It cost him a touchdown. This time it cost him about 40. Yeah, they keep matching up Braylon Shelby, a young you know defensive end who likes to rush there. Keep matching him up on Vaki right there. It's just kind of a inexplicable right there. You, you, they see the matchup, and you know they're going to go after him. Shelby's strength is not covering. It's rushing the passer there. To Quindon Jackson, the one back. The double tight end set up strong on the left side. First and 10 at their own 48-yard line. Hand off, Jaquindon Jackson starts left, jitterbugs right, cross the 50 into the Trojan side of the field. On the plus side, they'll get to the 48-yard line, a gain of four, second down and six. Time not critical yet, 12 and a half to go in the game. Trojans trailing 28-23, can't give up any more than a field goal, you would think, from here on in, and still want to be in the ball game. If you do that, you're looking at a situation where you got to score a touchdown and get a two that you didn't get last time. Yeah, more critical than the time right now is just making good stops here. you got to find a way to get some stops. They come out, hit you with a bang play early. you got to find a way to put your feet down here and, and, and set a wall right here. Seasoned veteran Utah team. Been to the Rose Bowl two years in a row. Defending Pac-12 champs two years in a row. Handoff. Jackson again. Up the middle. Hit. Drop. Short game to the 46. A yard and a half on the play. Rajon Davis getting in there quickly. And it'll be third and four. Well, if you stop them here, they're going to flip the field. You're going to get it back deep in your own end. Unless Utah does something crazy and goes for it on fourth and short. From this position, I would think up by five, that would be just nuts. Third and four. First things first. Got to stop them on this one. And not give them a fourth and inches or a fourth and one. Got to watch him running the ball here. Quick throws here. Look for Vele against Christian Roland Wallace on the far side. Tight end motion this way. No, it'll be Barnes, the quarterback, to keep. And he'll get the first down. Down to the 41-yard line. When chips are down, Barnes will run the football. Yeah, just not good awareness by the Trojans right there. That's, he does not want to throw the ball. Jordan talked about it. He's threw it a, just threw an interception. They're going to try to run the ball with him. They don't want to just toss it around the yard there. They're on third and short. Just kind of set up a QB draw. Barnes running the ball, not very often, but just enough. Eight carries, 18 yards. Just enough to keep you off balance. Vaki in the backfield again. Somebody pick that guy up. Motion for Mikey Matthews. Vaki gets the carry. Outruns the Trojans on the edge. 40, 30. Hit and tackled forward by Bear Alexander inside the 20. To the 17, maybe the 18-yard line. Trojans had a chance, but he's just too quick. Yeah, this guy's got some wheels on him. I'm really impressed with Vaki here. Here, Anthony Lucas has the, it. looks like he has the angle. Just hits the boosters on him and takes off. Vaki's got the, showing the wheels off there, too. Man, that's a, an impressive football player there, Pete. Quiets the crowd down again. Now the best the Trojans can hope for, you would think here, is a turnover or uh, hold him to three. Ten minutes remaining in the game. Time running out on the Trojans. Undefeated season in the Pac-12 in the balance for the moment. Barnes will hand off to Quindon Jackson. Into the line. Trojans push him back. Now let him go when the whistle blows. They do. They'll get forward progress to the 16. Again, a two. Second and eight. Bear Alexander the first to hit him. The joint chiropractic can help ease your pain. I need that right now. Keep you moving. To learn more and claim the new $29 new patient special, visit thejoint.com today. Vaki back in the game. Oh, is 28 on the field? What should they do? Alert, alert. <laughs> the, the only question is, is he going to go out for a pet? Oh, it, it's a wildcat to Jaquindon Jackson. So it could be either one of them, but my bet is Sione Vaki. Nope, Jackson. Right side, hit by Solomon Bird. Dragged down there. Romello Height was on top of him as well. To the 15-yard line, a gain of one, third and seven. This might be the ball game right here. If you hold them, you're going to be down by eight probably. And eight isn't over. Charlie Vincent on the field for Utah. We haven't called his name other than in a kick return sort of way tonight. Look out for that guy. He's wide to the left. Vincent has caught two passes this year. He's matched up with Christian Roland Wallace. Receivers all over the field now. He comes back into the backfield. Barnes will throw on third and seven over the middle, incomplete. Good defensive pressure by Rajon Davis, by Cobb, 
looking over the middle of that guy, Vincent, who had, hadn't been in the game all night. You knew he was going to yeah. get something. Got to be a red alert when Vincent comes in. He hasn't been on there. They're just going to run a little option route with him, just watching the linebackers. Vincent has the option there to take it outside or go over the middle. Good job in coverage. Being aware for that inside move. Becker will try the field goal. Five of seven this year, easily within his range. Any good college kicker. This is a 33-yarder. Left hash. Snap back, place down, kick is away. High enough, long enough, and you could hear by the reaction of the Coliseum crowd that that's good. So Utah up by eight with 8.24 to go in the game. The Trojans are probably going to get two more chances at this and maybe a third right at the nubs of the game. Time out of the field. Utah 31, USC 23. Trojan ball when we come back on the Trojan Football Media Network. It takes hard work to be the best in the game. Planning, commitment, resilience, sweat. That's why Old Dominion Freight Line, the number one national LTL carrier for quality, works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in theirs. Old Dominion Freight Line, official freight carrier of USC Athletics, helping the world keep promises. After the end of a good fight, you deserve an ice cold reward. Medela is the mark of a fighter. You've earned this rich golden lager with a crisp, refreshing taste. Because you know, the bigger the fight, the better the reward. You put in the hours, the energy, the tough labor. You are a fighter. And Medela is your reward. Medela, the mark of a fighter. Drink responsibly. Beer imported by Crown Import, Chicago, Illinois. Looking for the play of the day? That's easy. Fight on to victory with USC and fly on faster with ONT, the fastest and easiest airport experience in SoCal. Not to mention, Ontario International Airport has over 65 nonstop flights to more than 20 major destinations with less traffic coming in and out. In other words, getting here is a breeze and so is following our Trojans anywhere the season takes them. Because let's be honest, faster is always better when it comes to your airport. Start planning your next journey today at SoCalSoEasy.com. Defending your bottom line from a sack lunch. That's what we call a sack lunch. Motec on money. Afternoons at 5 on KABC. Well, the Utes get a field goal set up by a long pass to Sione Baki out near midfield, and they were able to turn it into three and lead by eight, 31 23. Eight doesn't finish it, but it doesn't make it any easier. LSU's beaten Army 62-0, Michigan over Michigan State 49-0, Florida State beat Duke 30, or leads Duke 31-20 in the fourth, Ole Miss over Auburn 28-21, UCLA scored early at Stanford 7-0 in the first, no score two minutes in, Arizona State at Washington, Phillies lead the Diamondbacks 6-1 in the ninth, so that would make it 3-2 Philadelphia. Going back to Philadelphia. Looks like the Phillies and Astros in the World Series. Nine plays, 73 yards on that drive. Took 459. Utah will take that for sure. A lot of time off the clock. Long drive. The Trojans had him pinned back at the 12-yard line after that great hit on the kickoff return by Chris Thompson. But couldn't hold him back down there. And so now down by eight points. Zachariah Branch, the branch kickoff return branch of the Trojans. Goes to the 10, gets tripped up, and the Trojans are backed up to nearly the same place, the 13-yard line. Running sideways there, trying to find an opening. There really wasn't one there. First and 10 Trojans at the 13. 8-17 left in the game. Remember, the Trojans burned a timeout earlier. They'll have two remaining. Yeah, you got all your, you got time here. There's no need to stress out yet. I mean, you got to just execute here, Pete. You don't need to. You don't need Caleb Williams to make miraculous plays here. You just got to run your offense and just get in and out of plays and execute at a high level. Need eight to tie and more than that somewhere along the way to win. Austin Jones, the one back. Caleb will throw. Short to Brendan Rice. Gets away for the first good move. Gang tackled out across the 20 to the 24. 25-yard line, a gain of 12, and that's a USC first down. Good way to start the drive. Yeah, good, good number two early. It's the first really missed tackle I've seen from Utah tonight. Good job by Brenner Rice. Back to action. Caleb fakes a handoff, waiting to throw long, and instead suffers a sack back at the 18, and the Utah fans cheer. 
Loss on the play of some seven yards, second and 17, Jonah Ellis. Yeah, it's been a good uh, battle on that left side with Jonah versus Jonah. Jonah Monheim versus Jonah Ellis there. Jonah Ellis gets the best of him right there, uh, wins off the edge and comes off the backside. Caleb didn't see him. First sack for Ellis, 10th of the year. 14 tackles for loss this year. Just a great player, a lot, Ronnie Lott quarter finalist. So you can tell he's also a quality human being. Second and 17, and time running out on the Trojans. Caleb alone in the backfield. A lonely place to be at some times. Waiting, pats the ball, pats it again, backs up, starts to run. Directing traffic, 20, 25, 30, and out of bounds at the 31. So he got the seven from the sack back, and another six after that, and it gives him a chance here on third and four. Why is he so reticent to run the football? He's so good at it. I think he should have... Tucked that one and gone early, Pete. I think the whole left side of the field was open. He should. He just kind of waited. Was wanted to get his wide receivers the ball, but he should have took off on that one. He would have picked up the first you down. Hear easy. the crowd coaching him. Go, go. It's like Maury Wills of the Dodgers back in the old days. Go, Caleb to pass on third and four. Nice blocking by Jonah Monheim. Steps up at the 25, waiting. Sidearm throw caught. Dorian Singer makes the catch and out of bounds at the 48 and the Trojans live on. First down USC for Singer, his 100th career catch if you add both Arizona and USC. Huge throw right there from Caleb oh. Williams. He's running to his left and zips one to Dorian Singer right on the edge. He's able to tiptoe in. What a play by 13 there. Only six and a half minutes to go. The Trojans 52 yards away from scoring a touchdown that would allow them to try a two-point conversion that would tie the game. Down by eight. Need a miracle. Hand off. Austin Jones, a running play. Into Utah territory. Gets tied down at about the 45-yard line. A gain of seven. Second and three. Clock runs. Connor O'Toole, the tackle for the Utes. His fifth of the game. Yeah, no Berta Water, our spotter statistician. There's no panic right there. They should just need to run their offense. They said they can, the whole playbook's still open. It'll be Austin Jones again. 40-37. 38-yard line, knee down, first down USC, and the Trojans on the move here, as they must be here in the late fourth quarter, down by eight points, 31-23 to the defending champion, Utah Utes. Yeah, Utah is going to, whenever USC uh, substitutes, Utah's in no hurry to get there. They're going to run their two slowest guys on off the field, eat up as much clock as they can. Kafuna comes on, Fotu goes off, and he wasn't really hustling. Now the referees say the ball is ready for play. First and 10 SC at the Utah 38. Still a long way away from Pater. Caleb to pass if he can. Pocket breaks down, throws underneath. I think the catch was made. It was Tosh Washington at the 32. So he'll get six out of that on the short yardage passing. Second down and four. 5-22, 5-21 remaining in regulation time. Jones stays in as the one back. Washington and Jackson this way. Williams hasn't been called tonight much, but catches this ball at the 29. Moves to the 20. Out of bounds inside the 15 at about the 14-yard line. The Trojans are in the La Victoria red zone. It's getting spicy here at the Coliseum. Sione Vaki made the tackle. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. We're number four. Good job, Mario Williams. We've seen him at times this year try to stutter step and uh, make too much happen there. Just caught the ball and turned and ran. That's sometimes what you got to do is just go get as much yard as you can. Don't make it look. You don't got to be pretty every time. First and 10 at the 14. Trojans have two times out remaining. Trips come to the right. McCree, Singer, and Washington to the left. Brendan Rice. One back is Austin Jones. Crowd said, let's go. Hurry up. Got to go. Long count. Five on the clock. Caleb in trouble, throws, incomplete, broken up. And Dory and uh, Brendan Rice got hit hard and is shaken up on the play by Cole Bishop. It gets back up off the turf, stops the clock with 4.31 left in regulation, second and 10 at the 14-yard line. Yeah, Trojans missed an opportunity there. It looked like Caleb Williams could have hiked. If he would have hiked the ball there, Utah had too many guys on the field still run out the field, but uh, doesn't get the snap off, and then uh, Brandon Rice takes a shot on that play. I'm surprised Cole Bishop didn't get a call for uh, hitting a defenseless receiver there. He really, really whacked him. And he wasn't looking at him when he did it. Long count for Caleb Williams on second down and 10 from the Utah 14. Hand off to Jones into the line, trying to get away, does backwards running and makes something out of nothing. Went from the 14 to the 8. That's a pretty good run. It looked like he was going to be stopped for nothing. 
Instead, third down and four from the eight-yard line. Got to get a touchdown, got to get a first down in two plays, and a touchdown pretty soon here. Only 4-12 remaining in the game with the clock running. Trojans trail by eight. Yeah, I got two downs here, so you could still a lot of plays you can use here. Hudson and Taj Washington over to the left side. Bunch set, Singer to the right. Tight and strong this way, motion this way for Washington. Caleb drops the ball and gets it back. He tried to throw a pass. It slipped out of his hands. Oh, brother. Popped down on the ground. Utah almost recovered that, but Caleb was able to scoop it back in. But the ball is all the way back to the 19-yard line, and it's fourth down and basically goal to go for SC at the 19. I think they're going to kick it. You almost have to kick a field goal here and then hope for the best. Yeah, just not something you've seen from oh. Caleb Williams, someone who usually takes care, great care of the ball. Obviously, the interceptions last week, but not someone who's pretty sure-handed, not someone who drops the ball and just knocks the ball out of his own hand there on that play. So a must-make here for the left-footed Dennis Lynch from the 26, a 36-yard field goal. The snap back, kick is away, has the distance, and it is perfect. Timeout on the field with three minutes and three seconds remaining in the game. Utah 31, USC 26. It's up to the Trojan defense now on the Trojan Football Media Network. Yard work, groceries, kids' parties. Do your weekends feel like everything but yours? All I wanted was to watch the SC game. Reclaim your weekends with a new and improved KABC app. Stream live Trojans games on the go. So whether you're stuck at your kid's soccer game. Turn around the field that way. Or driving around town running errands. Touchdown, USA. Never miss a play. The new and improved KABC app. Get it today. Your Trojans are back for another exciting season in Troy. And this year, when they win, you win. After every USC victory, visit your participating SoCal AMPM for a free rib sandwich with the purchase of any 20-ounce Coca-Cola product or 700-milliliter smart water, only with the AMPM app. Only 1,000 deals available on the AMPM app for 24 hours on first-come, first-served basis between August 26, 2023 and November 18, 2023. Only at participating Southern California AMPM stores while supplies last. AMPM, proud partner of the USC Trojans. Fight on. Trojan fans, it's time to get your roll on with Roll 'em Up Taquitos, the official taquito of USC Athletics. Using Mama Karen's special recipe, our taquitos are hand rolled daily and pan fried to order with your choice of beef, chicken, ground beef, and vegetarian options. We got Bomb AF Taquitos and a delicious selection of side dishes as well as our Bomb Churro Donuts. Visit RollEmUp.com to find the location nearest you. Fight on and roll 'em up. Cue up the band, because Trojans Live is back. Monday nights at 7 on KABC. Trojans back to within five. That's good. Bad, 3.03 remaining in the game. Bad, only have two times out remaining. So, last stand coming up for the Trojan defense here. Let's pause 10 seconds for stations to identify themselves on the Trojan Football Media Network. Your USC Trojans fight on here. Southern California's undisputed, undisputed talk leader, KABC, Los Angeles, Orange County, a cumulus media station. This sideline report presented by DirecTV, leader in sports on Saturday and every other day, Jordan Moore. Yeah, obviously people will remember the dropping the ball on third down, but the thing that really stunned me was their inability to have a play where, where you could snap the ball on first down. Utah, as you guys have documented, has slowly walked guys off the field. In that case, they almost got caught in their own play because they didn't realize that the umpire was not stopping the play. The Trojans had five, seven seconds easy to snap it and get a free play on first down, never did. Ultimately, the third down play uh, puts them in this situation. Important kickoff coverage to be sure. Fair catch is called for wisely in the end zone, so the Utes, not taking any chances there, will start off at their own 25-yard line. That's better than the usual starting position after a kickoff these days. And so Utah, what are the chances Sione Vaki is going to touch the ball every time the Utes have it right here on a snap? And as you say it, 28 runs out to the field. Shocking. Vaki with 149 receiving and 63 rushing yards first and 10 at the 25 303 left in regulation time 
31-26 Utah. They've led since the beginning of the third quarter. It was tied at the half at 14. Vake in the backfield. Handoff to Sione Vake. Up the middle, gets five. Dropped there by Tafo'o, making sure he doesn't go any further. Bear Alexander was hanging on to him to begin with. But a gain of four and a half is a pretty good first down play. Trojans are going to need to be, do better than that. And the clock continues to run. So you have to hope that you hold them back here and make it third and about like this before you can call your timeout. Yeah, aren't going to use your timeouts here. You're going to have to, on this drive, you're going to on this first set of plays here, you're going to try to get them out on third down. But you got to have a better effort than that on first down. You know, Vaki's getting the ball. you got to come up and smack them. Now or never for the Trojans right now. Empty backfield. Now Jaquindon Jackson joins him. He's going to get the call. I do believe it could be Barnes. It'll be Jackson. Nope. Yep, Jackson into the line. Goes about a half a yard to the 29, the 31 and a half, and the Trojans take their second timeout. Solomon Bird with the tackle. It's third down and a long four. Well, they put the ball right on the 30. So third and five. And Sean, this is it. If you stop them here, you get the ball back. You've got 207 left in the game. Even at that, it's going to be tough, no question. And you need a touchdown, not a field goal. But you've got to stop them on this play because if you don't, they're going to be able to run the clock out. You don't have any. Yeah, we've seen a couple of uh, situations like this in this game already where Utah has used Bryson Barnes in the run game here. Just kind of spreading everybody out on third and three and let him work on that QB draw, which has worked a couple times. We've seen Vaki on third down make some plays. So here, Trojan's got to be ready. They don't have a ton of things that, to worry about here, but have to lock into their, to, to what's going on and what Utah is trying to do on this play. Got to be Vaki. Got to be. He's the they, bread and butter guy. Or they guy. use him as a, a distraction. Athletic Brewing changing the game for non-alcoholic beer with great tasting and award-winning brews. Try it for yourself. Go to athleticbrewing.com and use the code USC10 to get 10% off your first six-pack. Exclusions and conditions apply. Third and five coming out of the timeout. The Trojans must get a stop right here. They've got a lot of options. The short passing game hasn't been bad at all. Barnes is 12 of 17 for 226 yards, but most of his stuff has been quick outs, button hooks, and so on. And if he does that again, the game will be over if they're successful. Last time he tried that over the middle down the other end, it was a little too low, and the Trojans defended it very well on the motion man, Delvon Vele. Yeah, you got to kind of sit on the sticks here and sit in the middle of the field. That's where Barnes is comfortable throwing the ball. He's not going to go to the, towards the outside. You don't have to kind of worry about that. you got to worry about Vaki running the ball, and you got to worry about the middle field and on that sticks line because uh, Bryson, Bryson Barnes, he's limited in ways as a quarterback, but he knows what his strengths are. Most of the time, the prevailing thought is in football right here that you run the football, which gives v Vaki the ball for sure because if you don't make it, you force the Trojans to call their last timeout. But Kyle Whittingham is a gunslinger. We've seen it here at the Coliseum before. He likes to he likes to push the envelope. He likes to challenge his players to win the game and not try to play defense and not lose the game. And that's why maybe he does throw. Maybe he does. Great games between these two teams, man. Last year, that one-pointer up there, the one that should have been a great game if Caleb didn't pull his hammy. And now this one here, coming down to the wire. This is the biggest play of the game for the Trojan defense and maybe the biggest play of the season for the Trojan defense. That's Vaki out of the backfield, maybe something in that essence. Vaki next to Barnes, third and five. Long count, Barnes trying to draw the Trojans defensively offside. He comes up and changes the play at the line of scrimmage on third and five, takes the snap, it'll be a pass. He rushes and throws, that's it, complete over the middle, looking for Vaki. Good pressure applied by the Trojans. Fourth and five, Bear Alexander in there, making maybe Barnes throw a little bit too high. Oh yeah, and that was an easy play. Vaki had the easy first down. If it wasn't for Bear Alexander right in Barnes's face, that's an easy completion. No one really picked up Vaki out of the backfield, surprisingly. And uh, thank God for Bear Alexander getting the backfield, causing a little havoc there. That defensive stop presented by Smart Stop Self Storage, the smarter way to store. Now, Zachariah Branch waiting for the punt from Jack Bowmeister. The crowd anticipating it as well. What will Branch do with the ball? 
makes the catch. Steps up and gets a few yards, gets away, up the middle of the field. He's at the 40, he's at the 35, 30, down the sideline to the 20, out of bounds at the 15. Zachariah Branch has given the Trojans a chance with a great punt return. And the Trojans are set up, first and 10, at the Utah 15-yard line. How do you do? How about that, Pete? The crowd's been waiting all night. They've been on their feet, and their number one delivers. Punches it right up the gut, takes it up the middle, makes a couple guys miss, shakes it, and it hits to the sideline, gives the punter a little wiggle there, and almost gets it to the house, but sets up the Trojans on the, what, 11-yard line here with a minute 52. Let's see if Caleb Williams can get these guys in the end zone. That's the key. 65-yard punt return for Zachariah Branch, who, frankly, if he isn't the freshman of the year in the United States, I don't know who would be better. I have not seen a better freshman in a long time, especially in the kick and punt return game. Holy mackerel. First and 10, he actually went out of bounds at the 11-yard line. First and 10 for the Trojans, basically first and goal at the 11, down by five, late in the ball game to be sure, a minute 52 to go. And the Trojans still have a timeout of their pocket if they need it. Snap back to Caleb. He'll run it himself to the 10, down to the five. He's gonna go, touchdown! The Trojans have come back to take the lead. How do you do? Just a look. Okay, go. Looks like they're going to go for two on that play. Just a QB draw. Spread everybody out. They pulled Jarrett Kingston from the tackle position right up the middle of the field. Was the lead blocker for Caleb right there. And Caleb does a little shimmy stay, steps to the outside, and does the rest. Looks like the offense is going to be out here and go for two to, to push the lead to three. All right. Caleb with Austin Jones next to him. Tight end, strong right. Lake McCree coming to the near hash mark. We've got Michael Jackson and Brendan Rice to the far side. They're the receivers in the pattern. Double tight end right with Jude Wolf in the ball game. Trojans going for two. Have come all the way back from down 14 at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Snap. Back to Caleb Williams. Drops back to pass. Being rushed, throws off his back foot. It is over the head of Michael Jackson, incomplete. And the lead will stay at one. USC 32, Utah 31 with a minute 46 remaining in what we think is the rest of the ball game, but who knows. Now, if you're Utah and you are not a great passing team, you really can't afford to run the ball all day long. You've got to move the ball up the field. You've got to get in field goal position and give your guy, Becker, who has kicked a 51-yarder this year, a chance. A 51-yarder would be from the 34-yard line. So they've got to get to the Trojan 34 to give him a good chance. Yeah, not something really Bryson is, is, is comfortable doing. Utah's quarterback has not really led, led these one of these kind of drives all year. Uh, not really an offense that thrives in these kind of situations. Want to ground and pound and kind of work the middle of the field here. Trojans have an opportunity to, to, to do something special here on defense. Got to find a way to win. That game-changing play, the punt return by Zachariah Branch, brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Athletic Brewing Craft's great-tasting and award-winning non-alcoholic brews available in-store and online at athleticbrewing.com. Use code USC10 at checkout for 10% off your first six-pack order. Exclusions and conditions apply. Don't have to tell you how important this kickoff return coverage is, or does Utah take the fair catch and bring it out to the 25 again. Lynch approaches, kicks it, and it will go into the end zone. It's a little extra adrenaline for Dennis Lynch, I feel. Mm. That PAT, by the way, for Lynch brought to you. He didn't kick a PAT that time, but all the Trojan PATs and field goals brought to you by Terranea Resort, a luxury resort like no other. So, three times out remaining for Utah. They've got the ball at their own 25-yard line, first and 10. They need to get to the Trojan 34 to set up a potential game-winning field goal for Cole Becker, the transfer from Colorado out of Northern California. Here we go. Trojan crowd screaming. I'm screaming. You're screaming. Jackson in the backfield. Barnes back to pass on first down. Pumps once. Rush from the pocket. Throws underneath complete. Diving out to the 20. Six-yard line is all, though, is Jaquindon Jackson. Good pressure again, applied by Bear Alexander. Second and nine. That would have been better for him to drop that ball there, really. Yep. Uh, now the clock's running. They don't, use, don't burn a timeout with all three of them left. Barnes 
The shotgun with the snap. In trouble, stets it right side, throws it through the hands, through the hands of Money Parks, incomplete. Third and ten. And you know, of course, they're going to go for it on fourth down, down by a point. Boy, these two teams are pretty good against each other, aren't they? Yeah, a really good throw by Bryson Barnes there. They're just Money Parks. That one goes through his hands. Not something that you see a lot, just attacking the outside on this defense, on this offense. It's not a comfortable thing that Bryson Barnes and this receiving staff wanted to receive. Look out for Delvon Vele, number 17, the big guy at 6'5", 210. On the right side out of Rancho Bernardo, crunch set to the right, third and ten. They lay the motion, man. Got to be careful with him. Barnes wants to throw and will on third and ten. Here comes the rush. Throw over the middle, complete. Out to the 34-yard line. Ball was dropped, but they reel him down. Short of a first down, it'll be fourth and one. And a late hit on Bear Alexander, it looks like. I don't see a flag. I see a hat Personal foul. back there. Roughing the passer, number 90 defense, high contact, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. They'll take the penalty instead of the play. They would have gotten nine. I would have had a fourth and one. Instead, it's a first and ten. It's added at the end of the play, so they get the nine and the 15 out to the 49-yard line, and the Utes not set up yet, but they're in pretty good position. Yeah, just got to pull off on that. If you're Bear Alexander, just as his face mask hits, Bryson Barnes face mask, and they're going to call that there. Just got to find a way to lay off and not touch the head of the quarterback. Previous play is under review. Why? Yeah, it, it was accidental contact. It, it's not a targeting call for sure, but it was definitely his head, his face made contact with the quarterback's face, and when, when they see that, they're going to any kind of touch any kind of. Hit to the head of a quarterback, they're going to throw the play. Our official review is brought to you by Life Law. Injury law made simple. Modelo locker room report follows this one. Whenever that might be, we'll have interviews with our players of the game. If the Trojans hang on, we'll have one from the field with Jordan Moore. And then those in the locker room. We'll hear from Lincoln Riley. We'll check the stats, highlights, and scores of other games. And get ready to play the Cal Bears a day game next week in Berkeley at 1 o'clock. First down, Utah, for the moment, at their own 49-yard line. After review, it was determined that number 90 committed a personal foul, targeting penalty. Number 90 is disqualified for the remainder of the game. So Bear Alexander has been given the boot, and he'll miss the first half of the Cal game next week. And you think that was a correct call? No, I, I don't believe that that should be uh, significant enough for a disqualification and the removal from the first half of the next game kind of befuddling to me. I mean, obviously, they're going to give him the 15-yard penalty, but for the, for the player to get ejected for targeting, it, it's uh, pretty ridiculous. Trojans defense being asked to make a big play. Once again, they had him pinned with a fourth and one. Who knows what they would have done on that fourth down play. Assuming they would have made it, they'd still have the ball. Still got it here on a first and ten. Motion on the line for Utah. That'll back him up five. It'll be first and 15. Every yard counts here when you're talking about a winning field goal attempt. Ball start. Number 55 offense. Spencer Five Bono. yard penalty. Remains first down. The left tackle. True freshman. He's maybe the only guy on the field that doesn't have lots of experience in big games and situations like this. First and 15 back at the 44. How much time, you ask? A minute 10. Gentry and Davis in the Trojan lineup defensively. Tight end on this near side. Motion this way. Barnes will keep off the right side. 50, 45, hit hard by Zion Branch, but he gets to the Trojan 43. They need about nine more yards to be in the outside range for Cole Becker to try to win the game at the gun. Yeah, Bryce He's got a Barnes. second down and two and a half. Took a shot there. It doesn't look like he's he's kind of figured the things out there. Barnes with Jaquindon Jackson to the right. Clock runs with 45 seconds remaining. Barnes wants to throw. Being rushed by Tafoo. Throws the sideline pattern over the head of the Trojans bench. Incomplete third and three. Well, here's the problem for Utah. It's not the clock with 35 seconds yet. Plus, they could start to stop it three times. But the third down and two and a half 
they've got to get a first down in two plays to give Becker a chance for a field goal. Yeah, Bryson Barnes on that, he took a shot on that play before. He, he lowered his helmet, so Zion Branch had a lower head, so they both meant helmet to helmet. That was not Zion Branch's fault, but Bryson Shaw, Bryson Barnes, excuse me, looked like he uh, got a little woozy after that play. Third down and two and a half. Need to get to the 41. They're on the 43 and a half. Barnes in the shotgun. Jaquindon Jackson to his right side. Hand off to Jackson. Into the line. Got the first down. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It looked, it looked like, like it like by the naked short. spot. But now, maybe not. I don't think they got much of a spot there. And they might review this spot. It looks like it's going to be short by a half a yard. Timeout. Utah. Utah has taken a timeout. And uh, they're talking about it right now, about the call of the linesman. The four referees are gathered together, and they are calling it a fourth down. So fourth and a half a yard. Got to get to the 41 proper. They're on the 41 and a half. 25 seconds left. They need a yard for a first down on fourth down. Can't afford to flinch on the line of scrimmage and lose yardage penalty wise. And they need about seven yards to give Becker a chance at his career long field goal. Like right now, it would be wildcat. a 58-yarder, about 59. That'd be too long, I do believe. Wildcat, wildcat formation. Jaquindon Jackson. He'll run it himself. He gets the first down to the 40. Stop the clock at 17. Jackson gets the first down at the 40. Got to mark the ball. Utah's got its times out remaining, two of them. They need about six more yards to get in field goal range, and you know they'd like to get him as close as they can. What is going on here? And now whistles. Are they going to review it? Current ruling on the field is the runner made the line of game for a first down. The Let's previous play is under replay review. Jordan down there. Let's uh, see what he saw. He's kind of right in line with what's going on. Jordan, what do you know? Yeah, a really strange clock management here by Utah. They had all these timeouts. They're down to 19 seconds left. They only have about three plays. And, yeah, sure, they can get into long field goal range here. But with all the time and the timeouts, they really should have way more time left on this clock and just sort of let it run out. And now they're looking at it to review this spot to see if he even got it. Obviously, the game would be over if they were to review it decide that he came up short of the first down that's what the referee is taking a look at i don't understand why they stopped the clock to put more time back on obviously it stops on a first down but then they should stop after you get it started really on the field the runner making the line the game for a first down stands as called couldn't tell it's just a, a pile of bodies you really couldn't tell where the ball was it's an official review brought to you by life law injury law made simple so first and ten at the 40. 19 seconds remaining in the game. Utah needs about six yards to give Becker a chance for his career-long field goal. The Trojans need a defensive stop for a couple of plays at least. They're talking to Bryson Barnes, the Utah quarterback, about the timing situation and what needs to be done in certain situations. Now they back off away from him. Jackson goes in motion. Barnes wants to throw short. He does, incomplete. Bailey fell down, it looked like. Romello Height was in quickly on Barnes. Incomplete pass, second and 10, 16 seconds remaining. So now you're looking at a situation where you've got three plays to try to get more than six yards, basically, right? Yeah, you, can, you still got two timeouts, so you can still right. run the ball here. They can hit the timeout, but uh, they gotta, you got to be productive on that run. The Trojans stop them short on that run and be a win for the Trojans here. Good pressure there by... The metal height getting the back real quick. Jackson, the one back. You still got to look at Vele. He's matched up on the far side against Christian Wallen Wallace. Motion. Flags down. Motion. It looked like Money Parks came out at the wrong time. And two guys were moving. Two guys were shifting at the same time. Part of the snap. Both start. Number 61 offense. Five-yard penalty. 
remains second down. All right, so second and 15, every yard counts back one. at the 45. That's a big one because now it makes it about 10 yards to gain to get to that 35, 34 area where you might have a chance to kick a field goal. 16 seconds away. Park splits wide to the right side. Crunch set on the near side. Barnes sends Vele in motion. He zip zaps back this way. Barnes looks left. Being rushed. He'll run. 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. They're in position to kick a game-winning field goal. They let Barnes get away one more time. Five seconds left in the game. They'll bring the field goal unit out. Maybe run a play to the center of the field to give Cole Becker an easy shot right over the middle. Yeah, just a shame right there. Pass rush, pass the line, rush at the top of the quarterback right there. Not able to retrace their steps and get back in the lane. And Bryson Barnes does a smart thing. Can't really make those kind of throws, but I'm going to beat you with my feet here as the Trojans get out of their rush lanes and give them an opportunity to make a play. And credit Bryson Barnes for making that play. Just getting downfield, Trojans losing their eyes. Didn't run much all year, but runs when he has to in the most critical situations ran for a touchdown tonight and in critical spots he likes to run the football he knows how and he did it and he sets him up for a game-winning field goal try i just have to be more aware if you're the trojans bryson bar he's not going to hurt you with your arms the only way you can do that is pick it up with his feet there and just lose sight of the quarterback and he makes you pay now they'll try to run a uh, running play with five seconds left and one timeout left and they were now there's about 80 people on the field for utah they got so many people on the field there they decide to bring in the field goal unit now the ball will be spotted right hash mark at the 27 a 37 yard kick bo meester the punter is the holder the snap is grief from glendora and the snap is back it hits the holder in the head but the trojans had just called time usc their final well, what a game. The Trojans scored too soon, as it turns out. Scored with a minute 52 left and ended up looking like they were going to win it. And, of course, the two-point conversions that they tried, both of them, lots of pressure applied by Utah. Caleb had to throw bad balls, and he threw them out of the end zone. Neither two-point conversion was successful, or this would be for a tie. Yeah, woulda, shoulda, coulda here, but Bryson Shaw was able to lead his team down the field. It was a, a help to part. Uh, the Bear Alexander penalty was huge, but you thought Utah in this in that kind of circumstance, not an offense built in those kind, for those kind of situations, especially without their guy Cam Rising. But give it to Bryson Barnes, who was able to lead his team down here thanks to a penalty, like we said, and, and making a big run. Do you put a guy like Deuce Robinson up front now? Big guys, the biggest guys you got to jump up in the air. That's, what, that's almost all you got, right? Yeah, they've uh, changed the rule about rushing the snapper anymore. You can you jump. Can you can't do that anymore so can't rush if you could jump though and you can also come in from the side Offense. now they're Offense. gonna run a play so the trojans change robinson was in there and they change their personnel the trojans now change their defensive personnel and utah's gonna run a play barnes runs over takes a knee at the 21 Utah will expend its final timeout with three seconds left. And now they'll bring in the field goal group. Cole Becker, a junior from Northern California. He was an All-American in high school. 30 for 40 in his career coming into this game. His career long is 56, but he kicked that at Colorado. That's up at height, at uh, altitude. Here, he's five for seven coming into this one. Kicked a field goal from 33 earlier. So six of eight, well within his distance for sure. And this one will be even shorter than the other, a little bit longer. From the 28-yard line, a 38-yard field goal to win the game for the Utes and send the Trojans to their first defeat in conference play of the 2023 season. The crowd hoping against hope. But something goes awry, it certainly has for the Trojans before. The snap is back, the kick is up, the kick is long enough, high enough, and perfect. And the Utah Utes come streaming onto the field from the sideline to celebrate a great comeback win, one of the greatest wins in their school's history, it has to say, on the road at the Coliseum against the Trojans in a rematch of the Pac-12 championship game. 
and it's the Utes to cheer last here at the Coliseum as the field goal is good and Utah wins it by a final score of 34 to 32. What a ball game. Yeah, quite a ball game. Unfortunately, not the result the Trojans want, but had a chance there at the end. All they had to do is slow down an offense that has really struggled all year in those kind of situations, but weren't able to do it with a costly penalty and a huge run by their quarterback, Bryson Barnes, a, a gutsy performance there, able to get them in field goal position, set up for that game-winning field goal. And a couple of missed two-point conversions. We can point to that, too, because those plays should be in your back pocket, and uh, they neither of them were run very well. The offensive line was beaten up front, and Caleb had to throw off balance on both of those, and neither were very close. Final score presented by Wells Fargo, official retail bank of the USC Athletic Department and the final Utah 34 USC 32 this is the Trojan Football Media Network Fubo is the official streaming platform of USC Athletics with Fubo you can watch every Pac-12 game plus more college and pro sports shows movies and news on over 350 live TV channels stream it live on your TV phone and other devices no cable required the best part you can try Fubo free there's no contract or commitment. To start watching, just go to FuboTV.com. That's F-U-B-O-TV.com. Trojan fans, you may not think of yourself as an athlete, but everyday life is full of athletic feats. You bend, you reach, you lift, you twist until back, neck, or shoulder pain hits, which brings you to a stop. But whether you're an athlete or not, the Joint Chiropractic can help ease your pain and keep you on the active list. Visit thejoint.com today to get your first consultation, exam, and adjustment for just $29. The Joint Chiropractic, the official chiropractor of the USC Trojans. Introducing Stone Fight on Pale Ale. With a balanced blend of hops and a deep golden color as vibrant as the Southern California sunshine. Stone Fight on Pale Ale is brewed to be the perfect companion for the beach, the tailgate, or cheering on the Trojans. Stone Fight on Pale Ale is best enjoyed by holding a can in one hand and raising a V for victory with the other. Find Stone Fight on Pale Ale near you at find.stonebrewing.com. That's find.stonebrewing.com. Stone Brewing is a proud partner of USC Athletics. Don't punt your morning drive. Catch Armstrong and Getty, morning 6 to 9 on KABC. The Utah Utes building up a big lead, 28 to 14 in the middle of the third quarter. The Trojans rallied, got back to a lead on a Caleb Williams touchdown run with just under two minutes to play, but too much time was left on the clock. Utah able to move the ball up the field at the end and kick a game-winning field goal from 38 yards away to beat the Trojans tonight at the Coliseum, 34-32. to That hands the Trojans their second defeat in a row. Probably knocks them out of the national championship picture almost for sure. Still alive in the conference race, but they'd have a lot of luck and a lot of work to do, and they'll have to win out the rest of the way. And uh, the Utah Utes consider themselves very much in the picture right now with a 6-1 and one record and 3-1 and one in the conference. And nobody's going to count these guys out. They've won it back-to-back years already. And they go home to play Oregon next week. And then in a couple of weeks, looks like maybe Utah at Washington will be the game of the year in the Pac-12. You just never know. Yeah, tremendous effort by Utah Utes. Uh, my hat goes off to them. They're down there. Their star quarterback, uh, Cam Rising, haven't figured anything out on offense all year. Last week after the bye, do a good job of kind of figuring out that they got uh, Vaki back there, from stealing from defense, put him on offense, use him as a weapon. He was a weapon all day today. Uh, Bryson Barnes with a, a gutsy performance. Not a big thrower, but did it with his legs today and did just enough uh, to keep the Trojans off balance today and, and get down the field and kick that game-winning uh, field goal. My hat's off, like I said, to Kyle Whittingham. Always have a, a, a strong – doesn't matter, you know, that they've had a ton of injuries this year. They just keep battling and, and find a way to get a tough road win against the Trojans. The series ends up 13-10 USC, but in the Pac-12 years, 7-6 Utah. This is the last one for a while unless we see Utah in a bowl game in the future. And if we do, I think you can pretty much guess that it's going to be a wild game between these two teams. It certainly has been over the last few years. For the Trojans, they'll have to figure things out in a hurry. They've got a game at Cal, which seems like a winnable contest. However, will they be psychologically next week? And then you got to go to Washington, go home to play Washington, one of the top teams in the country, and up to Eugene, Oregon, before facing your arch rival in UCLA here at the Coliseum. A lot of work to be done. We know the Trojans are going bowling. We don't know where. 
and we'll find that out over these last few weeks. That'll do it for this one. Reminder to stay tuned for the Modelo Locker Room Report, the show that takes you into the Trojan Locker Room for interviews with our Trojan players of the game. We'll hear from Lincoln Riley. We'll check the stats and the highlights and the scores of other ball games. all that on the Modelo Locker Room Report coming right up. Final score once again, Utah 34, USC 32, and this is the Trojan Football Media Network. You can't spell victorious without U S C. Looks left, looks over the middle, throws it, intercepted, intercepted, and the Trojans are gonna win. USC football was brought to you by Pechanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC football. By Coors Light, Coors Light, made to chill. By AMPM, too much good stuff. Proud sponsor of USC athletics. Caleb takes the snap, handoff to Lloyd, bounces off one man, reverses field, gets a block from Caleb Williams. He's at the 20, he's at the 15, he's at the 10-5. Touchdown, USC! USC football was also brought to you by Honda. The SoCal Honda dealers are doing random acts of helpfulness for USC fans this season and they can help you too visit socalhondadealers.com to find the helpful honda dealer near you and by state farm the state farm personal price plan helps create an affordable price just for you don't go anywhere coming up next it's the Modelo locker room report with a full breakdown of the game highlights and head coach lincoln riley's final word right here on your home for trojans football am 790 kabc and the usc trojan media network presented by pachanga resort casino at USC Credit Union, we're driven by the winning spirit of the Trojan family, and as a valued member of our family, we make sure you win, too. When you join USC Credit Union, you get more than great services. You become part of an institution designed to put financial success in your hands. Better rates, personal attention, and a not-for-profit approach that puts you first. How's that for a winning financial plan? Join USC Credit Union today, the official credit union of USC Athletics. Head to uscreditunion.org slash fight on to learn more. Federally insured by the NCUA. Calling all Trojans. It's football season, which means it's tailgating season. And the beer you need to grab for every USC football game is Modelo. Modelo is a new proud partner of the USC Trojans. So all season long, whether you're at the Coliseum or at home watching the Trojans, you need to have a Modelo in hand. Modelo and USC football. It's the perfect combination for all your game day rituals. Modelo, the fighting spirit of the USC Trojans. Fight on. It's time to recharge, reconnect, and rediscover your perfect combination at Pachanga Resort Casino. And with your resort favorites back in action, there's all of the excitement and comfort you love with the peace of mind you can depend on. So whenever you're ready for a little rest, a little relaxation, and a lot of fun, we'll be here. Play your perfect combination at Pachanga Resort Casino today. And now Travis Kelsey, an overly direct sports person for DirecTV. Now you have two great choices for how you get your football fix on DirecTV, satellite or streaming. Just like my mom has two great choices for who her favorite son is. There's me, Travis, scoring touchdowns and winning games, or my brother who snaps the ball and sticks his butt in the QB's face. Hey, we're both champs. She can't go wrong, just like you. Love you, Mom. Stop compromising. Get DirecTV with or without a satellite. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. This, 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 let's go, let's go! Is the Modelo Locker Room Report. Caleb Williams to pass. Throws right side, down the sideline, caught! He's in the end zone! It's a touchdown, USC! Brought to you by Modelo, the fighting spirit of the USC Trojans. Pechanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC football. Honey Stinger, the official nutrition partner of the USC Trojans. Prepare, perform, and recover with Honey Stinger. Final! And by Salea Tequila, proud partner of the USC Trojans. Once again, we go back up to the booth to the best broadcast team in college football, Pete Arbogast and Sean Cody. Cody. These two teams play really good football games against each other. 61,551, the announced crowd tonight, and the Trojans and Utah Utes put on a show. 14-14 after the first quarter, same at halftime. Utah went wild in the third quarter, built up a 28-14 lead before the Trojans reawakened, got a field goal, an interception return from Kalen Bullock of 30 yards to make it 28-23. The Utes got an important field goal. By the way, the Trojans went for two and failed. 
Then a field goal for Utah to make it 31-23. SC got a field goal and a touchdown to go ahead 32-31. Went for two to get up by three again and again didn't get it. Both times Caleb Williams was rushed hard. Had to throw off his back foot and threw it wild and incomplete. So the score remained a one-point game for SC with a minute 46 to go and then Utah expertly, with all its times out remaining, moved down the field 54 yards in 11 plays, aided certainly by a 15-yard uh, roughing the quarterback call, a targeting call against Bear Muhammad. It will miss the first half of next week's Cal game for SC. The Trojans were in on the quarterback an awful lot tonight, Sean Cody, but uh, never got to him except for one time, one sack in the ball game, and Becker, their field goal kicker, put it in from 38 yards away with no time left to win the game here at the Coliseum and set off a mini celebration for Utah, to be sure, as the Utes win it 34-32. Uh, two good teams getting together, playing a good football game. Yeah, it was a great game, Pete. I mean, the, the, the roller coaster ride it was, we didn't think, we, we thought it'd probably be a little bit low, lower scoring affair with, a, with a, a defense by Utah and an offense by Utah that uh, keep, keep, it, keep it generally tight and low scoring affair. So uh, it, it, was, it wasn't that. It got off to a faster start than we anticipated with the, with the 14 points by each team in the first quarter. Then things kind of settled in. Both defenses settled in a little bit, started to battle. And then the Trojans came out flat, I think, in the second half uh, to start the half. Uh, just didn't have the answers early, especially on offense. And then defense was getting moved around by Sione Vaki and, and, the, and, the, and the Utah offense. But then Trojans came to life. A huge pick by Kalen Bullock. Uh, was really changed the tide. A big return by Zachariah Branch. It wasn't really the offense that got it going. It was the defense and special teams. And then, unfortunately, uh, Trojans score. Leave too much time on the clock, maybe. And uh, just it can't keep Bryson Barnes and that Utah offense from driving down the field and, and, and getting a chance to kick that game when field. Certainly, some of the plays that happened tonight were superior, fun plays. I think the offense maybe found themselves a little bit there late in the ball game and maybe can work on that going forward because prior to when you're down 28-14, prior to that spot when the Trojans seemed to wake up offensively, they hadn't been doing much for yeah, three or four weeks almost. So maybe that's a good thing to move forward and with. It, it, it kind of tied into me, and I think Jordan mentioned it during the broadcast. It was the run game. The run game to me early on was 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 clicking. They kind of went away from him, and the offense stalled, and then they come back to it a little bit in the second half and show some life in the in the run game, and that's when the offense starts clicking. So I, I know sometimes we, we want to get you know into Caleb Williams' mode and make sure that he's getting his touches and, and getting his guys, but I also think that this offense could benefit from a little bit more of the, that running back position. If it, it, I know uh, – uh, Marshawn Loy had a costly uh, turnover, which was huge. That's probably why you saw Austin Jones the rest of the way. But uh, he's got to find a way to keep that running game in there to keep this offense moving, I think. Well, plenty of big plays in this one. It's going to be interesting to hear what it is. But here it is, the power play of the game. Now it's time to take a listen to the best play of the game. By far the best presentation of the day. And here comes the best part. Powered by the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. Coliseum crowd, most of whom have stuck around, about 55,000 strong. This beautiful Saturday evening, hoping for a big defensive stop here. Vele goes in motion away. Barnes wants to throw, being rushed, fires. It's intercepted by Bullock at the 20. He's at the 10. He's in the end zone. It's a touchdown, USC. Kalen Bullock, the All-American. And the Trojans are right back in the game. How do you do? Come on, guys. I want to hear the other ones, too. Okay, 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 play the uh, the punt return and, and the uh, Caleb Williams touchdown. Those were fun, too. The fans deserve to hear them. Maybe it'll cheer them up a little bit. Got anything ready? Can you? Would you? Snap back to Caleb. He'll run it himself to the 10. Down to the 5. He's going to go. Touchdown! The Trojans have come back to take the lead. How do you do? I'm going to pay for that one, I think, for the rest of the next couple of days. <laughs> I screamed a little bit too loud on that one. Well, Trojans ended up losing, though, 34-32, as Cole Becker hit a field goal right at the end to win the ball game. Sean and I will come back. We'll take a look at the final stats on this one. And uh, JJ will be joining us for some postmortems as well. We'll be going down to the locker room. We'll talk to some Trojan players and uh, Coach Lincoln Riley about uh, what to do about this two-game losing streak. I know the only thing you can do is just uh, buck up and keep going and let's go. The Modelo Locker Room Report continues after these messages on the Trojan Football Media Network. Hey, are you feeling the heat? No, this makeshift air conditioner I made with my fridge is working great. Oh. 
LADWP has rebates up to $225 on new air conditioners to help you beat the heat and save money. Ooh, that sounds cool. Plus, you can sign up for Level Pay to get predictable monthly bills for easy budgeting. Very cool. Stay cool. Visit LADWP.com slash cool dash LA. Now, can you help me fix my fridge? Support for USC football comes from Children's Hospital Los Angeles. U.S. News and World Report is once again named Children's Hospital Los Angeles the number one hospital for kids in California. Ranked in the top ten nationally, CHLA has been on the honor roll of best children's hospitals since the prestigious list was created. They've been providing the best care for kids in California for more than 120 years. Whether it's for routine care or life-saving needs, families turn to CHLA when the outcome matters. Clinical excellence, breakthrough research, and world-class expertise for kids. Find a doctor at CHLA.org. You don't have to train and compete at an elite level to enjoy the benefits of Honey Stinger products. Honey Stinger produces fuel for athletes of all kinds using delicious honey and organic ingredients. Not only is honey rich in antioxidants, but it's also easily digested and absorbed quickly into the system to help you prepare, perform, and recover. Turn to Honey Stinger to achieve your performance goals and feel better along the way. Honey Stinger, official nutrition partner of USC Athletics. Taking you inside the huddle All right, 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 right. from the comfort of your car. Trojans Live, Monday nights at 7 on KABC. Take a look at the game stats powered by the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power for the Utes to come back and beat the Trojans after it looked like the Trojans had come back to beat the Utes. 34-32 the final here tonight. First downs. Utah 23-18. They only gave up 17 first downs per game this year, and the Trojans only got 18. That's the best in the conference. Yards rushing. Utah ran it 47 times for 248 yards, an average of 5.3 per. USC ran it 23 times for 145 yards, an average of 6.3 per. Net yards passing, 256 to 235 USC. Total offense. Utah ran 70 plays to the Trojans, 58, and had 483 yards with those extra 12 plays to the Trojans, 401. Both teams getting 6.9 yards per play. Turnovers were 1-1. SC fumbled it away out near midfield. SC got an interception for a touchdown. Third and fourth down conversions for Utah, 5 of 16 for the Trojans, 4 out of 11. Marshawn Lloyd was the leading ball carrier for SC, but only seven carries for 86 yards and a touchdown, an average of 12.3. Austin Jones ran for 31. Caleb ran for 27. I believe one of my keys to the game, Mr. Cody, was which quarterback was going to run for more yards. Bryson Barnes had 57. Caleb Williams had 27. And the winner was Utah. There you go. Zachariah Branch carried one time for one yard. Caleb went 24 for 34 for 256. No touchdowns. And he was sacked four times. Their quarterback only sacked once. Williams found nine different receivers. Taj Washington with five. Brendan Rice with five. Washington, the leading guy, with 112 yards through the air, including that beautiful 51-yard layout at the beginning of the game to set the Trojans up for a short touchdown run by Zachariah Branch, a, uh, an officially a one-yard run rather than two for a touchdown. Zachariah Branch with that yardage. Also caught a pass for seven and had a 93 kickoff return and 59 punt return. You're a total of 155 yards. That punt return at the end set the Trojans up for what we thought looked like very much a a game-winning touchdown run by Caleb Williams. Bryson Barnes, we've talked about him. Let's talk about him some more. Their third-string quarterback going into this season and uh, has taken over this team with Cam Rising out and the second guy, Johnson, not... Uh, as good, frankly. He hadn't been playing as well. So Bryson Barnes' game management was really good. Short passes for the most part. A cup one, long one. 14-22, 235, three touchdowns. He came in with one touchdown. He got three today. He was only sacked once, and he ran for 57 yards. That's a pretty good day. He's all, If it wasn't for Sione Vaki, I'd say he was player of the game. Yeah, they've done a good job with, with Bryson Barnes. I think they they you know find out his limitations during that bye week, and they thought, hey, this is what Bryson Barnes can do. He can make these quick throws. We don't have to. We're not going to challenge on the outsides. We're going to do what, maybe try to pop a pass, but we're going to make him. We're going to get him running the ball. We're going to get him just quick passes, and we're going to make him feel comfortable. And he's not going to make any mistakes. And, and mistakes. One bad mistake today with Caleb Bullock. Other than that, a, a pretty uh, good game for Bryson Barnes. We are told that the USC uh, coaching staff and uh, administration down there has said that because of the uh, 
the type of game that was had here uh, and, and the, uh, the feeling on the field and the locker room and all, uh, they don't want any players to, to appear on the post-game show tonight. Uh, so it'll just be the coach coming along. Uh, it's sad, but usually we would get a couple of senior leaders to come forward and, and make a couple of statements for the team about this. But no players allowed. We're only going to get the coach tonight. And uh, that is the new regime here at USC, and that's the way things are going to be done. And uh, we, uh, we take that and move forward. Uh, Sione Vaki, player of the game, 149 receiving yards on five catches. 50, 53 was the long. He had 98 yards after catch and two touchdowns, and he also ran. Oh, yeah, he also ran for 68 yards. This is a guy that's a safety, friends. He's yeah. a safety. Over 200 yards of total offense for the, <laughs> the safety on the defense. So how many, what, let's see how many tackles he had. I know he was a, in, in, an integral part. In the, only two tackles on the night, but uh, like you said, you're that uh, valuable on offense tonight. They knew they had they needed some spark on the offensive side of the ball. Not really a ton of weapons. Kyle Winningham dialed him up tonight and said, hey, we, son, we need you tonight on offense, and uh, Vaki performed admirably. The other guy that caught the touchdown, Landon King, their fourth, one, two, three, for fifth string tight end fifth string came in with two catches 16 yards and caught a touchdown pass tonight so you know every time they put a guy in that you've never seen before they went to him yeah that, that that's Kyle Winningham he's, he does a good job he was down some some weapons tonight he's been down some weapons all season but just trying to find a way to win games doing different things he, you know they're going to play strong defense but offensively they, they find some pieces are you a little surprised that a defensive minded coach like Whittingham who's been around at Utah forever and ever hasn't fielded some offers and taken the bait and gone to the NFL. He seems like an NFL kind of coach, that grit that he has. Yeah, it seems the, the type of style it seems would be uh, good for the pros, but it seems like he loves Utah. He loves the play. He lo loves the players. Loves that. Love what they get, they got there. That culture that he's built. It's it's not easy to just go and just install these kind of cultures. If he was got to go to the NFL, it's not just you don't just pick up and plug this one in somewhere else. It takes time to build, and he's built it here at Utah, and he's got a good thing going. I'm sure he's a, a, a king in town there, and, and he loves what he's doing. So uh, not a bad spot to be in Utah. You know who's gonna hate to see them in the next few years? Everybody in the Big 12. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough, that's a tough, that's a tough pickup for the Big 12. I don't know if they, they and, and Utah, they typically under the radar, right? You don't really every preseason, you never oh, talk about the Utah Utes are going to be, uh, they have, they're going to be down this year. Who knows what they're going to be? And uh, Coach Whittingham just seems to produce out of everything he's got from it gets everything, every squeeze of uh, talent of all those guys he's got. They've proven they can win on the road here against a decent USC team. They're going to go home next week and play Oregon. If they beat the Ducks in, in Salt Lake City, and there's a fair chance they will, because yeah. it's when's the last time they lost there? About 80 years ago? It's, it's hell playing there at Rice Eccles. Uh, then, then they get Arizona State there at, at in, in Salt Lake, and then they go to Seattle and play Washington. If they play great defense, they can win any game. There's no, there's no reason in my head except for the fact that Cam Rising isn't playing. Barnes look fine. There's no reason in my head they can't win a third straight conference championship. And I think the most impressive thing is they're mentally tough, right? They're Boy, just this they? is this is the, a tough group of kids. Doesn't matter who's in the game, who's hurt, who's not. They're going to put their eleven out there. And the, the, tonight they had a chance to fold it up. You know, you're you're down to Caleb Williams and the USC Trojans in the Coliseum, and you got a minute left with your third string quarterback. You know, they, 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 their backs were against the wall there. Uh, that the mental fortitude of that team st stuck through, and they and they finished it off and, and capped it off. With One them. guy I want to talk about before we take our break. Jaquindon Jackson, uh, young running back. He's only a sophomore, 6'2", 228. Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. 26 carries, 118 yards. Uh, nothing huge, 26 yards. But he also he also played Wildcat quarterback, ran the ball some, and handed the ball off some. So yeah. he's, he's a pretty good football player. He was reading that defensive end on those uh, zone replays. Well, We've talked about all the stats on the offensive side. We've got some defensive stats to talk about as well. Uh, Coach Lincoln Riley is still in his interview with the mass media. So when we come back, we'll look at the defensive stats and probably bring in John Jackson for a chat about uh, what happened here tonight. Quite the ball game. Utah wins it over USC in comeback fashion. 34-32. And we'll be back after these messages on the Modelo Locker Room Report on the Trojan Football Media Network. Hi, it's Tungus. It's hard to express Tungus self when come to AM PM's breakfast. So Tungus wrote poem. <clears throat> Tungus no prepared to feel this way when eat AM PM breakfast today. Savory chorizo fried egg and cheese on fluffy flaky croissant please. It's so good, craving and galore. Tungus prepared to have one more. Oh wait, Tungus forgot to mention coffee. Need to start over. When the breakfast is freshly prepared in store, that's cravenience. AM PM, too much good stuff. 
Trojan fans, it's time to get your roll on with Roll 'em Up Taquitos, the official taquito of USC Athletics. Using Mama Karen's special recipe, our taquitos are hand rolled daily and pan fried to order with your choice of beef, chicken, ground beef, and vegetarian options. We got bomb AF taquitos and a delicious selection of side dishes, as well as our bomb churro donuts. Visit RollEmUp.com to find the location nearest you. Fight on and roll 'em up. Let's have a lot of people pedal those bikes. Interval. Burn. Burn. Come on, burn. Woo! At Audi, we think performance is more exhilarating on a real road. Enter the Audi Q5. While Quattro all-wheel drive gives you confidence when you need it, it's the 261 horsepower of the Q5 engine that really raises the pulse rate, as in 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds. And you'll never pull a calf muscle. The next level Audi Q5. Always obey local speed and traffic laws. Bongino at 9, Shapiro at 3, Phillips in between. Enough said. KABC. Trojans fall to Utah, 34-32. to The leading tacklers in the game, Mason Cobb at 9, Bear Alexander with 7, and Bryson Shaw with 7. How bad is it going to hurt, if any at all, against Cal next week that Bear Alexander was kicked out of the game for targeting in the uh, late stages of this contest and won't be able to play the first half next week against the Bears? Yeah, that'll be a, a bad loss. You know, Bear had a, a rough game tonight. You know, he got those two personal fouls, uh, one uh, one for uh, the roughing unnecessary roughness and then the uh, late one, which was really a, a tough one. Uh, not not much contact in there, but they're just not going to let you uh, contact any any part of the, the quarterback's head there. And uh, I think the, the targeting call is even worse is that, that, that you know, you, you shouldn't be really kicked out for that one. But uh, I think I'm sure USC will try to appeal that call because it didn't look like a target to me. Maybe if it probably was a roughing the passer for, for touching the quarterback's head, but the targeting, I think they'll challenge that. We'll bring in John Jackson on a discussion as we wait for Lincoln Riley uh, after his uh, assembled media press conference. None of the players are going to appear on us tonight, uh, appear with us tonight uh, on behalf of the uh, coaching staff request here on the Modelo Locker Room Report. JJ, uh, he was talking about Bear Alexander. Go ahead. Well, that's going to be a huge, huge loss for next week, but let me start with this, Pete. I haven't seen a quarterback wearing number 16 performed like that on this field since Rodney Pete. That was a great performance, and they they, shouted, they 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 helped him and put him in an environment that he could succeed. They didn't ask for him to do too much, and it was a, a great job by uh, by Coach Whittingham and his coaching staff putting together a game, a game plan. When you know when when Cam Rising was out of the game, and you have to play a different quarterback. You know, the obvious thing would be to sh- try to shelter him a little bit and not put too much pressure on him. They did exactly that, and they kept the turnovers down, the sacks down. Y- Utah had more sacks than USC, which was a, a key stat for my defensive line stat, Sean, that you know I give almost every week. Um, the, the Trojan defensive line could not dominate. They couldn't stop the run. The, you know, 248 yards rushing for Utah. If I told you that before the game, you would have put an L next to this game before it even started, and that's what happened. For the Trojans, the only sack of the game, Romello Haidu also had a tackle for loss and a half. Other tackles for loss for Deshaun Benton, Anthony Lucas, Rajon Davis, Solomon Bird, Bear Alexander, and Bryson Shaw. The interception for Kalen Bullock went for 30 yards and a touchdown. SC only one sack to Utah's three. SC had six tackles for loss to Utah's four, and as I mentioned, both teams turned the ball over once, so the Trojans remain at minus one for turnovers. We await the emergence of uh, Coach Lincoln Riley, and we'll be talking with him shortly as uh, he will make his way to the microphone with Jordan Moore, and uh, while he is uh, still not with us, we will go to a break and come back and talk amongst ourselves until that becomes the case. Trojans fall to Utah here tonight at the Coliseum, 34-32 on the Trojan Football Media Network. Tommy Trojan is at the 10, the 5, touchdown, USC! Make big plays on the field and in life. With iTrust Capital, you can buy and sell crypto 24-7 with the tax benefits of a retirement account. That's right, invest in crypto with the tax advantages of an IRA. iTrust Capital is easy to use and has no sign-up fees. Don't be a Monday morning quarterback. Make big Big plays now. Visit itrustcapital.com to start investing today. Itrust Capital, the official cryptocurrency platform of the USC Trojans. Taxes and conditions may apply. These are cryptocurrencies are a speculative investment. 
It's time to recharge, reconnect, and rediscover your perfect combination at Pechanga Resort Casino. And with your resort favorites back in action, there's all of the excitement and comfort you love with the peace of mind you can depend on. So whenever you're ready for a little rest, a little relaxation, and a lot of fun, we'll be here. Play your perfect combination at Pechanga Resort Casino today. After the end of a good fight, you deserve an ice cold reward. Medela is the mark of a fighter. You've earned this rich golden lager with a crisp, refreshing taste. Because you know the bigger the fight, the better the reward. You put in the hours, the energy, the tough labor. You are a fighter, and Medela is your reward. Medela, the mark of a fighter. Drink responsibly. Beer imported by Crown Import, Chicago, Illinois. Your home for Trojans football. Yeah, we'll see us, man. Coliseum's cleared out now as USC falls to Utah 34-32. We're down 28-14 late in the third quarter. Got a field goal to get back to within 28-17. Actually ended up taking the lead after Utah kicked a field goal to go up by eight. The Trojans got a field goal of their own to make it a five-point game. A long punt return for Zachariah Branch. Set up the Trojans for a uh, Caleb Williams touchdown run with a minute 46 to go, but that was all the time exactly that Utah needed to come back down the field and allow Cole Becker to kick a 38-yard field goal, a long run for their quarterback, Bryson Bryson Barnes, to set him up in field goal range. Trojans had him pinned back a couple of times, had a chance to stop him, didn't do it, and uh, were also victimized by a uh, late hit penalty uh, against Bear Alexander. All together, it adds up to Utah coming back and winning the game. 34-32. 34-32. to 32. So, boys, Washington uh, is now 4-0 in the conference. They're the only team that's undefeated, and for all intents and purposes, really, uh, the Trojans have to win out the rest of the way. They cannot lose another game as they go down the stretch. They have to beat Cal, Washington, Oregon, UCLA to have a chance to get in a tiebreaker with somebody, probably, and win that tiebreaker to get to the Pac-12 championship game. It's anything but easy from here on in. Not impossible, but uh, the way things have been going this season, you'd have to say it's a, it's a stretch. Right? Got to got to find a way to get back in the win call, no matter what. Uh, two straight losses for the Trojans, a team with higher aspirations uh, than 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 trying and trying to get into the to the to playoffs, and then it looks like it won't be the case, and still got a, a battle on their hands to even try to get into the uh, Pac-12 championships. But uh, a lot of questions to be answered still about this offense. I thought defensively, uh, not a great night. I thought you know the the defense struggled at times uh, with an offense that hasn't really been explosive. They showed what they had last last week against Cal. Was was, could do some things, but uh, kind of struggled with that offense. And then they came out flat in the second half. I did just coming out flat. And they get the chance, you know, 14 14 at halftime. You get the ball coming out at half. You, you go three and out. You give up two scores right away. And then you, you, you get back, really get back in this game with an interception and a return. Just the offense, offensively in the second half, just, just not enough. Well, I, and I spoke too soon because Washington hasn't won their game. And in fact, they're losing to Arizona State 7 0 with four minutes to go in the first half in Seattle. Uh, they're favored by four touchdowns to win, and I'm saying to you right here that they will win by those four touchdowns when all is said and done. If they don't, if Arizona State wins that game, our heads will explode, <laughs> and then everybody's back, everybody's alive again. We'll have like six teams with one loss. It'll be nuts. Yeah. All right, so what are the Trojans, John Jackson? We got the coach right now. We will not ask John a question. We'll come back and talk to John after the interview, but let's go down to Jordan Moore with the coach right now. All right, I got the head coach, Lincoln Riley. Uh, coach, you know, a game like that, you look back and there's just a million plays uh, that, that feel like if they had flipped, you'd win it. Uh, ultimately, uh, what determined the outcome for you? Oh, it's a great fight. You know, it was an epic comeback there at the end. It's, yeah, it's gut-wrenching. It's the first time we've sat here in this locker room in two years and not, not been celebrating a win, you know, which is... Uh, Kind of a kind of a special thing. So, but uh, yeah, this this one stings, man. There's no other way to put it. That's uh, one of the toughest losses I've been a part of in my career. Uh, guys fought so hard. Uh, uh, yeah, made some mistakes, obviously on on all sides that that uh, probably kept the game close in some ways. But um, I'm proud of our fight. I'm I'm sick for the guys in there because they uh, they wanted to win this one, obviously, really really bad. And and uh, yeah, I mean. This is kind of a tough game. Had some breaks that obviously didn't go away. Some some tough calls uh, from the officials that I thought 
you know, we're, we're, we're pretty poor and uh, had to try to overcome it and, and thought we did, obviously, there for a second. So, um, yeah, gut wrenching loss, but, you know, despite all that, there's a lot of things in front for this team. And as I was just telling the media in there, I mean, this is, this is, this is part of the evolution. You know, you, you have to have some scars. You know, year one, you come in, expectations kind of, you know, whatever, and you, you overachieve probably by every definition of it. You know, year two now, you know, the outside expects, you know, a really good team and a championship contender and all that, and it's a different feeling. And, and it's a feeling that this program hasn't had in a while. And you've got to learn to, to handle that and to kind of be at your best through that. And it's a, that is part, when you, when you zoom out, that is part of our evolution as a program. And it sucks. I mean, it hurts right now. I mean, it, it's, uh, I, I can't even describe how bad it hurts. Um, but those scars and going through some of this will benefit this program in the future. And zooming back in, uh, this team still has some really good opportunities in front of it. And uh, we gotta, we're gonna have to rally here. We're gonna have to, all the things that we've been preaching and building will get tested uh, right now. And I, I know I've got a group of guys in that locker room and a staff in there that's gonna wake up in the morning and get ready to go fight our tail off uh, again next week. Guys, go ahead for Coach. Coach, Sean Cody uh, in the booth. Uh, Coach, you knew you were going in, in a battle with this defense. Obviously, you looked at all the stats that Utah was was putting up on defense, knew about it. You guys came out swinging 14 early points. Then it looked like the offense was having some problems. What were some of those troubles after after that quick start? Yeah, just, you know, we got behind the chain some, had some penalties. We obviously had a couple of times where we didn't hang on to the ball, um, you know, which has obviously plagued us the last, last couple of games. We, we didn't. Obviously, turn it over as much as we did a week ago, but you know the the fumble and and then uh, we kind of lost lost the ball there on that that second to last drive. You know, were two huge huge plays in the game. Um, yeah, and just uh, yeah, a little bit of everything. I thought I thought we played much better on the offensive line tonight. I thought the guys really grew, and that was a big challenge. Uh, it's number one Russian defense in the country. Uh, we did some things for those guys that nobody's done this year. So I mean, I. There was a lot of positives, but we were just uh, at times in the second and third quarter, just to just to tick off, and that's what good defenses do. Is is if you're a tick off, they they make you pay for it. And uh, so yeah, I just I mean some calls I went back, some plays that we we'll all went back uh, offensively. Was proud that we got some momentum there when we had to have it at the end and made some big plays. But obviously you hate squandering some of those chances in the second, third quarter when we could have really separated. Yeah, coach, a, a, a tough loss, especially here with the last minute field goal. You lose, end up losing by two points. Uh, some opportunities there on on two point conversions. What's what's the mindset on those two point conversions that you know maybe didn't get blocked up right? Looked like Caleb was under duress right away. Yeah, I think uh, I think I, I hadn't seen the film obviously yet. I think I think a back got beaten pass pro on the first one, um, and so weren't able to to go where we wanted to go. And then uh, yeah, we had that kind of the call we wanted there at the end, and had had kind of a one on one ball there to uh, to Mike Jack, and had a shot at it. Was going to be a was going to be um, you know kind of a competitive play like they are down there and those were obviously yeah two big plays you, you get at least one of those and you don't know it at the time but you get one of those and obviously you know it's a it's a little bit different game so they're important plays we learned how important they were a couple of weeks ago obviously here at Arizona when we when we stopped them and made them to uh, to win it and uh, just didn't get them tonight. After the Notre Dame loss, we saw a lot of positional changes, a lot of depth chart used tonight. And this isn't so much of a question as much as I'd like your comment about the continuing and never-ending competition at almost every spot that continues throughout the season here. Yeah, it's healthy for us as a team. And there's some guys that, that came in and some changes that, that we made that I thought were really beneficial. You know, I thought... You know, like Zion came in and played real well for us. I look, haven't seen obviously the tape yet, but the but the O line uh, I thought did some really good things again against you know one of the better defenses in the country. And so um, yeah, I mean I think there were those are there was a couple other you know changes that we made that we thought were beneficial. And so yeah, showing off uh, a little bit of the depth this roster and good some see some other guys step up because second half of the year that's what has to happen. Uh, finally, how much of this after tonight, starting tomorrow, starting Monday, how much of this is clean up and correct mistakes and how much of it is just let's move ahead and get ready for Cal? No, you definitely clean up and, and there's there's so much to learn from this. I mean these are you know, well, listen, whether that field goal, you know, misses there at the end by a foot or it goes in at the by a foot and you're either celebrating or you're or you're, you know, feeling like we do right now, there's so much to learn and that's it is a constant evolution and you gotta embrace that part of it. And so, you know, we're gonna 
we're going to get past this one tonight and, and then we're going to get up in the morning and come back ready to, to improve and capitalize on this opportunity that we have. Going to sting for a few days. We'll look forward to seeing the next one next week in Berkeley. And uh, thanks for stopping by and ch- taking the time to talk with us. We'll be ready. Thanks, guys. All right. Uh, that was the final word with head coach Lincoln Riley. It's the final word. Word. Okay. That was the final word from head coach Lincoln Riley. Brought to you by Smart and Final. Smart and Final is a proud sponsor of USC Athletics. Smart and Final, ready to help you add some serious flavor to your game day snack spread. We're a little late for it, but let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Trojan Football Media Network. Your USC Trojans fight on here. Southern California's undisputed, undisputed talk leader, KABC, Los Angeles, Orange County, a cumulus media station. Back to the locker room with Jordan Moore. Jordan, wins are great, but they don't last as long as losses like this one. And I'm already depressed. I'm already stinging. It's going to take some time to get over this. Yeah, it was a gut punch loss for sure. I mean, there's no no two ways about it. Uh, as the one in Salt Lake City was uh, last year. So you know, it's just uh, when they come down to that to to the end like this, you you just always think about you know the, there's 30 different plays you can look at and and think about and and analyze um, uh, because you know that's that's how close a game like this was. Um, and, you know, we, we talked about it as a pivot point in the season, um, but it, it is just one Pac-12 loss. Um, it just puts them a little bit now in, in desperation mode. I mean, they really got to uh, they got to they got to find it next week in, in Berkeley and, and and really get hot in November. I'll say this. And I've been telling people if they got if they got beat tonight, really beat. I thought that th- this was going to be a problem for the rest of the season. And we were down 28 14 in the late third quarter. I was wondering if this football team was going to win many football games the rest of the way. But what I saw at the end of the game gave me renewed hope that this team maybe has some moxie and maybe could come back and, and create some problems for Washington, UCLA, and Oregon. Yeah, it was a great response. I mean, honestly, it was almost a score too quick situation right at the end. I mean, you, mm-hmm. you, you I kind of thought that when it happened, but then also thought, like, Thank, thankfully, the offense didn't have to drive 70 yards. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's, 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 it's not like that was going to be a given, um, that that was going to happen the way that second half had gone. And uh, you, know, you even saw it in the two-point two plays. Just everything was hard after the first couple drives of the game. Now, the first couple drives of the game were not hard. That's what is, is hard to sort of figure out. I mean, as he said, uh, you know, the two backs, uh, Austin Jones and, and Marshawn Lloyd, they, they combined for 12 carries for 117. Um, so... Um, you know, they just came out and, and there were holes and then there were holes late too that Austin Jones exploited. Um, but just the balance of the game, uh, they just could never really get the passing game going. Um, and then when they fell behind, uh, they, they sort of felt like they had to they'd go away from the run. But, you know, they still got over the top. The defense made a play. Uh, defense got that stop that, that allowed for the Zachariah Branch punt return. So there, there were there were some great moments there. Um, but then also, you know, the, the quarterback uh, run gets you at the end. So it's uh, all sides all sides of the football. Uh, they'll 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 go to bed with regrets tonight. And as you said, they'll, they'll wake up and think about it. And they'll, they'll be thinking about it all week. Never a dull moment. SC and Utah. We won't see these guys again for a while. Let's move on. Cal Bears next week, and then we got some big ones after that as well. Thanks for the work and an exciting night here at the Coliseum. All right, thanks so much. And with that, we will take our final break from here and come back and uh, have a final comment from each of the guys. Modelo Locker Room Report continues as Utah hangs on to beat USC 34-32 at the Coliseum on the Trojan Football Media Network. Saturdays are made for football. And when the game is on, we're finally off. Off duty, offline, out of office. A Cracked Coors Light is our do not disturb message to the world. On game day, we don't think about the 9 to 5, but worry about the 4th and 1. So this Saturday, grab a Coors Light, press play on some pigskin, and pause on everything else. Coors Light, mountain cold refreshments, made to chill. 2021 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, celebrate responsibly. 
Trojans, tired of being a number at your bank? Be the owner of your financial future with USC Credit Union, the official credit union of USC Athletics. We put our members before profits, offering better rates and personalized service that'll leave you cheering for more. Open a checking or savings account today and enjoy easy online banking with access to over 30,000 fee-free ATMs nationwide. Bank with a champion that elevates your financial game. Make the winning play and join USC Credit Union today. Federally insured by the NCUA. Fubo is the official streaming platform of USC Athletics. With Fubo, you can watch every Pac-12 game, plus more college and pro sports, shows, movies, and news on over 350 live TV channels. Stream it live on your TV, phone, and other devices. No cable required. The best part? You can try Fubo free. There's no contract or commitment. To start watching, just go to FuboTV.com. That's F-U-B-O-T-V.com. Make sense of your money and the world around you. Mo 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 Tech on Money. Afternoons at 5 on KABC. Utah over USC, 34-32 tonight at the Coliseum in front of 61,000 and change. And we go to Sean Cody and John Jackson and uh, ask for a final comment. And really my question to you guys is, if you've been involved in a game like this, and I bet you have, how do you recover? How quickly do you recover? And for this USC football team, how do they recover? And what is next, in your humble opinion? What is going to happen the rest of the way? Yeah, these ones sting. This is a hard one. The way you, you lose, sometimes they, you get blown out of games. They don't hurt as much. It's easy to turn around and, and, and get going the next week because a lot of things to fix. But in these ones where you had a chance to win in those you know, five to ten plays that you couldn't figure out to, to fix and where you lost, those ones sting, man. And especially Utah on the road here at the Coliseum. The whole place was rocking tonight and uh, just couldn't get it done. And, and then the ramifications of the loss as well. You know, you, you, you hurt yourself, like I said, probably knock yourself out of the playoffs and, and uh, put yourself behind the eight ball. In, in Pac-12 conference, all those things that they make it a lot more painful in that locker room's hurting. But you, you need guys who are going to try to get uh, this thing turned around and, and, and get in the right direction. And you're just not doing enough things uh, right uh, these last two weeks to get the win. So you got to figure out what those things are and, and attack them and, and not worry about hurting feelings or or, 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 or getting under people's skin. You, you got to get them right and you got to get them right fast because this thing's uh, it's coming now and it's coming quick. JJ, what's up with this team and what's going to be up with this team? Well, first of all, I think that it's only going to be able to turn around because of the players. It's about time we acknowledge what this team is. This team is a team that has to outscore you, but they also have to have some, the defense step up and make some impact on the game. My defensive line, Sean, that I love, did not play up to par tonight. They get the Trojans defensively, and it wasn't the whole defensive line, but they gave up 200 and. 58 yards rushing, is that right, Pete? 56, yep. 256 yards, right? 256 yards rushing. That cannot happen to any team that plans on winning any type of championship or even being involved especially in a playoff you know a or team, anything. Especially when you know the team is coming into it, they don't have a quarterback. Play. They have their third-string quarterback. What do you think they're going to do? You think they're going to throw? Cam Rising's not playing? They're going to run the ball. They have no other choice. You can't put a third-string quarterback under that kind of pressure. That would be like putting me in in my high school days instead of Rick Carter, who was much better than me. <laughs> you cannot put your third-string quarterback in and expect not to run the football. And the defense should know that's what's coming. And that's exactly what they had to do, and that's exactly what they did, which is completely unacceptable as far as the defense is concerned. And like I said, this is a team offensively that has to outscore people, and they put up. 30 points tonight, that's pretty good number. Yep. <clears throat> Against a team that was giving up 12. Exactly. They're giving up 12. You scored 30-plus. Yeah, one of those scores was a, a defensive score, and then one was the, the return late. The offense, I think, really struggled in that second half. Again. In the second quarter and the second half, really, if you're being honest. Those first two scores came at ease. We thought this thing might be you know, flying up and down the field all night, and then Utah put the clamps on it, and it really uh, slowed the game down. They really did a good job. USC only out through Utah for over with 
plus 100 yards on Utah and throwing and then, you know, lost in, in the rushing attack. But uh, just uh, USC, you, you see these numbers and it just kind of boggles me, Pete. You know, you see, uh, you think of an offense last year that was, you know, up in the 50 percentile on third down. This today, 36 percent. And then Utah, you know, on fourth down, going two of three. It's just these kind of numbers are, aren't, aren't doesn't doesn't stack up to a win for USC. They were in the game. They had a chance to do it. But you look at these numbers deep and it, it looks like, uh, you know, a tough way to win a game with those kind of numbers. JJ, where are they mentally? How do they turn it around after losing? Losing 2-1 to their arch rival, 1-1 to a kind of an arch rival in Utah over the last couple of years. Yeah, you How do they turn be, this thing around? you got to be careful because when you lose, it's easy to point fingers, Pete. Amongst the players, I mean, they might not go directly at each other, but it's, it's easy to start distributing blame on who needs to do what. They have to be careful of that because they're going to have to play as a team to win the rest of the way. And the teams that are left, the big ones in front of us, yeah. You're going to have to play good football. Washington is no joke. With Penix, they are no joke this year. And Cal knows you're a wounded <laughs> animal, too. They don't know. Oh, boy. They're, yeah. they're, oh, they're, yeah. Hey, we're, they're licking their chops right now. USC just down, just lost two in a row. Let's let's get our chance. And it's the Joe Roth Memorial game, and you know how that goes. With a defensive-minded head coach. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Justin Wilcox. Yeah. You so bet. you're going to have to be at your best. To well, be just, he's going he's gonna to have a good game plan. They better turn it around in a hurry here. They've got six wins. They're going to a bowl. We just don't know which one. And that story will be told over these next few weeks. Sean, thank you. See you at Strawberry Canyon. Great night, Pete. You were, you were amazing tonight. Some of those calls tonight, Pete. I, don't, I know we took an L tonight, but uh, do yourself a favor, Trojan fans. Go back and listen to some of those calls by Pete Arbogast. Show you why he's one of the best in the business. When it's a losing effort, I don't care. I don't. Oh, <laughs> come on. I don't. I had a good time, but I don't care now. I want to win every game. I'm that kind of guy. Uh, JJ, thanks. We'll talk to you next week from the uh, studio in Los Angeles. You got it. All right. That'll do it for tonight. Our next broadcast is coming up next Saturday, October 28th, when the Trojans take on those California Golden Bears on Joe Roth Memorial Day. Kickoff, Strawberry Canyon at 1 o'clock. Day football. What do you know? And our broadcast will begin with the Trojan Tailgate Show at 11 in the morning. Countdown to kickoff at 12.30 on 790 KABC and the USC Trojan Media Network. Stay tuned for the USC Trojan Wrap-Up Show as Jason Schwartz and Sua Cravens become your therapists and talk Trojan football and take your calls. Thanks to our in-studio board operator, Art Webb. Highlights provided by Jose De La Roca. Our spotter statistician is Bert Awada. Producer engineer Rick Cutler, our producer director Gia Lares, and the executive producer of USC football is Drew DeHart. Now for John Jackson and Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, this is Pete Arbogast reminding you again the final score here at the Coliseum tonight. Utah 34, USC 32. Going to be a tough night in a few days, but fight on, everybody. All right, everyone out. Everyone out of the locker room. The Modelo Locker Room Report was brought to you by Modelo, the fighting spirit of the USC Trojans. Oh, yeah. Fight on! And by Pechanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC football. Honey Stinger, the official nutrition partner of the USC Trojans. Prepare, perform, and recover with Honey Stinger. And by Salea Tequila. Tequila! Proud partner of the USC Trojans. Coming up next, Jason Schwartz and Cody Kessler break down the game and take your calls at 800-222-5222. It's the USC Football Wrap-Up Show, presented by Roll'em Up Taquitos. Roll'em Up!